everybody what's going on rob sisternino back here to talk with you about another one of our top 40 all-time survivor seasons and tonight we'll be talking about the 30th best season of all time as voted by the fans of rob has a podcast we'll be talking about survivor caramoan the 26th season of survivor and boy do we have such a treat for you tonight on our panel i'm so excited i'm chuffed to bits even to welcome in our panel uh first you know her from her work on the challenge rehab up coast a co-host of the uh, new girl old guy podcast Please welcome in the great Allie Lasher. Allie, how are you? I don't know what just happened there. I was distracted by the fact that I think getting top billing is less satisfying because you only did it because I'd say something if you didn't. But nonetheless, I'm excited to be here uh, with both of you. I don't get to do this with both of you that often anymore. Yes. So it's, it's exciting to talk to you guys. This is like the helicopter has landed and now here come the, the favorites pouring out. Allie Lasher, you know her from her past work on the Challenge Rehap Up, uh, new girl, old guy. And now also another another person you may know from Robin Akiva Need a Podcast. Here is Akiva Winokur. Uh, first of all, I think of us more as the three amigos than the favorites <laughs> coming off the plane. Yes. In your dreams. Would you be at the bar with us, Akiva, you think? Or would you be No, I know tomfoolery us? for me. <laughs> no masculine tomfoolery for me. All right. Here we are to talk about uh, the 30th best season of Survivor. And so I was thinking about this, uh, Akiva, that uh, mm -hmm. this season uh, is your favorite, right? That's why you're Keeve 26 on Twitter. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, no, I honestly, the reason I, I asked to do this season in particular, it's not my favorite season of all time. It's, but it is the first season that I found Rob as a podcast. I think of the, probably on the night or the week of the premiere, that's where I found your podcast and started listening to RHAP. What was it in particular? You're like, oh, I love these returning players. Um, Finally, Brandon Hans is back and I got to, uh, keep up with a podcast to talk about this. Well, I didn't watch 21 to 25. I, some of those seasons live. And, mm -hmm. I, and then one day, like a week before 26, I was like, ooh, I missed Philippines. And I watched yes. it. And then okay. I was very the podcast. And I Googled. And I'm like, oh, I know, I know that guy. All right. Uh, what about you, Allie? Why did you want to talk about Survivor Caramelon? So I don't know when the like call for requests came out. But I was like, not having it. I don't know. I was like overwhelmed with life. And Akiva just hit me up and was like, oh, do you want to do one together? I was like, OK, great. Pick whatever one you want. I've seen every every season. I'll show up for any season. And he comes back and he's like, all right, we're doing Caramoan. And I'm like, I'm chuffed to bits. I'm like, yeah. oh, hell yeah. I can't believe Rob would let me talk about such a good season. And I have receipts. I have a text message that I sent to someone here uh, bragging about it. I said, Akif yes. and I are doing Caramoan. Well, you, printed be... out a te you printed out a text oh, message? Oh, yeah. I printed out a text like I'm at a Bravo reunion. No? Yeah. I said, that'll be all time. And he goes, Cochran? And I go, expletive, wait, I thought it was Kagayan. So I'm here sort of <laughs> confused. But then I thought about it and I was like, you know what? This is actually a great season to talk about. And as I started doing my research like a week ago for the season, I realized that much like Akiva, I had like a lot of other random personal connections that February 19th, 2013, I also have a tweet printed. That's when I first texted Rob, at Rob Cesternino, how does a former... RTVF 330 year, which is Max Dawson's class, become an RHAP intern. And then the first time I ever used hashtag RHAP in a survivor tweet was during Caramoan. Um, I wrote a preview for the season with Max Dawson that almost got me kicked off of the newspaper that's still <laughs> available on his blog. Story for another day. I don't want to, I want to keep this tight. I don't want to go on any tangents, but that's an interesting story about Max mm -hmm. all ruining my life. Um, and then you wouldn't believe this. I made a survivor guide for this season in 2013 compiled by survivor psycho Allie Lasher. There's this yes. is the real one. Yes. And I wrote very unhelpful blurbs about the returners for somebody who was going to watch the season for the first time. Can you give us a blurb? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my fa my personal favorite is for Malcolm. He had seen the season before. So I have a full page on Malcolm. Everyone else gets a small picture. And it just says, damn. And then it says, <laughs> wow. keep in mind, no one knows him. However, 
This is a tribe of goofy failures. So people might assume he effed up on his season two. So I think that gives you a general overview of how I yeah. felt about almost everyone coming in on the favorites tribe. Yeah, that was very helpful. And Allie has already brought so much evidence already yeah. to uh, talk <laughs> about. Receipts. How does she I have yeah. so much access to a color printer, Rob? That's what I want to it's, know. I it's also, if I may interrupt that unhelpful days. question, <laughs> the season where I've met the most survivors, and normally I don't take like place. photos with people, um, but I do, I do have a, a photo of myself and Catherine <laughs> that I blew up for the occasion. Wow. Okay. Here. So this is uh, that if you're listening From... to the podcast, this is quite a reveal. <laughs> a Ali Lasher has uh, what would you say a uh, 24 by 36 uh, you nailed color? It. I went, <laughs> is that I went bigger people? than when I went with you the last time. No, this yes. is Staples. These are my people at Staples. Okay. So know. this is like a poster size picture <laughs> of Ali Lasher and Cochrane. Wow. I was worried that at first that Ali Lasher's uh, computer was falling off the table because of the slow reveal of the rotation. And here it is. Wow. Nobody's ever done this before. I mean, I've done, I did this with a photo of you before. But it was an, it was a, a like letter size page. No, Nobody's it was 18 by 24. I just it, went up oh, okay. the next it was size. Further it was away. It was further away. You didn't away. seem that impressed. So yes. I, I went bigger. Yeah. Keeping staples in business. They must have like pumped their fists when she walked in. <laughs> and, you know, I have room to make it bigger, people who want to outdo me later with more pictures, like Shaq said about his yeah. bed on cribs. Anyone? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great photo. Well, that uh, Cochrane picture, is that post Caramoan or pre Caramoan? So it's interesting. Also, who's brave enough to stand next to a photo of themselves from 10 years ago for mm -hmm. the whole podcast? I will be switching back. I don't want to stay here that long. <laughs> but uh, no, so this was also in, this was in 2012. So I believe he had filmed Karamoan, but it hadn't aired or it hadn't yeah, finished. Like he confidence. had it won. Yeah. So yeah, this is where he told me not to go to law school. Luckily, I did not listen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but God, he made good choices, you know. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and then at this point, uh, one of you is a lawyer. <laughs> well, I think he's. I would be curious. I guess as of the reunion, yes, one only one of us is. A yeah, lawyer. I believe currently he's writing for uh, the Lower Decks uh, Star Trek animated series uh, with fellow Survivor alumni David Wright. I believe. Uh, I don't have a like a more recent, but uh, as of what I see on Survivor finales, uh, that's been the latest reported uh, LinkedIn <laughs> resume update for Cochrane. No, right. currently he's writing a tweet that we get tagged in that then results in like so many likes because he's talked about it that I have to mute a tweet for the first time ever. He's still very popular. Sure, sure, certainly. Uh, that, uh, of course, the, bringing it full circle to the finale when uh, he got to plug his Twitter and uh, a lot a lot to unpack here with uh, Survivor Caramo. And so um, l let's get into this because I think that this was, uh, again, another interesting season to do the rewatch of. And of course, that, you know, not breaking new ground here. This is a very uneven season of Survivor that it is a total dumpster fire in the pre-merge, uh, especially pre-swap. Uh, the, the, I think that the premiere is actually very solid, but the next four episodes are some of the bleakest episodes that Survivor has ever put out. It is a long stretch that is very, very dark. Uh, even post-swap, it's a little bit better, but not much. But then you get to a real stretch post-merge from the Corinne vote at the merge all the way through the family visit. Uh, very interesting, exciting stuff. And depending on your mileage may vary on how much you love Cochrane, but uh, it is uh, great stuff all the way through in the post-merge. And then uh, finale, a little bit of a snoozer uh, with a wild uh, final tribal council and reunion. Podcast yeah. over. Yeah, so yeah. Good job. No, you nailed you nailed it. <laughs> I think that really. I when I when I ranked it, I probably had it about twenty, Rob. But I do think other than the other than the premiere, it's one of the worst pre merges, right? It's is it the worst pre merge? Uh, we we could talk about that, but then it's it's definitely the worst. I, in my opinion, it's the worst finale in the history of the show. Um, with one decent moment. It, there's two decent moments. Anytime I told someone we were doing it, they mentioned the dog bar. And then Dawn and Brenda's teeth. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's not necessarily good. And yeah. then and obviously the reunion is by far not just the worst survivor reunion, but one of the worst pieces of television in history of the medium. 
wow. the reunion is so bad. The history See, of the I'll, medium. I'll push back uh, about the uh, the finale and the and the reunion special because I think that while the finale is boring, I think that the final tribal council there's a lot going on. There's a lot to uh, chew on, no pun intended. Uh, and the <laughs> reunion show. I think the worst reunion shows are some of the ones from the last five. I think like no reunion show, like a 16 minute reunion show where four mm -hmm. minutes, minutes is spent on TKO is actually worse than a 33 minute reunion show. That's totally bizarre and off the wall. I guess that that's fair. I mean, anything Jeff wanted in that reunion show just wasn't going to happen. There was, you know, I was on Twitter back in the day in, in uh, what, what is this? May, 2013. Look at you. When 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 is the finale happening? And yeah. if you remember, I think Corinne tweets like, "Hey, we're not going to be in the we're not going to be in the aisle, you know, the, in the audience. We're not going to be on the stage. We're in the audience." Mm -hmm. And I remember it being such a big deal that day. I'm sure you you remember too. Like, sure. Twitter was blowing up, but when you watch it, it, it you, you don't. It's not even acknowledged. Like you, I forgot that they even existed. Like they never acknowledge like that they're in the audience. It's it's yeah. just the jury on stage. So it there was a, a lot going on there. And again, I don't know the the full story. Maybe Allie might uh, know uh, more more than I do about uh, all of this. But I feel like that it was the issue was Brandon Hans. I think was not invited. I think that they were concerned about what Shamar was going to say at the finale, and then they tried to say like, oh, there just wasn't enough room on the stage mm -hmm. yet. Every other Survivor finale has been like uh, every even numbered season Survivor finale has been in that same studio for you. And they've never had another issue with getting the jurors on the stage. Yeah. At one point, I knew the story because I think Corinne has openly talked about this, yeah. but I completely forgot. And if I don't have it written in my notes in front of me, I don't know it. Mm -hmm. But um, no, I also thought part of the story was like they didn't want to draw attention to the fact that Brandon wasn't there. But again, mm -hmm. Vetus wasn't there and they, you know. Yeah, yeah that, there was a point where they <laughs> didn't care anymore. But for at that point in time, it was odd to not have a member of the cast to be uh, like now. Like uh, I think it was the first time, finales. Rob. Right? I think and this only. is the first time. Um, the first time to this point that they. Yeah. Have, I mean, there's been other times in the 30s where not the full cast is there. Oh, really? Like the whole like all pre-merged guy. Although for Corinne, right? She gets like they're on the stage, but people have been missing. No, some people didn't right. show up. Okay, yeah, right, right, right. But that's. But that's different than like people being there and being in the audience instead that's of being never, on stage. That's never happened another time. Yeah. But Corinne gets such a raw deal here, right? Because yeah. she makes the merge, but doesn't make the jury. Mm -hmm. And then she makes the merge, but doesn't make the stage. She does get a nice headshot cut to camera off a of Don mention at the reunion. But otherwise, I think I'd be pissed too, honestly, if I were any of them. Yeah. Why didn't the, the producers should have wanted Corinne on the jury? It was a very strange decision, honestly. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't cut it off. Like, I understand, like, all right, we're eight-person jury, but they could have said, all right, well, Corinne, you made the merge. You could be on the stage at the very least. Well, mm -hmm. I don't even understand the jury side. I mean, certainly now <laughs> after an EOE jury, right, the, the limit does not exist, but. Right, right. I, I just think they didn't want to call more attention to uh, Brandon Hance, uh not being there. But I guess. I think there was uh, a lot of, uh, like, I think Russell was, like, threatening to, like, break, like, to you know, coming to the skies that day. If I remember, there was a lot of craziness that day. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff. Uh, and you know, Kiva was so tapped in on uh, the social media, <laughs> which is definitely like an interesting part of the conversation around Survivor Karamoan, because that I think that this is like the most like social media, like plugged in season of the show. I feel like there was where it's interesting, like that there's so much talk about like what the fans are saying on Twitter and Cochran's plugging his Twitter. Dawn's talking about she had to turn off her Twitter. There are tweets nonstop through the entire reunion show. They're putting hashtags up on the screen. This was at the height of Jeff's interactive uh, living room. And Jeff even like comments about like, hey, that's the thing about television now. It used to be you would yell at your TV. Now what you do is you go on Twitter and you tell the person that you don't like what do you think about them? Do you want to know my my first tweet from April 3rd, 2013, where I mentioned RHAP about Caramoan? Of course. Yes. I wonder if Philip gets a bonus from CBS every time he mentions Boston Rob. I mean, that creative genius right there. I should be working on Star Trek. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. What a one of a kind thought that I had in April of 2013. Yeah, uh, it was a plugged in season. And so uh, let's uh, talk about the the first half, because uh, I, I think it is interesting to go back and, and take a look at because you have like these dueling stories of sort of like bookends on both tribes of the, the so much of the pre-merge deals with the 
problems dealing with Brandon Hans, who seems off balance at the at the very least. And I think it's a very valid question to talk about why is he even there? Uh, and then you also have the issues that Shamar is going through and his tribe of feeling very unhappy with how Shamar is acting and vice versa. Shamar being very unhappy with the way that he's being treated by his tribe. And we spent so much time on these two issues in both camps and both end up in non-traditional uh, exits from the show. Shamar, and I actually had thought Shamar had quit uh, in my head. And then it was actually a medical evacuation for Shamar for an issue with his eye. And then Brandon gets sort of the impromptu vote out. Uh, at the end of a challenge in episode five. Also in my rewatch that I, I was like uh, three episodes in, I'm like, all right, we're going to get to Brandon Hans. Like, oh wait, there's a whole other episode before we even get to that. I miscounted the episodes. Yeah, I think I agree with you. And I actually recommend it. Someone's watching the season now. And I was like, honestly, and I don't normally say this, because I feel like every season of Survivor to me is a good season. I don't remember feeling like this was a particular slog for me watching it then, but I think you can jump to the merge or even like the episode before the merge and miss nothing just because it's rare to me. I think that a season of survivor has all of the air sucked out of the room and all of the energy sucked out of each episode by two people where ultimately it goes nowhere, right? It's inconsequential to the game. What happens with Brandon, what happens with Shamar? I think the Shamar piece is more interesting to discuss because it's like, it's hard to talk about the, I mean, we'll talk about the Brandon thing, but it's, it's harder to address the Brandon thing because it is the, why was he even there? Whereas the Shamar issue is more of like what happens on survivor people from different walks of life who haven't experienced different types of people like butt heads and struggle with the elements. And that to me, there are interesting things at play there. Whereas the Brandon stuff is just like the fact that they even had to go and forfeit a challenge and he doesn't just get pulled from the game for threatening to burn down the shelter. I mean like that to me wouldn't happen on, I was almost at 31. Where are we? 40, 41. <laughs> yeah. 41 will be the next, the next season of survivor. Yeah. Like forget him even getting cast. Like he's getting pulled from the game for threatening his tribe in a very serious way. Like I believe Philip when I sympathize with Brandon to the extent that a, he's clearly got a lot going on, but also B Philip is annoying. Philip is, is saying rude things to him. Philip is like, don't bite the hand that feeds. But Brandon's not having an equal reaction to the to the um, stimulus yeah. <laughs> on the tribe. Yeah. So this season, just as I was going through it again, like I think it is unique in that it really, to me, is like an examination of like the the mental health toll that both playing Survivor and having played Survivor can take on people. I mean, we have a number of contestants in this season that suffer, you know, uh, some form of like a uh you know mental health crisis over the course of the season and philip is not even on that list uh you know yeah. philip is you know re remarkably stable throughout the entire season but you have shamar and all the issues that he goes through uh you have brandon and the issues that he goes through and then in the post-merge game dawn is having a, a number of like a uh, you know complete and, and total breakdowns and she's uh talks about that a lot and even eric reichenbach towards the end of this game um, and I, I don't know if that has to do with like the conditions in terms of it seemed like that. And I don't remember this at the time. This was a season that did not have a lot of food. Uh, and that can really like do a number on people. Like, I don't remember that much talk of like uh, being starving on some of the other seasons around this era. But for whatever reason, uh, it seems like that a lot of people are really going through it. The weather is also a factor in the first part of the season. But uh, a, a number of contestants, an unusual number of contestants are having a uh, real like mental health problems on this season you you could almost i wouldn't say i would add her to the list of mental health problems but brenda's clearly going so through something too as you know sort of evidenced by the i thought you're gonna say me like, but no post uh, you know exit interviews that like she's basically sitting on a rock by herself the whole season we really don't see brenda who is sixth place in the season mm -hmm. interact with another person the entire season yeah i mean like is brenda in a shot with Eddie or Reynolds, who she makes the final nine with, you know? Yeah. So I don't I, think so. I Brenda think doesn't that... speak until like episode 10. I was like Crazy. tracking it. Yeah. I, it's wild. Uh, she like has like one moment where she pops that she is like cheering during the reward challenge uh, after the swap, but that's it for Brenda. And that, I think what I had heard the story is that she like had a 
uh, a, a romantic relationship, like a boyfriend, or uh, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it was a fiance yet at the time. And she was like very homesick during this time. But I think it's also very illuminating when her dad comes and she can't wait to tell her dad that she learned that the whole season she remembered the lesson that he told her be humble. And mm-hmm. I just watched Brenda in Nicaragua a couple of weeks ago in this rewatch. She is a completely different person. And I think that, uh, that while dad helped her game, I think dad killed Brenda, the TV character, because yeah. Brenda, the TV character was talking about, oh, uh, this is uh, let me t- tell you what's wrong with Chase, what's wrong with uh, with Sash, and she would like go off on people in the confessionals, and that was like, oh, Brenda, she's such good TV. But I think that she's like humble, Brenda, and now she was boring. Well, also, this is jumping ahead, but how does she lose to Malcolm for fan favorite of the season? Is that just off the goodwill or the the hotness or the Dawn takedown that was like recent people's mind? I, I don't understand it. I obviously didn't remember who came in second place in the yeah. sprint fan favorite when award. You said when you how did she lose? You mean how did she come how in second? Did she get they so say close. lose. I'm sorry. No, yeah. lose to by one percent. Yeah, like, crazy. She well, almost won. I, I can tell you what that is. Is that mm-hmm. it's all like if you go back and look at these uh, fan favorites, a lot of times it's the person who got voted out right before the episode. Like in Nicaragua, Jane ends up winning it. Where if you get voted out like on the Wednesday before the Sunday finale, oh, like okay. you're very fresh in people's memories and. It's especially when you get burned hard. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I feel so bad for this person. Let me call in and cast my vote for them. And her, the family visit memorable. is a, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. going to say, it's a good episode for her. This is sort of random, but speaking of memorable, one thing that struck me watching the first half of the season is how memorable every single person on the season is to me. Like I remembered everyone except for Laura, who looks very much like Hannah G from The Bachelor, but that's mm-hmm. for Haley Strong, Haley Strong only. But um. But except for Laura, who four episodes in, I couldn't remember who she was. Mm-hmm. Even race car driver Julia, I remember because she was like so nondescript and nobody remembered her. That was almost a joke. But mm-hmm. all of these favorites, I mean, these early boots, obviously, I was shocked how early Allie and Hope go because to me, I could have told you Hope, Reynolds, Allie and Eddie as a foursome were just so memorable from this season. Yeah. So they don't have like a single. Could you could you tell me an attribute that Hope or Allie? Or, you know, or even Laura, who I remember it's sort of people really liking at the time, but gets very little airtime. Also. I can tell you that Allie's not the cutest one, according mm-hmm. to Reynold. <laughs> remember that? And Hope had the very good line saying, I would like to do this without Eddie this time. <laughs> Eddie, like, Eddie, literally, Eddie, Eddie literally says after Hope gets voted out that they voted her out because she was too attractive. Like he earnestly thinks that. Well, let's talk. Then let's uh, drill in on the fans' tribe here, uh, mm-hmm. because uh, that uh, you know we have everything going on with Shamar. But I guess uh, before Shamar really becomes an issue, we have the issue of that Eddie and Reynolds that they anoint themselves as uh, they refer to themselves as uh, being at the cool kids' table. Typically, Ali, on a reality TV show, you hear like the people that are outside of the group say like, oh, that's the cool kids table. This is, I think, the first time in reality show history. I think you hear people identify themselves as where the cool kids table. See, I tend to watch a lot of reality television where people identify themselves as uh, cool kids, but it's not at the level that you're living in, Rob. It's much more beneath you in terms I, of I've never been to the cool kids table, so I don't know what it's like. <laughs> no, no, but just the shows that would where that would be celebrated. But yeah, no, I mean, is this the dumbest alliance in reality TV history? I mean, what's the like two into one is five? Like who <laughs> makes an alliance with yeah. four people? When that's the minority, like it's what was their plan? Just that, like, we're the new hotness and we'll be well enough liked that they couldn't possibly get rid of this brute strength in the tribe. I mean, Reynolds shows himself later to be like a semi strategic or at least passable thinker that he wouldn't think this is a good idea. It was just so frustrating and hilarious. I love that the the nerds take them down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Akiva, it is interesting that the way that this plays out for the fans tribe is that I think that Eddie and Reynolds feel like, okay, well, we're the athletic guys on the team. We're sort of like the center of everything. They need us to win the challenges. They wouldn't dare, you know, go against us. We're con- we're controlling things because typically in Survivor, you end up seeing those types of players being the people who run things because they're needed for their challenge strength. In this case of this fans tribe, it ends up breaking very early because the outsiders say, 
all right, I guess we'll put up with Eddie and Reynolds, but we will uh, vote out the uh, quote unquote girlfriends of Eddie and Reynolds and keep them yeah. against their will. Yeah, I think Eddie and Reynolds had never watched an episode of the show, probably. So they just assumed it was all based on challenge strength, which they were partially right about. They did both not get voted out because of their challenge prowess. And Eddie does literally come in fourth. Um, but yeah, I, I, they, they, you know, there's a reason why it's funny because people rooted for Eddie and Reynolds. Like they were very popular, even though, you know, they were both Eddie in particular, unbelievably bad at the game, but it, it, it's really crazy that, um, well, for also like imagine being the producers and like the more interesting people ultimately make themselves into a minority alliance like they should have swapped after one episode because if you look at the six honestly the the main theme for me if it's like what went wrong with the season the casting on the season on both tribes is just so abysmal right julia landauer like someone had to get fired for that right i'm, I'm not being mean like i'm sure she's a lovely person <laughs> we'll Maybe be the judge of that akiva you're, you're being yeah. mean but you're being honest but like it's she was more boring than i remember like it, every is she like sucks the you know fun out of the screen when she mm. talks I, I think that's a little She's bit of an like, insult to Vanilla, calling her Vanilla. Yeah. Is one of the best I, I lines the, of the season. Though. Um, it is a great line. And well, Akiva, I bet something that's going to bl blow your mind. I think that they like the, they like is the Julia casting. Is Julia Landauer here? That would no, be they like they like the casting so much. I believe Ali went to go work. Not Ali Lasher, Ali Povitz went yes. to go work in Survivor yeah. casting. Well, I don't have a problem with Ali. We didn't well, see she her didn't, talk, But basically. she didn't cast Julia Landauer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that maybe she, the Ali replaced the person they fired for it's casting yeah. Julia. Uh, and honestly, like, I, I like Michael Snow. He doesn't say a single thing that's interesting the entire time he's there. And Matt Bischoff, I, I, they're casting based what? on, like, he, they're casting based on, on, like, an archetype. Like, ooh, there's this guy with this crazy beard. Matt Bischoff also, like, I'm sure he's an interesting guy in real life, brings zero to the table the whole season. The, there's really, and also it's Shamar and, non, and, and nine white people, uh, you know, something that would not happen, you know, in 2021, but there's just so many misses. And this is the, this is maybe the better tribe. I mean, there's more mistakes mm -hmm. on, on the, when they get off the plane. And again, most of these people have not watched the show. There is such tepid reactions, Rob, to like yeah. when they're bringing back Brenda, like they can't even fake the audio. Like there's no other than Cochran and Philip, like they don't even get reactions to the, to the 10 people like I don't yeah. remember how mad people were at the time about who they picked but they made such terrible choices I can tell and, like, you how I felt at the time I called yeah, them all a tribe of goofy losers goofy losers <laughs> yes those were the fans yeah no that's so, what I said about the, the favorites, favorites. Are the, the favorites are the goofy losers. <laughs> so it, it is interesting because I think that this does highlight where the the dark ages of survivor we talk about is uh, like, oh 21 to 24 that's sort of like it's all recruits macters that's really the the dog days of survivor casting philippines i think gets a pass because we you know they uh bring in malcolm and denise and and you know uh, we have fond memories of abby maria and you got Je uh jeff kent and lisa welchel in there to sort of like uh you know round round out that cast uh you bring in a couple of returnees so i think that philippines uh gets through but there's a couple of duds uh in the philippines cast that uh got through in there and then you had this uh cast of new players and yeah i feel like that there are definitely more misses then hits when it comes to the casting. And then we're going to have a season after this that's going to be all returning players and their and their loved ones. And then we really get hot with uh Kagi on, on out. But yeah, this is probably, you know, a symptom of the bigger problem going on in casting at this point. I, I hundred percent agree with that, obviously, but I also want to highlight just the theme of the season, right? A fans versus favorite season is going to be such a huge like thing for the fans tribe to have to overcome like it's not right. a shock to me that they get decimated early on as far as snowy not saying anything interesting i love snow i like didn't realize how much on the rewatch i would love snowy um and and also like the favorites make so many the fans make so many stupid mistakes like i'm jumping ahead to the swap but like Matt being like, uh, trust me, I don't have an idol, right? Like that maybe mm -hmm. wouldn't be as consequential on just an all newbie season. And a favorite would never do that, that kind of thing. Like yeah. the hope Shamar of it all, like that, that's an interesting interaction that we should talk about. I don't think that happens or it looks as egregious as compared to the favorites tribe. Well, I think you bring up an interesting point here. And it's sort of like big picture of fans versus favorites. Uh, did Survivor catch lightning in a bottle with fans versus favorites one? And was this a 
a flawed concept to have because uh, Kiva in the original fans versus favorites, Jeff Probst describes it as that, hey, like uh, you could be a fan of the Boston Red Sox, but now you get to play against the Boston Red Sox, which is an insane idea of like, <laughs> these are professional baseball players. How could me and my friends beat them in a game? <laughs> Um, yeah, they don't, you know, they don't play up that angle so much and maybe we're overanalyzing it and. Oh, you like, think maybe. 10 <laughs> years later, still talking about the season, Only we're overanalyzing it. <laughs> Wait, but, but may like maybe it, there's, they're there as the Washington generals. They're there as cannon fodder yeah. to lose to the favorites. Because if you had told Jeff before the season that Cochran is going to win and, you know, and, and sort of gave him the boot list. He would probably say like, oh, there's an iconic season. And Jeff comes back after he did. Philippines yeah. and says like the next season is way better. Right. 26 is going to blow 25 out of the water. Jeff, you know, famously has no idea what the fan reaction is going to be ever. But he thought 26 was going to be a home run. Like this is his ideal scenario. Well, Cochran is, wins. He was ready Jeff to walk whole... away from the show after this. This was like mm -hmm. all when the Jeff Probst talk show was going to start. Jeff, well, that's exactly – honestly, the Jeff Probes talk show looms large over this whole season to me, not just in the Brandon <laughs> massage, but just generally, right? Like, this is what Jeff loves to see on Survivor. This is Sari getting off the couch and getting across the beam. This is Cochran, who I wrote in my notes about Cochran, is that they play up that he's a huge loser, but really he's just a normal guy. So he's portrayed as a socially awkward nerd. He's a Harvard law student, but in real life, he's a pretty normal guy. And I feel like Jeff – brow beats us with like Cochran how did you even talk to another human before like <laughs> could did anyone even look at you you're disgusting yeah. Yeah. and now yeah. Cochran, you you're next to a girl <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yeah it's it's like very Jeff Probst pre Jeff Probst show yeah that you really get that in the finale that he's like uh like and if Cochran could do it anybody could do it where he's really like, like playing up Cochran as like the avatar for any survivor viewer could win the show because mm -hmm. Cochran has won the show which I think is a disservice to Cochran I said the same thing about Suri last week in the Game Changers finale where he's basically saying the same thing about like Suri she was just a person who was watching TV now look at her she's a four time survivor I was like no Suri is an amazing survivor player Cochran is a pretty brilliant guy like uh, he studied the show he wasn't just any guy if you want to know what any guy could do go look at who you put on the fans tribe <laughs> <It's true. laughs> that's what happens when you find any random person and put them on the show the julia landauer theory <laughs> now yeah. but to go back to the fans versus favorite concepts right like i talk about a show uh where every season is fans versus favorites on the challenge right they always yeah. bring in new Trust people me. but they have a benefit of having at least been on a show before they're used to cameras and now they're mixing them on the challenge. And honestly, it's a real, like the casting has to be exactly right. I don't think they could never do another fans versus favorite successfully, but to Akiva's point, like the casting of the fans tribe just doesn't hold up to the demands of not mm -hmm. even that the favorites are so great, but like they have experience. I mean, Corinne used to talk a lot about on your second season, you come back and you insist on what you're going to wear. You're not afraid of production. You have some more leverage. I want my photo to look like this. I'm going to like, you see the fans get out of the, the favorites get out of the helicopter. They've got scarves. They've got jackets. Like they're much smarter about yeah. what their wardrobe is going to be. than the fans would be. Yeah. I mean, they do do fans versus favorites literally the next season, essentially. And it's another bloodbath. <laughs> Sh Sherry yeah. is the only in the three seasons where it's 10 V 10 new versus old. Sherry's the only person that right to make a, to make the final tribal. In three seasons, and eight out of eight, there's only. Do you one. know why she's there, Akiva? Do you know why she's <laughs> like they were so? We're trying to time. figure out why Sherry's mm -hmm. there. Yeah, um, but Akiva, I think you're probably right in terms of like I, I think that they do want that Washington Generals effect because when you go back to the original fans versus favorites, it's like, oh, what are the things that are great about it? It's like, oh, like uh, everybody tricking Jason, getting voted, him getting voted out with with mm -hmm. an idol. Uh, then, of course, they played the Eric Reichenbach clip. So I think that they're like, OK, well, let's bring in a bunch of rubes and then our survivor vets could be pulling off all sorts of like uh, crazy dunks on them while they're sort of like standing around hapless like, oh, what happened? Yeah, I think, uh, th listen, they, you know, I don't know if they're, the goal was for Cochran to win. But this thing is set up like so easily for uh, Cochran to win, much like the next season is set up for Tyson or maybe ours to win. Like there's it, it's it's almost too easy. Like the, there's no scenario if they play out this season a hundred times. I don't think there's a scenario where like Matt Bischoff or or Laura Alexander wins the season.
it would have been very tough for one of the the fans to ultimately uh, win this thing. Uh, I do think that that's one of the issues uh, with the rewatch in that the show does not even like build up a viable alternative. And I think that's one of the things that uh, hurts it on, at least in terms of a rewatch. And I'm not, I think in the first watch, Ali, I think it was like, the, it was so novel of can Cochran do this? You know, we saw what happened with Cochran in South Pacific. Uh, and I think that there was a lot of uh, intrigue there, but in terms of like watching it a second time that, that they don't build up anybody else that could potentially win. Not from a fan's perspective, but I do think, and I think this is why besides the hair and that he can do everything, the reason that Malcolm ends up being sprint fan. Sure. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. No, but I, I just, I think you're right. From a fan's perspective, I agree. There's no real resistance. It's all led by Malcolm. And then when Malcolm goes, you don't have any faith in Reynolds and Eddie at all yeah. to be able to figure it out. And even Eddie getting to the four, I mean, there's not one moment where I thought Eddie was going to possibly win this season. And I don't know if that's the edit or that I knew he wasn't going to win, but I don't even think back then I thought he was going to win. Yeah. Say for Malcolm, I was going to uh, add that he, I think it's one of the final nine, Malcolm. Right. Like uh, He doesn't go the distance. <laughs> he just doesn't even sniff this thing uh, after, you know, he has a, uh, you know, a couple of great moments, uh, you know, in the, in the first half of the merge. Um, let's let's go back to that uh fans tribe and and talk a little bit more about what's going on because I, I think that the plight of shamar is interesting and i think that under the re-examination that i feel like that the show does a a bad job with shamar because i think that you know no. in, uh, well <laughs> and and again that's the the beauty of sort of like being able to go back and look at these things like all, all these years later uh they really bury shamar uh in the show and i think shamar was going through a lot of stuff out there uh that he's a marine he's also one of the biggest people that have ever been on the show probably people, the biggest it, right rob i would think I so mean, cliff robinson's taller but i don't know if he if he weighed more i don't you know yeah i mean that he is a, just a, a huge guy who and then he talks about it in the episodes that he's been through a, a, a lot uh he is a, a marine who uh that i'm not sure if he exactly said uh if he called it ptsd in the in the shows but he talks about how like he had, was dealing with a lot of anger issues uh when he was out there uh it's they do not seem to have a ton of substance uh out there to sort of like uh keep him going and the tribe has a lot of issues with shamar and they uh constantly are calling him lazy which of course is a very loaded term to be calling you know the one black contestant on the tribe and they refer to it constantly and he's dealing he's dealing with a lot and also he he uh says in the show that he describes like uh, you know i am i don't want to be the angry black man out here um but like th there are a lot of things that uh that he's getting angry with with uh, the way he's being received by the tribe yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it is. Sorry, it, um, it's interesting because we see very few confessionals from Shamar. We have like a couple unusual. He's talking, but it's it's um, sort of with other people. I don't know if he was just. I I also you know it, it seems like he is doing so poorly physically, and part of that is being a three hundred pound person on a season where even the people who weigh one hundred twenty pounds are basically withering away. I, mm -hmm. I think that's maybe the number one factor. Is like he, he even says right before he ultimately has to leave the game like i am no longer leaving this perch uh except for challenges like bring me rice once a day and that's it i'm I, like he just physically i i don't think could do it anymore yeah. um but I, I don't even think they got confessionals out of him because and maybe just because he was like such a wreck that he couldn't he wasn't even going either agreeing or physically up to doing them when he leaves like there's a little bit of like okay this is shamar's redemption and then and then Reynolds just absolutely dunks on him. It was like shocking. Yeah. I completely forgot about Reynolds it. They let Reynolds get the last word then Reynolds on Shamar. The like they, they, when, when do they do that with anybody? I don't even it's think wild. that Colton got that. No, he did I not. Mean, so, so I went back. It was really exciting to have Twitter and be able to like search how I felt about these people in 2013. I, I say February 27th, I'm getting really sick of them making a fool of Shamar like this. Yes, he can be loud, he can be angry, but you would be two after two tours in Iraq. And it's like, so I don't even think that, you know, that was 2013, right? Like, I don't even think you need a new lens necessarily to look at this and be like, this seems egregious. They they give, I, I agree, Survivor treated him completely unfairly. I think his edit was largely giving Reynolds the last word. But we do get this moment where he's expressing why he's feeling this way and like you said like about his experience in iraq and 
Eddie's there behind him, sort of looking like maybe a little shaken by it. And I don't know if they jump cut to Reynolds being there, if he was there the whole time. But then they get a confessional of him being like, I don't care what he's talking about. He's lazy. And it's like, so not only after the medevac, but after he's talking about his experience serving this country, Reynolds still being an a-hole in the confessional. Mm -hmm. So I hope that not everybody had the, uh, the, the, the thought like, oh, Shamar so terrible. Reynolds great. Like, I, I don't remember how people felt about Reynolds and Eddie Akiva. You say they were below. They like them. I mean, I hated them. <laughs> I don't, I, well, how about, I was thinking this, Rob. And maybe Ali's our exception. Was there one person on earth in the highlight of the season, the Three Amigos Tribal Council, is there one person on earth saying, oh, no, not Philip? Is there anybody not rooting well, no, but that's Malcolm different. Reynolds and Ellie? Well, wait, let's let's keep talking about Shamar for a second because that's like okay, our, that's our mm -hmm. that's all we have. People are listening okay, to fine. talk about that Tribal Council, right? There's so okay. little meat on this bone. But the other thing with Shamar is like, and, and this is what you were saying, Akiva, right? He's, he's the one black person on this tribe. Without Sherry... Shamar, I think, would even have had a worse experience. Yeah. And it does speak to the importance of diversity in casting, not only in racial diversity, but in experiences and personality types, right? You have four dinguses who make this alliance. You have Laura, who basically is interchangeable with Ali and Hope. And, and like, why are, why are five spots in this tribe being wasted with people who are what under 30 and have like the same limited life experience where mm -hmm. Sherry's able to understand Shamar and say he's misunderstood. I also think when Shamar, like you're saying, Akiva, he does have outbursts that are scary, right? Like they're, they're like objectively, like I said, Brandon doesn't meet sort of mm -hmm. the frustration, like the, the stimulus Shamar also has that, but like Shamar is so like Sherry keeps saying misunderstood by the tribe, even his tribal, the one sort of strategic thing Shamar tries to do where he sort of tips off hope to vote with them, to vote to, for Eddie, is not a bad idea, except that hope yeah. seems unwilling to be actually playing the game and take the mm -hmm. lifeline and make the connection. She also just hates Shamar. But when she set, turns around and throws him under the bus at Tribal, like I felt for Shamar because he's like, that's not what happened. That's not what I said. Like I didn't flip on the whole tribe. And it's true. He didn't. Did he make the smartest move? No. But he is getting accused of these things. And if you're constantly just against the wall being like, no, that's not me. No, you don't get it. No, I didn't say it like that. I would, I mean, Akiva, you know, I would get mad too. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that you also uh, feel for Shamar at the point where that is it after I think uh, Ali goes home, Reynolds like is like like uh, yelling at everybody of like oh you know yeah you had to vote out Ali and then Shamar is gets really mad is like oh wait so you're mad that I didn't get voted out yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny line actually yeah I wish so. we saw more from Shamar because I think Shamar would have been I mean he's the the He's he was like viral on YouTube. I rewatched that video yeah. actually in preparation for this too. That he's the like one Marine against 30 police officers mm -hmm. YouTube video in New York City. And the one percenter uh what, Occupy what, Wall Street. Yeah, Occupy Wall Street. Yeah. And it's um, you know, Shamar Shamar, I feel like had a lot more to give, a lot more story to tell. I think you're right that the elements for a guy of his size can be like too mm -hmm. difficult, and the tribe just like wasn't. Yeah, they didn't, yeah they I didn't understand. Jail, like, we could understand why he was cast. Which he's a gregarious him... guy when yeah. he's like, a, when he's fed um, and, you know, getting the proper amount of nourishment for somebody his size. Like, he's the most interesting person on the favorites tribe. And he just, get, and the fans tribe. How many times am I going to say fans and favorites the wrong way? Um, I think, but it just doesn't, it doesn't pan out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ultimately, uh, he wants to go home that I, I kind of feel like that maybe they should have let him go earlier. Like, I feel like that Sherry, like, I understand what she was trying to do strategically of like, hey, I'm going to drag. She calls this. He's going to be my Philip. He's going to I'm going to go to the end and everybody's going to hate him the whole way. He's going to yell at people and I'm going to be the person who benefits uh, from that at, at the end of the game. But I kind of feel like that she probably tried to keep that going for too long. I mean, what do you? Well, I disagree as somebody who threatens to quit everything. Like if Akiva hadn't pulled me back to NGOG like once a week, I would have walked off NGOG too. But like, I want to be there. I'm not saying that's what's going on with Shamar, but I don't think, I mean, to me, Shamar didn't seem to be in like clinical, con critical condition. Right. And he didn't, like he's had that conversation about wanting to quit. 
But I think that Shamar is somebody who, if he wanted to walk away, would want to walk away. And sometimes when someone's feeling, again, this could totally be wrong about Shamar, but like when I'm feeling rejected in a situation and I like threaten to walk off, like you need someone to be like, no, we want you here. Like he's being completely rejected by whatever, seven eighths of the tribe. Like I don't know mm -hmm. how many people there are. And even Sherry is like kind of sick of him. So I don't think like he's, he got sand in his eye and had to get medevac because he like overstayed. I mean, no, I, I don't think that that's that's what happened. But I feel like that just from like the strategic just, uh, yeah. standpoint of like, can you make it work with somebody when they want out this early? That I feel like that uh, like I feel like that Sherry had just seen Redemption Island. It feels like, oh, okay, this is what you want to do. Okay, I'm gonna be able to work with Shamar. I'm the only person that gets him. But the fact that you know he had so many other issues with wanting to be there and getting along with the rest of the tribe, I, I just don't think that there's the success story out there in survivor history like even philip like uh you know did not have issues like this uh, in the early going well yeah what, what about the sweet it. irony rob where she says i want him to be my philip and then sherry becomes the philip even worse <laughs> philip was like treated <laughs> well, like a human being at well at Rob, Rob's well, i thought town. you were gonna say then sherry gets to philip and was like oh, i can't stand philip but then she ends up coming around and like uh winning philip over she likes philip but then she becomes the philip of this season Truly one of the goatiest goats we've ever seen <laughs> to the point where she's, you know, basically walking off almost at, uh, at final tribal. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is jumping ahead, but to me, the frustration with the Sherry, the way Sherry's treated at final tribal is that the only goatier goat to me is Eddie. Eddie like had such a worse uh, performance. He didn't do anything strategically. At least Sherry flipped at the right time and built trust with the right people. And if Eddie, to me, is sitting there at the final three and not Sherry, he's getting praised by at least half the jury, and he's not getting the same shit as she is. And to mm. me, I think Sherry played a much better game than Eddie. I, I forgot how disrespectful they were to her, Rob. It's, I it's was really floored. wild. Yeah, yeah. Right, well, let's, just don't vote for her. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, let's, sorry, let's, but I'm just like that. I'm hot about that. Spoilers, episode. guys. Yeah, let's let, let's do that separately because uh, I think we'll do a whole section on the final tribal council. Um, all right. So, uh, you know, we talked about the issue going on at the uh, fans tribe. Uh, over on the favorites tribe, you know, we have the other bookend here of Brandon Hans, and you know, we were saying that you know you could see how Shamar is going to be a gregarious guy in casting, and you see what, like uh, what the appeal is to potentially cast Shamar. Uh, with Brandon, that's the one where every single person, at least that I knew at the time, when they heard, okay, we are going to bring Brandon Hans back for this season, felt like, wait, what? What, what now? Why, why are we doing this? It's like how people react when you say, I'm going to be on a podcast. I don't know. I mean, yeah. the thing with Brandon, it, you said it on one of these podcasts. Was it Nicaragua? You said this like they they have Russell. And then they're like, all right, who's the next Russell? We're going to go to his bloodline. They're, like They feel like yeah. they have to like – squeeze something out of this and it's like there's nothing left here <laughs> go on to the next one well you really get the sense that and, and you know i have empathy for brandon hans here because i feel like that and, and i haven't watched uh south pacific yet this year but you know he certainly had his issues there but like uh also was like uh seemed like that there was a sweetness about him in south pacific and uh, whether it was from his family or people in casting or producers or whoever, like you feel like that he got it from both ends of that. People said to him, Hey, you failed the Hans name the first time out. And then I really feel like he was gassed up coming into the season. You're going to be more like Russell this time, right? You're going to give us, you're, you're not going to like give the necklace away and just talk all about religion. You're going to Hans it up, right? It makes sense, right? Because he, I mean, his his shtick from day one is like, I'm gonna pee in the rice, throw out the beans, you know. He right. so it it does make sense that maybe he came in with that sort of mentality, like I'm gonna. And remember, this is a season before Jatia jumps at the beans, so it's not even a thing, right? Like he he's almost invented it. He invented the way that you know we we ruin the food. Well, yeah, nobody has ruined the food yet. Russell has uh, burnt socks. Uh, you know, and Nayanka has like hid the food, uh, but nobody has destroyed the food. I think the thing with Brandon is like, there are moments of brilliance, right? There are moments of his reaction in the challenges when he's like pulling out, but he's like, oh, like, like there is, he's like pounding his chest. He's like very into it on this challenge beast. Like there are moments of Brandon on a season of a very, I mean, Akiva and I talked about this off air, right? Like there are a season of very, just like mild people, there's no Tony on this season, right? And like Philip 
is sort of coaching, but like, you know what I mean? Like the energy level of the majority of the people on the season is very low. And Brandon, when he's good is giving you like a heightened energy, like, but he, I don't think like, so I, I can see it. Like there were times where I was like, Oh, I'm enjoying Brandon. I'm enjoying, I'm agreeing with what he's saying that Philip is playing a, a bad social game and that he's, they're saying yes to him, like, yeah, Philip, yeah, sure, no, thank you. I've been kissing your butt, like, great. And then he goes to the confessionals, like, I'm just telling him this, but like, I'm really mad at him. Like, that's the makings of something. There's something there. There's a little kindling. And then just yeah. boom, he goes to like the next extreme where it's like, okay, he's actually like, this is not right to have him out here. But I see some potential in there of like, there were moments that maybe it was just how terrible the pre merge was, but I did enjoy. 20% of Brandon on the, on the show. Uh, but call me crazy. I don't know. I, I, maybe it's just me. I mean, there's, there's something about him that, uh, <laughs> I, that I, I mean, I think that, you know, you know, that he, uh, you know, is sort of like able to sort of like disguise, like, uh, how he feels about Philip to some degree, although Philip is also disguising how he feels about Brandon, uh, back and forth. So there's a little bit of that where he calls him uh, middle management, uh, which is not ideally what you want to say to, uh, Brandon to win him over, but to anyone Akiva, who wants to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Akiva, how old is Brandon Hans in survivor Caramo and playing He's in his, Second Survivor season. I believe he's twenty two. Another no, another. Th no, he is, is he is twenty. Wow! He is, in his he second is season, twenty in his second season. That's crazy. Out here on Survivor, and which he's a is, dad. He has multiple kids, I think. Right? Yes, he has. He has. Uh, I believe he is uh, married. He has children at at this point. Uh, but I mean, it is malpractice uh, to like uh, you know w when we're talking about bringing kids out who are sixteen. Mm -hmm. Like he has already gone through what he's been through at eighteen. And he's back playing another season here at 20. It's really wild. Also, we, you know, we, you, we don't really uh, focus on the impact of he's in the minority at the first vote, right? He's one of the four people who, who vote for Philip and not for, we're well, not for Philip. He votes for Andrea. Um, Andrea is the, is the, is the, is the, is the losing boot, right? Like, um, but I, I think, and, and he's very upset. He, I believe, he, I believe he's the one who points out, well, I was really messed up that you guys voted out Francesca twice in a row. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, that probably did not help that he was not in the majority alliance literally on the first vote. And then they don't vote again for basically weeks and weeks and weeks. So we didn't it's even just talk building about up. Francesca. I can't. Yeah, we'll it. circle yeah. back to Francesca. <laughs> I think that the bigger like we're talking about the uh, bigger issues with the pre-merge. Uh, but um, yeah, the, the Brandon stuff is uh, is, is just uh, so wild. Uh, should they have uh, like they put him on the season? Ali, is there a point when they should have uh, intervened earlier or yes? Yeah, no, I think I said this before too. Like, it's absolutely absurd that it's on the favorites to show up there and be like, we're foregoing the, we're forfeiting the challenge. We want to go to tribal. I mean, I'm not accusing Brandon of being dangerous, right? He ultimately doesn't put hands on anybody. And, and I've, again, I talk about a show where people put hands on people all the time. Um, but to the point where Philip justifiably is like sleeping with one eye open because this guy keeps threatening to burn their shelter and har physically harm them. That's beyond the bounds of the game. Like that's an ejection to me. I don't think it should have. And who knows if it, I, I mean, you guys might know, I don't know if it was like really on the favorites or if that was like all orchestrated, right. but to me, it shouldn't be on the contestants to have to, uh, it's almost like it goes back to like the, the Kelly stuff in 30, mm -hmm. whatever, like the, the bottom tier season. Like it shouldn't have to affect the players in the game and be, and have them deciding, okay, like, is he in my Alliance, but I really care about him. I don't want to like da the Dawn situation. Like she's obviously broken up about having to do this. Andrea breaks down over it. It shouldn't be on them to say right. this person is unfit to be in the game. And he was clearly unfit to be in the game. It, yeah. Rob, I also think with, um, with, with, first of all, the Brandon stuff, I, my, my impression at the time was, they just needed to squeeze out an episode, and that's why, like, that's one of the longest scenes in the history of the show, right? It's like 20 minutes, basically, where it feels like it, where, you know, Jeff is doing the ridiculous massage, and they're doing it. They even vote. Like, the Wikipedia has a vote for that, which I think is absurd. Like, this is a clear quit or, or, or you know, evacuation. Like, to me, that's absurd mm -hmm. that that counts as vote. But the point is, like, they, this was the show doing what was in the show's interest, which was having a 60-minute episode of television, which would have been very tricky. Allie knows this as someone who 
podcast about a show that sometimes gets cut off in the middle, but Survivor's not going to do that. There's no real way around that if Brandon just leaves, other than losing an episode. I mean, they lose Eric at the final five. Like, they've had people medevaced and they they accommodate it. But but that doesn't cost them anything because they just throw in one of the worst things ever, just that uh, reward challenge. And they milk this. They milk this. That uh, When you watch episode four, they're like, and and next time on Survivor, Mm -hmm. a moment that book will be iconic that, I mean, that you have to see what happens. Like, uh, they really go They're proud of go themselves, forward. Rob. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. They give them. I think it gives them a pass to say like, "Oh, well, they needed to fill the time." That like shows lose people randomly all the time early on. They can find look. Your eye, they find a way to stretch. Like they could find a way. Well, to I'm stretch. criticizing them. I'm not giving them a pass, but but I'm oh, saying sorry. like that's their that's sort of their like. Well, if we just get him to the you know to where the challenge is, we could really squeeze this out instead of having. It is very awkward, as and no season can say it better than this one have somebody sort of leave off screen and that's really what happens to <laughs> eric basically and it sucks like i mm-hmm. i get it like you just pull a guy from the game and and i think it happens to dan if i'm not mistaken also right oh i thought but, you meant when brandon walks by and they have that wet shot of the camera at the droplets <laughs> like he walks off camera that was very awkward yeah <laughs> ultimately okay. day one of casting they should have caught this this is this this was <laughs> yeah. like there's no psych test in the world that he was passing but ali do you recall how they promoted this season do you remember any of the promos leading up to uh this season of how they of were marketing not. Survivor Caramel. So that not. they were that that Ozzy Osbourne Crazy Train was the <laughs> licensed music that was like look who we're bringing back. Da-da, 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 da-da. Like uh it's going to be like What's it? <laughs> yeah. And, and they're like Philip Brandon like uh, they openly marketed the season as like uh, all the crazy characters are back. Not great. They took a shot. Yeah. <laughs> it, what What do you think they should have done? I guess this is a question people would like. Like, what What could they have done differently? And again, like you like you referenced at the beginning, like they're really taking from a pool since they use they like to mm-hmm. use the people in the two seasons of the weakest seasons in the history of the show. Is there is there a group of two or three people they could have used that would have really changed the because just it, it's not just that they weren't the right people. It's a lot of people, even Corinne, who I personally like who bring negative energy philip is, is you know salt sucks everything out of the out of every what's scene. wrong with negative energy <laughs> N- nothing <laughs> um but it, almost other than eric who doesn't speak and uh, you know andrea brenda like the, it's mostly negative energy from from the uh yeah really both it is a, a weak pool different. of that it seems like that we're going back to i don't think there's anybody that's from that has played prior to the last fans versus favorites and also nobody that has played a second time already. So right. if you were like good enough, they probably are. They already brought you back for heroes versus villains. So we're really uh, looking at people from like token teens, Samoa, Nicaragua, Redemption Island. Uh, Give me Taj. Where's Taj? That's yeah, obviously energy. that's the one like, but listen, I'm sure they maybe she Taj. said no. No, yeah, well, sure there's a wiki. Know. There's a part in the wiki that I'm too far from my laptop to like type um, where it says, I think Lisa Welchel, they asked. I don't know that she improves the season, but she said no, um, especially back to back. They said that Stephen, according to the wiki, was asked to be on the season. Steve, does see, Stephen Fishback move the needle for you? Maybe instead of Cochran? I don't not know. Not negative, at least. I think Cochran took his spot, maybe. Yeah, that's the same. They're probably not going to put them together. Yeah. Um. I forget. There's there's a couple people. They said I think they Tyson's mentioned, even though he had played already. I think Tyson actually would be a big improvement on the season instead of Eric. Uh, mm-hmm. And I, I, I think, think Eric I was for... you wanted you wanted the bookends of the fans versus fans. Yeah, I, I think I, that he was. I, I, I get I like why they Eric. did it. I like Eric honestly. I think he did better than his last season, but um. I don't hate Eric in the way I think a lot of people do as a player, even though he's not like a real strategic mind. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of the a lot of the intrigue in some of the votes gets lost because Eric's the swing, but he's not able to really communicate why he's making decisions. But Tyson, okay. I think, if they could have thrown him in. Here, let me give you a couple others. Okay, this is, again, according to the Survivor Wiki, uh, which, you know, I'll say, you know, because sometimes I've seen stuff that's like, oh, that's not true. Um, mm-hmm. All right, so some other potential names. Stuff Shambo. about you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Shambo. Uh, well, I think Shambo does not want to play again, but she would have no. been, been good. I mean, Eddie is the Shambo of the season. Eddie is Eddie is the is the young male Shambo. <laughs> <laughs> just vote, vote. He is. What do you mean? He, he, the, the only YMS, two people I can ever remember YMS. in history who went like the final eight, seven, six, or 
voting so wrong. There's two different. There's the majority group, the minority group, and then there's their vote where they're voting completely. A when third I hear somebody's direction. the shambo of the season, I don't think of the person who's voting wrong at the eight. Well, that's what Shambo did. The most unique thing Shambo did was when Russell and 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 the and the other tribe are going back and forth. Foa Fo and Galoo, is that it? That's the only mm-hmm. tribe. I don't think you watched Survivor and came on. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I really don't know tribe names well. It's just that yeah. it hit me just now. The, that Shambo's like in the corner voting for a completely random person who's like not even still in the if game. You could bring ten percent of this energy to NGOG. I mean, oh, we'd be to the moon. I, it, <laughs> I have to save it for a nap. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so that um, all right. I'm uh, still Matt waiting Elrod, for that to show. Matt Elrod uh, could have come back. See, that's I, like, like a with Andrea beast. thing again. The yeah. guy Matt Elrod gets four confessionals if he's on this season. Who yeah, does he okay. replace Malcolm like that? I wouldn't want, right? Yeah. Like, I yeah. feel like the people we're talking about would take away the good people. Yeah, from Malcolm this starts. You have to start this cast with Malcolm. Malcolm unless, is one out of ten, unless Matt Elrod replaces Eric. But again, you want Eric, so. yeah. And then I think uh, we got Troy Zan also in the mix. Uh, same thing, okay. what, Rob. That would have been the same thing. What, what's Negative that, Troy Zan? Yeah, it would have been. It wouldn't have been bad. It would yeah, not. I think he, that's that's who got cut for Malcolm. Okay. Think, yeah, I, it would I have been. Tro- okay. The season wouldn't have aired, Rob, if Troy's in. Replaced Malcolm. <laughs> well, I'm just wondering if Troy, you have Troy's in here instead of in Game Changers. Uh, maybe it changes changes uh, Survivor history. What if mm. you have Troy's in instead of Brandon Hans? That's something. Sure, leave Troy Zan and then uh, yeah, sub in uh, Malcolm for Brandon if you want to if you want to do that. Um, let's talk about just um, in terms of how they dealt with Brandon's exit from the game. Wait, I'm sorry, uh, is I, that not the compliment of your life if you're cut for Malcolm? If they're like you're the same type as Matt, that's like a very mm-hmm. big compliment to Troy Zan. That's blowing my mind. Okay, sorry. Go yeah, good for Tro- good for Troy Zan. I don't know if he looked at it that way, but uh, yeah, Troy Zan may have click, started click, that rumor. That's or- nice. Or entered that on the Survivor Wiki. I'm not so yeah, sure. <laughs> he's out here promoting it. Like he got cut for Philip, but he's like, I think I he had a couple of close calls. I think he was also a close call for uh, Blood versus Water. Also, I think that uh, him and his brother were supposed to play uh, in that one. Uh, and then, of course, he's on the second chances ballot. So maybe Game Changers was just like, all right, we gotta, we we left Troy's in at the altar so many times. We owe him one. Wasn't well, mm-hmm. that his story for his first season that like he auditioned like a thousand? He had, times? Well, yeah, he had applied a number uh, like twenty times or something like that. Um, so I actually thought Akiva that Jeff does a uh, a pretty good job here with uh, <sighs> holding down the Brandon situation uh, when it, when it's happening. Like I think he does like a really I mean famous for the neck massage of like you know he gets a segment out of it and then also uh, does keep Brandon from just doing a you know spear tackle of Philip. I am. I was always wondering. I, first of all, is there is it possible any of the twenty Caramoan people are listening right now? Because I would have a um, question I didn't think of at the time. Yeah, I will say uh, my over under is two and a half. Okay, fine. So oh, I'm question... taking the hard under an hour into this. And John, hard John, under. John M. Cochran, my question for you is: Was I bet there was security like two feet away that they just cut wisely and don't show it? Because I Jeff is physically holding it back. He's giving him a massage that's legendary, but he's also physically like not letting him go. Like he's squeezing hard. And a show like the challenge, right? They will. They don't mind letting security guards literally be on camera. It would be a real departure and sort of trashy in Survivor's mind to have you know security guards, but they're you know inches away from that during the scene. Like there, I assume there was going to be intervention. They were not going to let Brandon get to the favorites tribe and have a fist fight on Survivor. Are we wasting our one question for Cochran on that question? I mean, of no, course, like right. of course Cochran, they have. Don't answer that. So you know the answer to that. No, but, but I'm saying like he's physically holding him back. Yeah. They're still yeah, but- lucky as hell that he didn't take off charging. And the fact that they have him walk off across is insane. It's an yes. insane decision to me. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know why they don't dismiss the tribes while he's still there with Brandon. And then they take Brandon off. I mean, I don't know. Like I'm sure they had people around, but it's not like the old school, like Jerry Springer show where they have like a team of bouncers, like standing by to break up potential fist fights. Like, I don't think that they're, they're prepared for interesting. That- I think they would have for this. You don't think for this moment they would have? I mean, but I just, do they have that person on, those people on staff on Survivor? Big dudes hold cameras. Like, they put uh a big dude in a black shirt. Yeah, but if you're on camera, you break the fight, you're, like, getting fired. Like, when I was there, there weren't, like, you know, a team of goons that were (laughs) standing around in case, like, extra security. The challenge security are not goons. The challenge security are the most essential folks on that show. (laughs) So uh, I will say that I thought Jeff, <laughs> Jeff did a good job, but then I felt like that uh, he has one misstep. Uh, I thought it was very dicey, Allie, when Jeff uh, asked Brandon, he's like, uh, so I have a question for you. I, uh, you might not like it. Um, 
Is it in the blood? <laughs> is it in the blood? Um, I'm just shocked still that you're saying he had one misstep. The whole, to me again, the entire scene is a misstep. The walk off in the rainy camera, misstep. The fact that he lets Brandon honestly berate Philip, like kudos to Philip for just sitting there and basically taking mm -hmm. being called a bitch repeatedly mm -hmm. by an unstable person like that that's hard to do like it, especially mm -hmm. for someone whose ego is I mean, so important to me to all them. the time but yeah like philip <laughs> yeah but your ego is not as important to you you know yes. like that's a compliment but philip to me the way that philip is philip's on the show because he's an egotistical self-important guy and to have a guy call him a bitch repeatedly is like a big problem anyway mm -hmm. so i just think the platform they gave brandon is kind of crazy but to answer your question, is it in the blood? I didn't even know what he was asking. He's like, you're a vile person. Is that because you're a hands or because you're just evil? Like, I, is that what he was mm -hmm. asking? I think. So. Yeah. I think the, the, is there something about, are, are you cursed by the hands lineage that you have to have uh, this type of behavior? Is there it's no way to not control in the blood, it? Because he's yeah. at least Russell was a halfway decent survivor player. Like mm -hmm. there's something there's something missing in the gene pool. You know, Russell's sins mostly all occur off of the island uh, in terms <laughs> of how Survivor goes. I mean, like uh, like Russell like has like you know an honest exit from the game. Like uh, basically, you know, he gets to the end twice and you know gets his torch snuffed and loses on Redemption Island and and walks off and does everything he's supposed to do uh, in his three stints on the show. It's like uh, his behavior off of the show is like uh, and the behavior of his relatives on other CBS shows that really you know got him to be. A persona non grata uh, with the production. He does it twice Brandon's age. Like maybe twenty year old Russell does that too. But like with mm -hmm. the experience, like he calms down. Like you like you said, Brandon's a kid. Russell, Philip, they're grown ups. Yeah. I mean, Brandon did an interview with Corinne that I listened to not too long ago. I mean, with quarantine, it was probably five years ago. But it feels like it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. He he already. I mean, how old is he now? Yeah. And I talked to him last year also that uh, that, he, that he asked me to do an interview with, with him. Ooh, I and, snubbed like, the Rob in interview a, and I listened to the current interview. I'm so well, sorry. He, he's, <laughs> I, I think he's in a much better place. Uh, yeah. Like, you yeah. know, uh, seven, eight years out from Survivor. Do we bring Caramel. him back? Do we bring him back? No, I've never. <laughs> I think we got it. I think we got yeah. it. He's but, in 42. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon versus Russell. That's mm -hmm. what people are clamoring for. I don't act like you wouldn't watch. Both of <laughs> you goons would watch that. There would uh, be a lot of goons right. there. <laughs> let's talk about from, island of moons uh we mentioned francesca okay uh the season gets off to a you know fast start uh with the 90 minute premiere which ultimately ends in francesca getting voted out it was so great that they gave francesca another shot but then ultimately uh she ends up getting the same fate as from her first season where it's never gonna work with her and Philip, she extends the olive branch to Philip, and he's not interested in taking it. I am such a big, I don't want to say the biggest, but I am one of the biggest Franny fans. I was going to say on this side of the computer, but I am yes. one of the biggest Franny fans. Well, she has many, many fans. Uh, she is uh, the queen of Clubhouse. Oh, you knew he was going to mention it. I, I just wanted to set him up. I don't even like Franny. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I, I am a huge Franny fan, and I like normally when people are like, oh, Mitt Franny, but like I'm saying that because I think it doesn't necessarily show because she's only had two half episodes on her seasons. Yeah. But she is, and like I listen to all the iterations of her podcast. I listen to every appearance she has done on like podcasts. She is just so instantly charismatic and unbelievable and socially aware. And I honestly think she would be an unbelievable survivor player. And what she says about herself, which is like, I have so much potential and that'll remain untapped. Like, bye you losers. Like, I think we have lost so much by losing Franny, especially mm -hmm. to Philip. I'm sorry, but like we get what Philip's about and we didn't get to see Franny. And I think her fatal flaw is like, she couldn't have predicted that these people would want to work with them. Now, maybe she could have predicted because they come from sort of the Boston Rob school, like the Andreas of the world might want to keep Philip for the same sort of Shamar principle. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's really the Philip principle, the Shamar principles based on the Philip principle. So anyway, um, it's just like, of course they'd want to vote him out. Like, why wouldn't they? She is trying to think of what's best for the tribe and like Cochran's rules at the end. And yet, they make what is seemingly the illogical decision to get rid of 
a loyal, thoughtful, like strong. well-reasoned ally, strong in the challenges in favor of Philip. But you know, my heart goes out to Franny. Yeah. I really wish that we got to see her play more than one episode. You know, of all of the pre-merge boots that they bring back and we say, what, what, what did they see in this person that they wanted another go around? Like this was the most inspired recasting of someone who was an early boot of like, no, we feel so strongly in this choice. We're bringing her. I know she got voted out first. We're bringing her back and here she comes. But then you feel like that was this only because that like, oh, well, like uh, we know that this will be a foil for Philip to fight with. They got what they wanted, right? Like the production was happy after the first episode that Philip like they listen. If it was ultimately going to be Philip versus Francesca and Francesca, I think, has said in interviews like she wanted to target Philip and like sort of felt that people production was like implying that he had an idol to maybe scare her away from Philip. That's what she said. But mm -hmm. I but I, I think um like they, they were pumping their fists when franny got voted out first the second time it's a storyline for them they they mm -hmm. like that it would have of course it would be nice if if this time you know she she gets a one-up on philip even if philip's not the person who goes first and she wins this you know this this battle but mm -hmm. uh I, I i like they brought her back for this to fight with philip i yeah. agree but i do think she would also just be an amazing player if they no, we agree yeah. she just no no 100 but without him i mean it it just shows though that like and i'm in favor of a season with all first boots or in favor of half first boots half second place final, whatever like something like that but you can't just have one first boot on the i would have voted her out first too right it's the easy you're always looking for what's the easy vote and it's like oh what she's the she was already voted out first so like it's cruel but it's easy mm -hmm. yeah um, i wouldn't do it though i love her yeah, and it's a raw deal for Francesca where she has relationships with Andrea and with Cochran from before the show uh, comes out. And it's a real betrayal that, you know, people that she knew in real life and end up uh, voting against her. But, you know, the thing is that, you know, uh, Cochran has uh, Dawn who that he played he played with and had a very good relationship with. Uh, and then also you have. Andrea, who played like 30 some odd days with Philip in another season where it's sort of like that she feels like, okay, well, I can trust Philip also. And everybody has seen where Philip uh, got taken to the end and it was like an automatic win for Boston Rob. So you understand like the temptation there to go ahead and go along with Philip and why everybody is so willing to jump in on the uh, Stealth R Us thing. Does that happen regardless of if Francesca, like how much was edit and how much do you think is real that they sort of put it out that Francesca is going hard in the paint to get Philip out and then that gets brought to Philip. If she just sort of goes with the flow, says to the Cochran, what are we doing? And like, do you think that actually mattered or that was just the edit? It's hard to say. I mean, Philip is telling us like right up the bat, he doesn't like Francesca, doesn't want to work with her. And then uh, it seems like that he wants to uh, not have her not have her around, uh, you know, cramping his style in this game. So uh, hard to say. But we're here to say. Yeah, I mean, we're, <laughs> that I, I get the sense that, you know, that uh, there's no love lost there. I would like. I mean, I I don't think it would be crazy to bring Franny back a third time, and I think it it is possible. I don't think she would ever do it. I don't think she'd do, she would do, it. Think she'd do it either. But I think they maybe make the call. Yeah. So, all right, let's talk about Philip a little bit more because we get so much stealth. R us too in the pre-merge and Akiva that I do feel like that while uh, I I don't know like uh, your mileage varies on the stealth or us stuff. It, it feels out of place here in this season where I feel like that we see like contrived, uh, like, uh, acted out skits in this season, uh, where that I, I feel like there is not a lot of authentic camp life that we see, uh, going on here with the, when we do see the favorites. Yeah. I don't think there's a contestant I can think of in 40 seasons that plays to the cameras as much as Philip, right? He, is I mean, some a lot of his confessionals are like standing, looking at you know directly into the camera at the cameraman, to, you know, and talking to Cochran or Andrew, whoever's behind him about somebody's nickname. He is literally, and Corinne is is, is talking about like he is just obsessed with getting camera time. Like his shtick is, I want to be on camera as much as possible. He's breaking the fourth wall to to talk to the viewer way more often than any other Survivor contestant I can remember. 
Um, and and it, is, it is very contrived. They're having like dance things and everything. Everything he's doing is to get on camera. I would be curious what he was like when the cameras were not super around. Like he's just lying in the shelter. If he's the same Philip or if he's being quiet. But I mean, he he sucks the energy. And Malcolm says this after he gets voted out. Like he sucks the energy out of every scene he's in. I, I think kids like him. Like my kids were watching with him. Like he is entertaining. I don't think Philip like I get why they brought him back. He's sort of coach 2.0. They couldn't wait to bring him back. They could wait, but you'll notice they haven't brought him back since, and I don't think they have plans to. You know, if they if they were doing an, another season with just random people who who have played again, I don't think Philip's getting a call. Where's um, Philip at though with wanting to? Because I listened to him on the um, Black Survivor Roundtable you had, yeah. and that was really fascinating to hear Philip's perspective of his portrayal on the show. And I, I forget what he said though. Would he go back, or he's sort of he seems sort of sour on it? No. Yeah, I, you know, it's it's a very good question, you know, that uh, that that I, I feel like that, you know, he he's so good at going in and out of uh, character and turning it on. Uh, I get the sense that he does have interest to potentially go back, but I think that he would want to make sure it was under like specific circumstances. And look with Philip, like, does it work for me? No. But would I rather, but again, in terms of a very even keel, low energy season, Philip's doing something. I laughed at, uh, at intelligentsia attache. Like I love, like some of it's so ridiculous. What I don't love is like, it's almost like it's compared to Tony where like somehow it works more for Tony because he seems to be maybe more of a competent player also. And maybe that's, and, and also people around Tony seem to like him. Whereas you get Malcolm, even at the reunion, like rolling his eyes over every stealth arrest discussion. It's almost like uncomfortable because of the way the tribe reacts to him. I I'm surprised to hear that the stealth arrest is so out of place. Cause I was waiting to like, give you guys stealth arrest nicknames. seems like we're not oh, having yeah, much please, fun with it, please. but anyway, but like I I'm here for morale and I'm here for fun. And, and Philip tries, it doesn't, it doesn't land always, mm -hmm. but at least he's trying yeah, something. We never just try anything. Something. Yeah. I was just saying that it feels out of place where it's like that. They're almost like the survivors are like on a stage and Philip is like, all right, now I'm going to give everybody nicknames. All right. Mm -hmm. Welcome to stealth. This is the stealth R us meeting. And this is Malcolm. And he's this, you know, he, and, and why is Corinne the dominatrix? I know that we never really got the backstory we on. We just hear the dominatrix. It. Yeah. You yeah. get one gesture. She's like, when they like yeah. do it in the room. I don't. I don't know. It. It doesn't seem like anybody enjoys it. Also, like maybe the first time. Well, that's what it is. It's like they react to him negatively, so it's mm -hmm. like not as fun. Right. We're laughing at him, not with him. But then the sometimes most... we are, right? Because then yeah. when people no, call him thing. out, then he's like, I like it's it's relax. It's for fun. Yeah. Like he sort I, of is aware of it. I mean, <laughs> the interesting thing about Philip, I I also noticed watching the season, he says things sometimes in a wacky way. But he, a lot of the things Philip says are right. Like Philip, yes, is, yes. he has good yes. reads. It's interesting. <laughs> so I have watched both of his seasons in uh, 2021. And I have to that's say that's a that read. He, Saying that you've watched both of someone's seasons in 2021 <laughs> is like, that's mean. Yeah. Yes. And, yes. and all three of Andrea's, as people are pointing out. <laughs> yes, that's uh, <laughs> that going to be a wrap on Andrea. I've watched all three of her seasons also in 2021. But I mean, Philip, that uh, where he was more of, you know, uh, like sort of like at boston robs like a uh, beck and call in the first season like he does have a lay of the land here in this and that, like save for like getting idled out and sort of like fluky circumstances like i think that he was destined for the final three of this game also Absolutely. he has people running to him with information to me is when you look at the favorites tribe he and Cochran really only ha have the right reads especially on the swap of the new what was it new goda like they're the right, they're making the right choice that they want to get Snowy out. Keeping Snowy is the absolute wrong decision for them. And they're the ones saying, like, I'm reading the relationship Corinne has with Snowy. It comes out like I should be the top person in her life, or I'm quoting Boston Rob so much. But he's he is right. He has the strategic reads. I think it's like, do we think it's because he has the right reads and he's built good relationships that he stays in a good position? Or do we know that everybody wants to bring him as a goat, and that's why maybe we don't? He doesn't get our respect as viewers because we're like, yeah, we know why he. Everyone's so loyal to him; they want to drag him to the end. But it's to discredit his game, I think. Yeah, I think that the difference between Philip and Boston Rob, I think that Philip comes across as overbearing, and as opposed to like Boston Rob, which uh, that he's able to like uh, both charm and intimidate. 
And I think that people are a little bit more afraid of Boston Rob and don't want to step against him. Whereas I feel like with Philip, they tend to get more annoyed. Uh, they don't respect him as much as like the leader of the group. Uh, again, like Boston Rob is able to back up like what he says with challenge performance also to the point where Philip uh, hypes himself up as the challenge performer a lot here in the pre-merge, but isn't always able to deliver in some of these spots, especially after the swap. So I feel like that he doesn't necessarily get that same respect of, from the group uh, that Boston Rob does. Well, the execution's off, like he says. Mm -hmm. But coach to me doesn't have the right reads as much. But uh, like, I no, think... He's smarter than like I. I think he might be smarter than Coach. He, he understands the game better. Um, I I don't know who has less a grasp of a grasp of reality. I think it's Coach, but uh, it's a very good question. Who had this on their Caramoan podcast bingo card? Us debating who's got a better grasp on reality between Philip and Coach. I think Philip. Coach, coach I think Philip. Uh, I, I mean, Corinne would always say Coach. <laughs> okay, should we? Uh... Get to all right. We've we've gotten through like talking. You don't about, want like, to hear your stealth or us nicknames that I. Oh, uh, you, please, oh. please! I thought you were just uh, teasing us now. Well, yes. I mean, I thought we would all do it, and I would pretend that I didn't think about it, and it would just be sort of off the cuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't uh, really. We... It was off the cuff for me writing them down. I haven't revisited them. I'm looking at them now, and maybe I thought they were funnier in episode four than they are now. Yes. But, but for Rob, I have I have the mouth. The mouth, <laughs> like vodka, or I have just the father. I think that's good. I guess okay. I'll take the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah. like the father, but it's more like a it's like the pod father, but just the father. It's not like just it's about better than the kids. piercing eagle. <laughs> well, unbelievably, for Akiva, I had eagle eye. I don't know why. I also had the bushman. I like the bushman. For the Akiva. bushman. <laughs> yeah, Mata shows up in the season. I forgot about him. Yeah, and do you have a nickname for yourself, Allie? No, well, I thought you guys might do it, but might be maybe too afraid. I think Akiva would would run away from the opportunity. <laughs> mm hmm. It's a good one. So uh, well, maybe during the rest of the episode, I'll think of it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll end with it. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, yeah. Tata the Bushman makes an appearance here. Uh, and I like he, the uh, Bushman still, for Akiva. He's still a legend, Tata the Bushman. <laughs> that was really that. That I don't know if it held up or didn't hold hold up, but <laughs> yeah. I, mm -hmm. I a little thirstier than I remember that whole thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I remember that. Uh, we also learned uh, that I, I had forgotten that uh, Tata the Bushman's uh, catchphrase. Do you remember, Akiva, his signature catchphrase? No, what is it? Uh, no bitching in the jungle. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That was one of the that was one of the things. At least that was what they thought he said, Tata the Bushman. When <laughs> if I have playing, kids, you know. I'm using that. I'm just gonna scream <laughs> no bitching in the jungle when things are getting haywire. Okay. Um, so le let's, you know, we've, we've, we've ripped the bandaid off. We've talked about the, you know, the darkest days of the season uh, from the pre-merge. Is, is there anything else we want to talk about before we even get to the swap? Swap it up. Swap it up. Okay. All right. So we end up, Oh, you know, the, the one, the one thing I also feel like that uh, even like the, the fans going to tribal council over and over and over again, they really like in this season, make a meal out of like tie votes where mm -hmm. there's a three, three, three vote where they split the votes against, I think Eddie and hope and Shamar. And it's like, there's like a 10 minute tribal council there. I mean, there's like nothing going on where we really like, just make like, so, we, Oh, a three, three, three tie. Oh my God. It's so, just so dramatic where it's just, we're just going to end up voting out hope. Uh, it was like, just, uh, like a lot of procedural, like, uh, moving of, uh, the parchment to get to hope getting voted out. There are I two think, three through three ties in the season, right? Because yeah. the final nine also has like there's a lot of boring ties. I agree. Yeah, I was gonna say that that's a criticism I have of the season overall is that the majority alliance is always so large that they can split every single vote. <laughs> it's like even when Cochran later is like, well, shouldn't we just do a straight board vote? Like they they can basically you need two idols to make anything happen because the majority is just so big. Okay. Boring. Um we get to the swap. Uh, we really spend much more time with one of the swap tribes than uh, the other of the swap tribes. Uh, there is basically the side that has uh, Malcolm and Andrea and Eric and Brand, uh, and they get swapped with uh, Reynolds and Eddie and Sherry. And then we spend so much more time with the Cochran, Philip, 
uh, Dawn, uh, Corinne side uh, with Snowy and uh, Matt Bischoff and Julia Landauer. Uh, we spend p- probably eighty percent of our time with that other group. I don't even think we see the beach of the of the Ma- of the Malcolm <laughs> and Reynolds and Eddie tribe. Yeah, and so at least though, Allie, we get sort of like the start of where the season is going to get good and start to pick up where Corinne versus Philip is starting to bubble under the surface. Yeah, I mean, I think to go to your point on why, like, I think we only hear we would have maybe seen more from Goda if anything panned out from that. Like, we saw enough to yeah. see that Eddie, Reynolds, and Malcolm are bonding. And otherwise, like, none of those other relationships ever bear fruit. They can never get Eric over. They can never... uh really work with Andrea so there's nothing like forget that they're winning like there's nothing that even happens from those relationships the Corinne versus Philip I mean like I'm surprised it took them this long to start arguing yeah how did they get get along for 15 days I guess well they didn't they only went to tribal once no Brandon Uh, Hans was the buffer they probably just both talked about how much they hated Brandon Hans I mean, they were probably fighting, but again, they don't go to trouble from day three until after the swap. They actually, they do vote together in the first episode, so maybe it took time for their relationship to break down. I don't know. Yeah, It's also like Philip, I think one of the big pain points is that Philip is trying to get Julia to his side and Corinne is just like, but that's not what we need to be focused on. Like, we don't need a flipper. And she's right. Like, I agree with her. I don't really understand Philip's desire to bond with Julia. And even later when Corinne bonds with Snowy, Philip's annoyed by that. So it's like, why is Philip allowed to, I guess it's sort of the BR rules. He's allowed to be close with everyone, but not the rest of his alliance. Yeah, uh, that is a fair point as to, uh, you know, why is he allowed to have a plus one and and Corinne isn't. Uh, where Philip gets mad is that uh, he sees Corinne uh, talking to uh, Michael and, and to some degree Matt and then not reporting back. Why is she having unsanctioned conversations? Uh, the, again, the BR rule says you need a buddy. Why is Corinne talking to two uh, that would never be allowed to talk to two of the Zaps? The other thing from this uh, early swap is Phil- uh, Philip. <laughs> Whoa. Jeff lays some of the meanest burns i feel like in survivor history on uh the book i wait i keep saying new yeah on the bacall tribe uh he says bacall appears to be on some sort of medication they're moving so slow yeah. that felt a little out of even for jeff a little out of out of left they field. were so bad in the challenge like the challenges are so lopsided here because you have all of like the young strong people that are over on uh the uh new new goda yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I do think this is probably the best case scenario for TV in terms of a swap because I think if Reynolds or Eddie swap to um, Phillips tribe or or if they're in the minority and go to tribal, they go home. We we end up losing the more the less interesting, in my opinion. I mean, I guess uh, hindsight works because that we yeah. didn't see it as much of the. Uh, the Julia's, but like the, you know, I, I think I, I don't know if there's a scenario where the swap saves the season, other than if four fans somehow end up on a tribe together, and and then they basically throw a throw a tr- throw a tribal there, throw a challenge there. Is this an argument to have swapped to three tribes at this point? I think I they know that wasn't invented yet. Yeah. Is this the best? orange tribe in survivor history i feel like you've talked about this Can <laughs> yeah, I get a- there might be earlier ones but you know what that this is one of the first seasons as, uh, as i'm watching this of like uh that we get our orange versus purple uh i think thailand was also orange versus purple of um you know the, like now we get so much orange versus purple but yeah this is a season where the orange tribe is getting smoked by purple uh finally post swap we at least get a good orange tribe but uh, alas, like uh, we get, you know, two pretty boring votes here in the mm-hmm. post swap. Like you get the, sort of the intrigue of Corinne versus Philip, and then, but it's really coming down to which one of the fans is going to get voted out. Is it going to be uh, Matt or Mike or Julia? Uh, and then we have a vote of is it going to be Snowy or Julia? Basically, who's going to go home? Philip's pawn or Corinne's pawn. It ends up being uh, Julia. Uh, Cochran does level uh, Akiva's uh, favorite uh, burn on Julia, calling her the... Uh, you can't even compare her to vanilla ice cream because people clamor for the, fa- the flavor of vanilla. Imagine if you're Julia watching that, though. I do feel I do feel pretty bad. Like, Cochran had that... Fine. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. But yeah. Cochran had to like when that made it. Cochran great. was probably like, oof. Oh so man. That's I know somebody who went to high school with her and mm-hmm. he started watching the season. Sorry? Was she the life of the party? Well, no, what he was saying, I was like, How well did you know her? He was like, She was very nice, but I would assume that they would want somebody who would like be outspoken or have like funny things to say. And like it's not to me, I was like, what did she give in casting but it seems like for somebody who knew her in high school which was not that long before the season aired like she was just a normal person which doesn't really yeah. it's a compliment for her in life but not a compliment for her and you see this they like the race car driving stuff yeah. i think they liked the, the, what the chiron said and not like yeah actually, for sure but there's like no there's way she charmed them in uh in, in yeah. an interview and in fairness to Julia, who is a young person, she's also 20 in this season. Uh, like uh, she is sort of like a little bit of a fly on the wall, like uh, or just with, you know, these, these, you're around Philip, Corinne, Cochran, like big personalities. Like, uh, yeah, she might have been like a, a little bit shy around uh, the favorites at that point. What am I supposed to feel bad for her? This is television, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Although Corinna, I think, says that uh, she doesn't want to talk to her because she, she's boring. I mm, mean... It's a good read. <laughs> okay. Like, I, I mean, I feel like, honestly, at this point in the podcast, all I can really think about, which really just shows you how boring these episodes were, is just uh, see, overall for the whole season... I thought the challenges were really exceptional. Like, even though yeah. this team gets decimated, like that's truly, that's what I was thinking about now. And I was thinking about it through the whole season, like that snake challenge. I really like, and I would have loved to see Corinne take all the weight, weight and just beat herself, <laughs> win herself. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's what stands out to me now is like the challenges, which if I'm thinking about the challenges I watched during these episodes, I mean, come on, I'm happy. Yeah, I mean, Snowy it's... survived. He's the most interesting, I think, of the three. And otherwise, I think we can kind of get out of this. It's, yeah. yeah, it's six straight brutal episodes, basically. Yeah. Um, two other quick things from the pre-merge uh, that I liked. Um, so many Tarsier monkeys uh, in this season. <laughs> that uh, Ali, did you like the little bug eye monkeys? Weird little nipples on some of those monkeys. Did we <laughs> I catch didn't that? even notice. Oh my god, they have like little like. Little like duties almost, like little like strings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Send you a clip. Now I'm yes, I, I want to hear Puya's <laughs> reaction to that. Uh let's check in. Uh and, and the immunity idol is one of those little monkeys. Uh, that I didn't even notice. Can I you imagine I watched this whole yeah. season in a week and I didn't even notice the totem? Yeah. Uh and then also uh Kiva Cochran mm. has uh the number one greatest sunburn in the history of the show. It is wild that that like like there's so many random medevacs in the season for seemingly minor ailments. It would have been funny if Cochran just had like too much sunburn and had to leave. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about? I mean, you guys don't go outside, but as someone True. who goes outside and is pale Lame. as a ghost, mm-hmm. I have gotten so many severe sunburns that obviously don't rise to the level of Cochran's, and it is effing miserable for like a week. The fact that yeah. he's doing challenges, I was going to say it doesn't get the respect it deserves. It somehow still gets too much respect on the show because they like spend hours on it. They mentioned the finale, but it is like I felt that pain when I saw yeah. his little swollen little pe- feet. I've never seen, have, you, have your feet swelled uh, from a sunburn? I've never seen well, that that's before. personal. Uh, no, yeah. I mean, I've really just gotten it on my back. We don't really need to get into yeah. this, but no, I've never gotten a full body burn like that, but... Mm-hmm. I love I love Cochran's attitude about though. Uh, how soon did that happen? Right away. Instantly, <laughs> like he didn't yeah. hit the beach yeah. instantly. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. So that's the pre-merge. Look that, and look at you, podcast listener. Uh, Ninety-three minutes into this, mm-hmm. we've we've covered the worst parts of the season. <laughs> the worst, mer- the worst pre-merge <laughs> in the show's history. Yeah. It's, I like again. I love Survivor. And I've watched, I've only rewatched about like four seasons of Survivor, and I've enjoyed every single season I've rewatched. I did not enjoy the process of rewatching this until no. halfway through. I had to stop and like I didn't want to go back to it until two days ago. And I was like, all right, now I really have yeah. to. Okay. Not but it's good. all uphill from here because yeah. we get to, we get to the Sorry merge for the negative energy, Akiva. No, no, it was a slog. It was a slog watching it. 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 I was like t- miserable yesterday. <laughs> Akiva, it's a, it's a tale of two halves. Yeah, uh, and, and there are seasons that have this in the reverse, also, uh, where that you have a great pre-merge and a bad post-merge. And so here we go. Uh, we get to the first vote, and Corinne has had it with Philip, and that uh, she reunites with Malcolm. Corinne has Snowy. Malcolm has the Bros. They're talking about, hey, 
uh, what is there, an eleven person uh, merge? Is that where we where we are? A twelve person merge? Well, well, yeah, twelve, 12 person merge. Uh, mm -hmm. And they feel like, okay, we've got we've got this thing going. Um, what we need to do here is uh, once we knock out Sherry, we're gonna have the numbers at the next vote. Uh, things are things are moving, and uh, we get a very interesting first episode here at the merge. Uh, we are going to have the return of the gross food challenge, and Ali kicks off the first of four individual challenge wins for Cochran. I I want to talk to you guys about what you think of the food challenge being placed here or just existing at all. I hate a gross food challenge. I still have to deal with it on the challenge, even though it's not on Survivor really anymore. Um, I have always hated it. I winced and looked away at Jervis and I've never looked back literally at a gross food challenge ever. Um, I cannot watch it, but I do sort of love a true, like who wants it more equalizer mm -hmm. at this stage of the competition. Yeah. I, I like it though? as a, I, I like it as an idea. Well, first of all, I view it as a prism of like, if I'm out there, it's something I can't do, right? I can't eat any of these foods. They're beyond, they're like, the de pig brain or whatever. Because they're not they're, kosher or because... It's the definition like, of not kosher. Right. And, and not that I... Ha like, I think I would eat, like, gross kosher foods. I'd probably win that challenge. But <laughs> Well, that's the whole but, point of kosher. There yeah, are no gross we'll put kosher it on the wheel. Foods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. But, yeah, I, I do think, like... And also people have said, you know, well, if Jeff's like, hey, they eat this here. Well, I don't know if that's true. But if that is a delicacy, like... Why are we going to their country and being like, "Ooh, this food is disgusting"? Yeah, but you have to—it's a—you have it. It's like a punishment. You have to eat it, which is, I think, one of the reasons why it's probably been phased out. And it's kind of gross to watch. But I agree with Ali. It's—it is. I mean, I don't a, think it's been phased out. I mean, it's mo most. It's—it's it's been done sporadically. sporadically uh, most recently yeah. was done in uh, season thirty-six. Uh, and goes down. Uh, yeah. But I agree. The who wants it more aspect of it because there's no real skill here is yeah. is very interesting. So I actually don't like it as a uh, post-merge challenge. I prefer it in uh, the pre-merge where I feel like that if like if I say if I you put something gross in front of me and this was the uh, you know a, an exact uh, position in Survivor the Amazon, it's like well yeah I don't want to eat it that bad. I don't need an individual immunity uh, that that badly. But when you make it as part of the team challenge and that's like okay well I I could decide I don't want to eat it. But now my whole team is going to be mad mm -hmm. at me for not eating it. Like, I, I think it should always be uh, a team challenge as opposed to. Uh, and then the team gets to pick, oh, like, OK, for the tiebreaker, who's the person that you want to pick to put up there? I feel like there's less stakes for individual immunity. Oh, I like it. I like what you're saying. So I agree with you. But I think the caveat is it, when it's the episode right after the merge, are you ever really that comfortable 100% that mm -hmm. you'd be like, eh, I'm confident in my favorites, especially when you have no idea what's happened on the other tribe. And if I'm looking at that orange tribe, I'm like, they might be a totally new tribe now. Like Andrea, Malcolm, Eddie, Reynolds, Brenda, like they have so much in common. Sherry was at the bottom anyway. So mm -hmm. I agree. I agree 90%. I think the 10% it works right after the merge because you just don't have the opportunity to really yeah. like discuss and see where you're at. It is exciting to see Cochran get his first win here against Malcolm, where they have this like this great matchup because I, I do think that Survivor walks away from the season with sort of like the two new faces of the franchise in Malcolm and Cochran here at the end of season 26 to have them go head to head in this battle to have Cochran uh, walk away. And he's like a boxer after he wins. Like, I think it's a really great moment uh, in the season. And uh, just a, like a, a really uh, exciting thing to have happen at this point. Everybody's yeah. excited for Cochran. Yeah, I, I like it. I also like that he goes on to win more challenges than just this one. The one criticism I have is like the way the deal Jeff makes out of it. And now like Cochran sort of works that angle too. So it's fun between them. But like later when Cochran like does decent in the next challenge, he's like Cochran on a tear. Like it's almost mm -hmm. a little laughing at like he legitimately won challenges against and yeah he had an advantage of the knots but like he's winning physical and like even the eating is physical right like he's legitimately winning and i think there's a little like too much shock mm -hmm. about it but i but that's a small critique yeah. i do like the narrative and, and akiva you'll like this part I, i've heard from, i think from both malcolm and cochran that they were uh violently ill after eating the pig brain at the end of this it, it's, yeah it's probably i can't even imagine it's disgusting <laughs> yeah but imagine being the loser there. At least Cochran had something to like, you know, uh, ease his ease his uh, pain. Malcolm yeah. is like nothing you want to do less than come in second place in that challenge. I'd rather, you know, be in last place.
Yeah. So getting back to the vote here. Okay. So the favorites are actually uh, snowed, uh, not by Michael, uh, <laughs> but they're they're ready to go into like they're gonna give it. The Corinne is like, I just think that we should do this easy vote here. Let's just vote for Sherry. They're all willing to do it, even though Philip is like, well, I don't know why we're not voting for uh, Red, uh, Reddy, uh, Reynolds or Eddie. Uh, and so, uh, that, but they say, okay, well, come on, Philip is being, uh, too mean to Corinne. Uh, let's just vote for Sherry. Let's, let's give her what she wants here. But then Corinne goes to Dawn and Dawn is playing hard here to start off the merge. It's going to be like a, a turn for Dawn's game, but we are at sort of like the apex of Dawn's game here over, uh, these next couple of votes and Corinne tells Dawn that, Hey, I've got a thing with Malcolm. And the guys were taking over this game. Not this vote, but uh, one one after this. Wait and wait until you see what's going to happen, Dawn. Get in on the ground floor of what we're doing. And <laughs> Dawn goes back and tells all the favorites what's coming. Yeah, I mean the theme of this season, right, is timing. When is the right time? And Cochran like nails that right corinne just gets too excited about this idea she she says it later like yeah i got screwed over because i went for like hot guys and a gay like that's like you know the textbook corinne i'm glad she can laugh about it but it's like she had a semblance of a perfect plan and it's effing up the timing and underestimating dawn and i think those were just nails in the coffin yeah yeah, and this is, uh, is going to happen uh, identically in the next vote with Dawn and Malcolm. But Akiva, what does this season look like if this group is able to pull this off? Where we are on a trajectory where very scary. Uh, the, the, fin the final <laughs> six is potentially going to be uh, it, it's uh, Corinne, Malcolm, <laughs> Eddie, or final five, uh, Corinne, Malcolm, Eddie, Reynolds, and Michael Snow. I think it's an all-time season. I think it's an iconic season. <laughs> Who um, wins? Is I gotta tell you, Akiva and I aren't the ones talking. Akiva and I aren't the ones talking about it. This is Shannon. This is Shannon Gus season. season then. Yeah, <laughs> Shannon Gus season. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wild finish uh, at the end of the season. Okay, um, but yeah, so they they turn on they turn on Corinne, and it's a big uh, blindside of Corinne. Uh, that Philip brings uh, Sherry in at this point, who is happy to be one of the votes against Corinne. And by vote of 75, Corinne goes out, uh, becomes uh, the last person not to make the jury. But but there's still there's still a chance for that group, that ragtag group, because uh, they don't necessarily know that Malcolm was uh, involved, or at least Malcolm doesn't feel like uh, they know who, what's going on and malcolm is like all right we can turn this against andrea who's the head of the snake and so we see a push here where malcolm is going to try to recruit dawn and says to dawn hey reynold has the idol we'll idol andrea out of the game okay and then they go and start working on dawn and ally dawn strikes again i think this also sort of telegraphs why all these people are angry at dawn and in an unfair way, right? They're not going to Cochrane with these plans. And maybe it's because they underestimate Dawn or think she can be swayed. I think it's probably a lot to do with the relationships they each feel like they have with Dawn. I want to work with Dawn. Dawn will go with us. I can persuade Dawn. And so the fact that she betrays them, she's not getting credit for clearly she'd be at the bottom of that alliance, right? Like it would be so dumb for Dawn to go with them and flip on Philip when she's with Cochrane and locked in with Philip and locked in with Andrea. Um, but she gets no credit for completely messing up their plan in a mm -hmm. way that she didn't like, especially the, the Dawn thing. If they had just voted Sherry, if Dawn didn't do anything, she would have been totally screwed. So it's not even like she just stays the course. She flips the whole vote by, by telling on Corinne. Um, so that, you know, it's a, it's another way we'll talk about how, how Dawn kind of gets screwed here, but it's a testament yeah. to the relationship building that she was able to do. I, I did watch like through the prism uh, in the post merge of like, can you make a case because Dawn and Cochran are, are you know, they're, they're together the entire the entire game. Can you make a case that maybe Dawn should have won? Obviously, she doesn't win primarily because people are so fed up with her. You know, she really loses it, according to them at the end. But strategically, we see, like Ali said, Dawn do just as many things. You know, we see maybe a, a, a Sherry Cochran conversation about Brenda where Cochran gets the credit there. But Dawn does probably just as much, if not more, than Cochrane. And the fact that they wore each other's, you know, locked in one and two, 
um, is mm-hmm. never mentioned on the show, right? It's ne- nobody ever says in the entire 14 episodes of the season, oh, uh, Cochran and Dawn are, are a pair. It never comes up, even though in their minds they were. Cochran writes, I think, tells you or says in an interview after the season, they met, they had like long conversations at the well every single day, the same time or whatever. Uh, my other question, Rob and Allie, is we ne- Sherry makes the final three. We also never see her like get in, get ingratiated in really with, unless I'm wrong, with the with the majority alliance, right? Like it makes sense why she wouldn't be with She's the tenacity. Uh, amigos, but mm-hmm. yeah, Inter- yeah, she she does get a stealth R us name, but like it, we don't really see her work in where she's so locked in that she makes the final three. There's no social aspect to that that we see. I think yeah. part of it is that she's the like they she knows in this moment that she's the target, right, of mm-hmm. their first vote. So I yeah. think at that point, she also has. Yeah, how'd she get so in that? Like how'd Eddie she get and so, Reynolds also right. She hates Eddie and Reynolds. How does she get so in that she's? you know, like ahead of, you know, Brenda and Andrea and everybody in the peck. Well, because it's not to her credit that she's ahead of them, right? It's right, to, right. It's to a Brenda okay. and Andrea's credit that they're mm-hmm. voted out as threats. Right. I think yeah. that's... And so I think she, that she's kind of just a number, but I think that post Philip going home and I listened to my exit interviews uh, with the final five uh, before we did this podcast today. And I had asked her uh, like uh, for because uh, it was Dawn and Sherry were on the call together and I had asked uh, like, did you two have a relationship in the game? Because it seems like that you were two were in similar positions and are of a similar age. Like, did you have a good really game? And they, and they said that they actually were uh, very friendly in the game. And, you know, Cochran talked about how Sherry brought him information. And he felt like that he could trust her. So I do think that she becomes more ingratiated uh, with this group. Like Philip is sort of the conduit to Sherry to start. And then once Philip is gone, I think that Dawn and Cochran sort of take over that. Don't- don't you think not that I wanted Philip to stay, but if Philip stays, I do think that maybe there's a schism where it becomes Sherry with with Philip versus Cochran versus, you know, and Dawn. And well, that maybe there ends up being two sides there. That's no contest. <laughs> well, I understand, but, but at least but it, the season looks, you know, and then they're they're looking for the amigos who were left and the Andrea and Brenda's. Uh, you know, yeah. to to jump to their side. It's a totally different scenario. Yeah, so I think that Andrea is also part of that, that Cochran had said that, uh, that the original Final Four is supposed to be him, Andrea, Dawn, and Philip. Uh, and so then to have Sherry there as a probably ends up getting used as a pawn to sort of get rid of Andrea, who uh, mm-hmm. Cochran had said that Philip and Andrea had been scuffling a little bit. Um, I'm glad I want to bring Andrea into this because I think that uh, that she's very important in this next vote that comes up where that Malcolm looks at Andrea as the head of the snake. Allie, at this point, we also start to get the Eddie and Andrea relationship, which I feel like the show treats very earnestly. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're we're sort of I'm sort of confused, right? Because Andrew is telling us I'm using him, but then also doesn't say that she's using him at all, and it like seems to like him a lot. So I actually di- wasn't sure how I was supposed to take the edit, edit. Mm-hmm. The edit of the edit, Eddie and Andrea relationship. Yeah. So I do think that uh, Andrea was looking at Eddie uh, and and, and, uh, maybe Reynolds to a lesser degree as sort of like numbers for her. Um, But Malcolm wants to uh, he looks at Andrea as uh, the person who is running things when I don't believe that she actually is to me. I feel like that looking back at this and I know I just came off of a season where I felt like that Andrea's side of the numbers couldn't get things together. I think that Andrea and Malcolm targeting each other is ultimately what makes this so easy for Mm -hmm. the Cochran side of things. Andrea swapped with Malcolm, with Eddie, with and Andrea. She's like she's played with Philip before. She has a comfort level with Cochran. She can't wait to get back to them. But if she kept her options more open and potentially wanted to go and and take over what Corinne had going on with Malcolm and Eddie and Reynolds uh, and Snowy, like uh, it's a different ball game. But I don't, I don't think know that's what better. Her... Go ahead, Akiva. There you go. I was going to say, I don't think that's a better move for her. And I think what happens in the show is she basically like is keeping Eddie. And I, and I do think like she keeps him longer than necessary, which makes me think like maybe she isn't just using him and she genuinely likes being around him or trusts him for no reason because he keeps voting for her. But that's a whole different story. Um, but I don't think that's a better move for her. 
especially because I do think the favorites alliance would have been loyal to her, especially in hearing that Cochran said that that was his idea for a top four. I think Mm -hmm. Philip was very loyal to her and would have stayed loyal to her. And then she can make a better case against a Philip and a Don. Then the three amigos are very clearly going to be the most loyal to the three of them. Mm -hmm. And they probably beat her because that's what happens on survivor, right? Like a buff man beats a blonde woman. So I, so I don't think it would have behooved her to make that switch. I'm just looking at it with revisionist history in mind in that she gets blindsided at the final seven anyway uh, with this side. And it is right after Malcolm goes out that I just feel like that her and Malcolm like had the same pieces potentially where she's trying to pick up and work with Eddie uh, later on, or at least looks at Eddie as a number. Malcolm had Eddie and Reynolds, uh, but the two of them are shooting at each other and then ultimately go out back to back. Well, Malcolm had terrible reads, I think, the entire game. Yeah. Truly. Like, the way he calls for Reynolds' idol. I mean, that's cool and exciting, but it's it's played wrong. Um, He, I mean, it would be insane to say that he should have not played the two idols on him and Eddie, but um, in terms of, like, holding it, because he who knew that Eric was going to flip. But I think even voting Philip out there was a complete insane move. And I agree that targeting for, I understand why Andrea targets Malcolm. I don't understand why Malcolm targets Andrea as one of the favorites who's only one of the only favorites to demonstrate a willingness to even yeah. talk to the other side. Yeah. Do they have a conversation with Brenda? Like I said, like go after somebody else. It doesn't really make any sense. Uh, it, right. It's strange on both ends. Cause like Ali said, Eddie votes for Andrea twice. She votes for him once. They should be working together. What is Andrea's end game? Like, I, I, I guess we know it's, it, she thinks it's going to be Cochran and then Philip. And then when Philip's gone, who not, I mean, clearly not Brenda and not Dawn because she's trying to vote them both out. Yeah, and They're, I think that uh, both Cochran and Andrea, I think, shared Eric. I think that uh, yeah. potentially she's looking at Reichenbach as That's uh, a also tough an final three, piece. though. Yeah, no, Cochran's, Cochran's going to the final three with Andrea and Eric. It's just uh, Andrea was, I, I think, too locked in. And this is really why Cochran wins because Eric thinks he's Cochran's number one. Andrea thinks she's Cochran's number one. Dawn is Cochran's number one. Sherry's, you know, up there. Mm-hmm. Everyone thinks that they, you know, he's Kim Spradlin almost. Everyone thinks that that he's their one, and, um, you know, I don't know. There, Andrea's, she has to be a little more realistic that there's no scenario where, where Co- like, she can cut Franny in the first episode, but Cochran's never going to cut her because they, you know, maybe were friendly beforehand or something. Well, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. They inexplicably think they can beat him, too, which makes no sense. Yes, I mean, they don't crazy. say that necessarily, mm-hmm. but it's like, uh, Andrea's constantly t- her wheels are constantly turning about yeah. who she can and can't beat at the end and she's having those conversations with Cochran and that's the person maybe the only person who could really beat you at the yeah. end besides Malcolm and perhaps that maybe that they're looking at Cochran as like well I'll beat him in the final four challenge and then they'll just right. sort, of, sort of like uh, like he won't beat me for the final challenge and then we'll just knock him off then at that point and then not have him be in the final challenge three beast Cochran and I will- yeah. go ahead I'll say about Andrea, like, because I complain that the season has, especially the, the first half of the season, has such like a pall of negative energy. Andrea has more positive energy than basically anybody who's ever been on the show. She's just like a ray of sunshine. She's oh. even when she's even when she's getting even when she's getting um voted out, like she can she's see such a good sport. All such of a her good seasons. sport. It's she's a like you guys, yeah. what? Yeah. She plays very hard, but she is a little bit. I mean, Cochran keeps telling you, like, I'm watching this like a fan, but so is Andrea. She's the best. And, she's the best yeah. at getting voted off. She tickles Suri after she gets voted off in uh mm-hmm. Game Changers. She's like, You come on, what? Yeah. It's not even personal for 30 seconds, whereas like yeah. Brenda and and you know, half the other half the cast is holding grudges, you know, until the yeah. until the reunion. And it's to also, add to that, okay. oh, the, uh, she's also um, an incredible juror. She's very fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, never never comes in with salt on the final tribal council. Three-time juror. She knows what she's doing. She was a breath of fresh air, particularly in this jury. Um, again, we'll talk about it. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the thing with Andrea, though, it's like the old school. I, I, this is sort of like what old new school survivor. Like, I never really understand where the cutoff is. Old survivor. Yeah, like new old, the new old hotness. But she, like... To me, the fact that she says Brenda is a huge threat to win hits me like a time warp where I'm like, oh, right. Like people used to think like, oh, she has no blood on her hands and she's just a challenge beast and she's done nothing in this game to offend anyone. She's going to win if she gets to the end. I mean, you're looking at me like maybe people still say that today. Like to me, I would never think of a Brenda as someone who could have won this season. She would have been a goat neck like Sherry was a goat. Mm hmm. 
Yeah. Maybe not, maybe not like Sherry. And then Dawn, Dawn to me rings more of the Jeremy energy of like, if she gets to the end, she's got six kids and people will fall for her. I understand why people think Dawn's a threat. I have no understanding. I feel like in today's Survivor, Brenda 2.0 would not be a threat to win the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I do wonder if this is a period of time of like, because of what happens in this season, that sort of like an evolution to get to the point of like, here are my resume points of like, uh, here are the challenges that I've won. Here are the moves that I've made. Here's my, the, like the, 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 the timing of my moves that I made here are the skill sets that I brought to the table, uh, where then the Sherry and Dawn get ripped for what did you even do? Uh, which we end up seeing so much more in the modern final travel councils. Well, with Dawn, too, it's very much like you, you need to own it. I mean, well, it's, I'm like so frustrated with the truth. Well, we'll get there. We'll yeah, get there. Yeah. So we have the two best votes of the season coming up uh, here with uh, Michael Snow is going to get uh, voted out. And this is a tribal council where Eddie tells Andrea that she is on the chopping block. That sends Andrea into a frenzy. The favorites were going to blindside Malcolm here. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, because uh, Andrea is concerned that Malcolm is going to have an idol. So they end up switching the vote to Michael, who's going to be a safe vote because everybody knows Michael Snow doesn't have an idol. Uh, and they get to the tribal council and there's a lot of talk about how there's going to be uh, big moves happening and who do they trust. And so everybody votes and Reynolds stands up and he's going to play his, his idol. And Malcolm says, uh, hold up. Reynolds, I believe. Uh, let me he play. Say, hold up, bro. He says, hold I, up, man. I was man. keyed hold into man. this. But yes. hold up, bro, is an artistic license taken. I think that is That's interesting. It's like that never actually happened. Wow. <laughs> yes, it's like uh, the uh, you know, Luke, I am your father, or beam me up, Scotty. Two <laughs> things that Akiva has never heard before, mm -hmm. and yeah. so <laughs> Reynolds uh, plays his idol on Malcolm, who does not get any votes because their favorites already switched it, and poor Michael Snow goes home. And this, not to, I guess I was knocking Andrea's relationship with Eddie, but this is a direct result of her relationship with Eddie that she has this information, that she gets the information that Reynolds has an yes. idol. I guess Dawn also sort of gets the information. But I also think kudos to Andrea here for trusting her gut because when Dawn is basically breaking down saying, you're going to ruin my game essentially by switching mm -hmm. this vote, you're going to ruin all the hard work that I've done. Kudos to Andrea for switching the vote anyway, because basically Don and Cochran's position is let's take the shot and get Malcolm out. And if you're right, then you'll go home like whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think Andrea really sticking to her own plan by not sticking to the plan, I guess, uh, saves her game. I think yeah. a, a lot of other people might have gone home in the spot. Ali, to add to your point about Malcolm not having great reads, uh, also uh, no votes for Malcolm at this uh, tribal council, although there was talk of Malcolm earlier uh, in the round to to vote for him. But I thought that this is Dawn's episode of the whole season, Akiva. Uh, yeah, I, I do think it starts going downhill for Dawn after this. I agree at this after point. This. This after is this. But I do think you are, I mean, she still does some good things, but I, I think you are Right now, if you're scoring a fight between Cochran and Dawn, I do think Dawn is winning. Obviously, she's not going to win. I mean, uh, not, to Cochran, what has he done yet? No, nothing. Nothing. And they're really hiding him. Like, maybe he's done stuff and they don't want to make it too obvious, even though the idea of even voting out Cochran never comes up at any point during the season. Or mm -hmm. it, it also does not come up uh, to vote out Dawn. So uh, other than other than Andrew bringing it up. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree. This is a, a good moment for Dawn, who right now is... Uh, not a winner's edit, but she's yeah. looking pretty solid. Two quick. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, that was gonna say. And Cochran has been sort of like the therapist of the tribe, and that's a sort of like uh, how he explains uh, his uh, relationship uh, of that he was basically a confidant for every single person, where he could sort of like talk them uh, through whatever they were had going on, but not in a way where that uh, he the pe the people felt like that they were helping they were helping him where maybe that might have been going on more in his first season where that uh, he was like uh, going to other people like uh, Sophie or whoever to sort of like uh, talk him through his anxiousness. He was sort of being the person who other people were coming to him with their problems and he was sort of being like a sympathetic ear as opposed to uh, where Dawn is going to need sympathetic ears from people. What I think Cochran does better than Dawn in this episode, although I agree if I'm, I don't know, a referee scoring a fight, I don't really understand that. But but if I'm scoring the fight, as Akiva says, I think Dawn is winning. But what Cochran starts doing here that he does really well is I think he knows when to push and when to pull back. Where like, 
okay, he has the same conversation about Malcolm versus Snowy with Andrea. And he's sort of like, but we could get Malcolm. Okay, if you don't feel comfortable. He's sort of like, I'm not going to pick this fight because ultimately Malcolm's a dead man walking. It does, you don't really need... And Dawn loses her mind over the idea that they wouldn't put this plan into effect. And I think mm -hmm. Dawn is right to put... Like, it would be better for them if they pushed Malcolm here. But it, Cochran yeah. can kind of see the forest through the trees better and say, I'm not going to use my capital here with Andrea and I'm going to support her because I don't really need this to happen. So, but Dawn's done so much work also. And if you haven't rewatched the episode, so that uh, Malcolm feels like, all right, we can get Dawn on board with us. She'll vote with like, why? Uh, I don't know why on earth Malcolm thought that Dawn was going to be ready to flip and jump mm -hmm. with Eddie and Reynolds and Michael Snow here at this juncture, but uh, they felt like they would. And then he said, Hey, we, uh, uh, this Reynolds has an idol and she, Dawn says, hey, uh, I don't believe you. Uh, I need to see the idol. Uh, and then so they arrange like this bag drop for uh, like Reynold to show the idol to Dawn. And she's like, OK, I see it now. All right. I'm good. I'm good. And then she has a great confessional where she's like, you know what? Shame on you for showing me the idol. Yeah, that, that, that is was a great confessional. You know, and, and it was like, yeah, here was Dawn, like with this, the, the exact thing that everybody's wanting her to do at the end of the game. She's mm -hmm. doing it here. She's like a really a, like saying like, hey, I came here to play hard. I'm playing hard. You made a big mistake. You showed me the idol and you're going to pay for it tonight. And it stinks. But Andrea also got that information through Eddie and made an alternate plan. And yeah. like that's and I think you need to be it's like I understand if I put all that work in, I would be de devastated too or disappointed. But like I think basically what she communicates to Andrea there is. I don't care if I'm risking your, I'm willing to risk your life in the game because I worked hard on this plan. And I don't think you can communicate that to your allies. I don't think it's catastrophic, but if I'm saying Cochran did something better here and you're right, maybe it's because he's not as emotional about it because he didn't do as much to, he didn't do anything to get mm -hmm. it done. But I do think he handles what would be a better losing the opportunity to do something that would be better for his game. Ultimately. Yeah. W one other thing about this minor thing about this episode Bre the the immunity challenge which brenda wins which is holding your water under this under oh, a grate my yes my yes. wife walked in she's like what are they trying to murder them what is <laughs> happening like she was horrified i it is really i don't have we ever seen that challenge before or after i think we have not yes, right yes um i i think uh we have certainly seen it many times before i'm trying but to after, remember yeah i'm but trying to remember the time after um it's not a great challenge when you don't know you won until they have to come tell you right? i see i kind of love that that she's like i'll be here i'll, I'll be here till i die uh, brenda mm -hmm. is great like brenda is a, is an all-time um all, an all-time uh what's it called like long long-term uh challenge person where she'll she'll go an endurance challenge person where she'll go five hours yeah, she's really good in the challenges uh the entire post merge but man i don't know that that is a rough challenge i can't believe people lasted even 10 minutes in that challenge i mean in that way with brenda actually i think she saves a lot of the season's challenges by not doing the sort of like coconut yes. chop let's all arrange it for 20 to win or whoever wins yeah. that challenge but she th throws away her game that way uh, I don't agree with that. Oh, well, I mean, okay. It, well, if people no. think it's because she's the challenge threat. Right, right, right. But but yeah. still, she saves it for us because if those last immunity challenges were all just mm -hmm. like, okay, Reynolds gone. Who wants to win it? Like a Big Brother right. style. Right, but the bros never win anyway. Yeah. The bros don't, don't win. True. Those. Yeah. Just to fact check that, uh, that is the third time Survivor uh, ran that challenge. It had been run in the previous fans versus favorites. So I'm not sure if that was a thing that they were trying to do or that. do a lot of challenges from the original fans so. versus favorites. Um, and, but it has not been done since so maybe uh people came down on the side of uh mara and said that uh what are we trying to kill people with this? you also you also like can't really be like hey who wants donuts when they can't hear you who wants to come out mm -hmm. you, you know what i love like a scuba diver ask them or something <laughs> that would be amazing you know what i love <laughs> that they didn't do is like eric you ran this challenge in fans versus favorite i like oh, yeah. hate that trope of like let's see if you can do it better than the last time well, the, or the, you the show wasn't as meta week. yet the show wasn't as meta, which as it is now. Back then, they didn't yeah. reference it. Now they'll now Jeff will reference everything that ever happened. I mean, it was, when it was Eric wins like, the immunity necklace, uh, they were they're they're gonna get there. Well, <laughs> that's like, that's okay. Well, that, yeah, yeah that's, that's an iconic community. moment of the show. That's that's yeah. not like my my new trivia, you know. Okay. Can I ask All one right. more question about this? I'm sorry yes. to keep us here. I feel like more needs to be discussed on Malcolm just calling for Rednell's idol and him saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah yeah okay i didn't know it works that way i do mm -hmm. think that's another fans versus favorite thing where it's like malcolm and not like yeah. you're right it was Reynolds recruit also they... malcolm had his own idol right yes. but that's amazing <laughs> but
But but he but Reynolds, I think Reynolds actually was a fan of the show, or at least he says in interviews that mm-hmm. he was a fan of the show. Um, and so it's like Malcolm, a guy he would probably or he had or did Reynolds did not, watch? They, no, they, he didn't watch. Malcolm. Yeah. Okay, so never mind. But I was like, somehow the fans must have seen. Remember your packet. Well, um, I no, I was only thinking the favorites. I forgot that mm-hmm. the fans don't wait at home until the day before. Um, regardless, I think that that sort of this weird. I would expect to be a favorites versus fan situation where like a fan caught in that moment, he caught him right in the moment. If he has that conversation before tribal and says, I think it might be me. Give me your idol. I feel Mm. like he says, no way I can't do that. But in that moment, he's like, "Uh, I guess if Reynolds goes out there, I mean, is that voted for Reynolds? Well, is that, well, how is that a throw? He's like, oh, it's a throwaway. It's like, you don't have the numbers. You're, at, it's a five. I don't know. I, I don't know. Do, that, do you think that conversation here. happens in real time? Also, like, hey, you you voted for me. I forget. Right, it doesn't come yeah. up on the show. Yeah, right. I said, wait, wait, wait. Who did you vote for? Uh, yeah. not you. Don't. Yeah. It was not you. Don't worry uh, about Andrea. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was ballsy. It was bold. It, it's fine that Malcolm had the wrong read though, because like, how hilarious that was. <laughs> he's like, yeah. but he's not playing his idol wrong. Yeah. Um, also, we talked about Andrea as a good sport when she gets voted out. Uh, Akiva, uh, Michael Snow, also a good sport. Uh, he calls everybody uh, turkeys uh, when he gets voted out. Yeah, and he seems like a good guy. Off. I think Michael, I Michael little... Snow. I, I like him too. I, I, don't like don't wanna, I don't want to. I don't want to malign him. He I didn't just do a ton he... on the show. He's he a, a great lot. guy. Uh, yeah. I think he's a little too normal. I, I, again, similar to Julia, not a bad person. Probably too normal to be on the show. So yeah. he, I with Snowy, I think he never had room to play. Like, mm-hmm, he just true. kept having, like, I think he, the fans tribe, I, he kind of lucks out on the fans tribe that the sort of, like, older and, like, less cool group, like, is stay in control, so he's never really at risk. He makes good bonds with people, and then I feel like he's just in an untenable situation as a fan amongst these favorites. I really like Snowy, and I think he also, I read his interview in EW, like, the Quarantine Chronicles or whatever they're doing, yeah. and the questionnaire. And he says, like, my story wasn't, like, I don't know why, but they didn't want to tell my story on the show. So maybe he had more to give or felt like he gave mm-hmm. more and it just, like, didn't show up. I mean, maybe it's because he ended up not really being relevant to the season. If you want to take, like, an optimistic take on why they mm-hmm. didn't say more. But I, I really do, spoiler alert to who I'm going to say, I really want to see again. I would love to see Snowy play a second time. Yeah, he's a fun guy uh, that we didn't get to see uh, too much from him. Uh, and, and one of the real fans that were in the fans' tribe. Mm -hmm. And frankly, not to shade Corinne here, like I'm not trying to make her like an enemy of the LGBT community. I certainly don't have the authority to do that. But like Mm -hmm. a lot of the the stuff that Snowy gets is just Corinne's assessment of him as a gay that she is like, oh, uh, this is my gay, blah, blah, blah. I have Michael. I have Michael. And we don't really get to see his perspective of Corinne. Like, I think he likes Corinne a lot or he said like, oh, I've talked Mm -hmm. to my girl Corinne, whatever in the interview. So I'm not going to say that he has bad will towards her. I think he prefers Michael. But yeah, it's like not, or he's snowy. not being able to tell his own story. It's all through the yeah. lens, or as right. Akiba would say, the prism of Corinne's yeah. perception. And if you're wondering if we're viewing this through a 2021 lens, no, it was weird then. <laughs> Everyone yeah. pointed out every time. Mm-hmm. Said, well, compared yeah. to Rudy, this is like the. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Okay. Um, then we get to the 10th episode of this season. Uh, and of course, I mean, I, I think this is the season's uh, high water mark, uh, even. <laughs> Uh, so high Brenda can't breathe that this is uh, the whole, the three amigos tribal council a uh, monumental uh, moment in uh, live tribals and big moves yeah, it's my favorite tribal ever I, I like it more than any of the heroes villains tribals this is why one of the reasons I chose this season it's a, it, it's it's so unique right it <laughs> hasn't really been re- out. The truth it hasn't really out. been replicated um, where it's the minority alliance is like we're all immune you guys have to pick one of you, one of you. And by the way, we're going to take the guy who's sapping all the fun out of the season. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, it's such a fist pump moment. Imagine if this was, if and I don't believe it was like a live know it alls, and this happens. It's just pandemonium. Well, it this- was, uh, and there, there's a RHAP archives a- account that somebody uh, picks out moments, and and they happen to share the moment uh, this week where I was way high on the three amigos and this uh tribal council i really thought this was going to change up the whole mm-hmm. game uh steven uh was uh r- really uh poo-pooing it and uh to the point where you wonder to what degree maybe uh steven and cochran had talked uh, i didn't want to say anything uh, yeah you don't wonder yeah. uh, you you know 
also yeah also then sophie came in uh the next uh, like on the recap episode and also said like there is no chance that this is the worst move i've ever seen in my life i was like but no you, you don't think that it was no 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 you never make you never and then do cochran's this. mom on the voicemail the next <laughs> yeah <week was. laughs> yeah both steven and sophie were so down on this move uh but ali it was so exciting yeah, no, I love it. It's the only real time we get, like we said, Malcolm's really the only resistance. And this is really the only time he gets any success in a move like this. It's so cool that he pulls it out. And he's like, oh, yeah, I've had this other one for a while. Like, it's so cool that they think they can anticipate because they saw him find the idol. And he's like, you have no idea. It's great in this case that Reynolds wins the immunity necklace. It a little stinks that it takes three immunities to get rid of Philip. Like, I mm -hmm. do think it's worth discussing whether that was worthwhile, that that was the right person to take out there. But for the season, it's definitely the high point when it comes to fun. Like Akiva says, it gets rid of the person who's been sort of soul sucking the rest of the last few episodes. And you root for them. Like, I hate Reynolds at this point in the season, but like, you are rooting for this to work and you're almost rooting for them to not play the idol and like for Malcolm to be able to keep it. That's so exciting. And I love also the, the brilliance of Eric being the one to say like, this could be a double fake and they could not use the idol. And then he is the only one who flips. He votes for them. What really? I mean, I, I think ultimately, and this was discussed ad nauseum at the time. Also like, so let's I, not I think, discuss it now. No, no, no. I'm, but I'm, I'm just like go, going back to my 2013 brain here. I think if you like in terms of playing it versus not playing it, I think you can make a case for not playing it. You're not always going to have somebody immune. Obviously, these three guys don't win a lot of immunities. But I, then you just don't say who you're voting for because then you cause real pandemonium. And then and then and then it's just, you know, they probably have to maybe make a decision there. They might have to say, like, at tribal. Hey, either we're going to, you know, take a risk or we're going to like reveal our chips here by saying, oops, it's Sherry. Oops, it's Philip. You know, make well, them make, a, make a call. We've seen that iteration, right? The threat, the like one of us, I'm going to use mm -hmm. this on one of us. So you should. Get... But I agree. I think even if you are going to play it, you don't say who you're voting for. I guess yeah, you, you lose a little control. Mistake. But I think what would be necessary for this to actually matter next week is that you've created, you've exposed the fracture yeah. that you see who wanted to vote out who, and then that's going to be what you capitalize on the next week. So that I've also talked about uh, Survivor Worlds Apart earlier this year, and Mike Holloway ends up doing a better job than this, that he sort of builds off of uh, what goes wrong here for the three amigos, where Mike is, uh, Mike is immune and has an idol. And he says uh, that, Tonight I'm giving my idol to Shireen. Uh, he's gonna play. He's gonna play the idol for Shireen. I feel. I forget if he lets her hold it. Also, and ultimately that tribal council, uh, that alliance of six, uh, Dan got two votes. Uh, so they they he ends up getting them firing at each other. Even though Shireen goes home at that tribal council, and I think that for Malcolm, the better move would have been, with all due respect to Eddie, of don't play an idol on Eddie. You know, say I'm going to play an idol on Eddie uh, and I'm putting a vote on Philip. And then uh, these guys are putting votes on people. So vote on, you know, uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're voting for different people. Um, you know, he made it uh, kind of easy. I think that Cochran actually catches a break to have Philip go out of the game mm -hmm. in this spot. And ultimately, uh, could I, I think Malcolm, he ultimately will go to the auction and get a clue to an idol, which he never finds, that I think that he's better off without Eddie and with another idol in his hand going into right. the next round. Well, you do lose Eddie, right? The 4-4 revote, you do lose Eddie if Eddie, if you don't play the idol on Eddie here. Assuming I, that, yeah, that everyone they, votes the every, same. They did everything why wouldn't, the same. I mean, yeah. why would why would it change something that didn't happen yet, that mm -hmm. already happened? But yeah. Um, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Like, if you're Malcolm, I, I just don't, I, I think, Mal, speaking of Mike Holloway, he's a good person to talk about here. It's the only way Malcolm and Reynolds win this game is to immunity themselves to the end. Like the, we have already seen enough proof and we're going to see it over the next few episodes. We, we get hints of like Eric and, and, and other people talking about it. Brenda's never flipping. Eric's never flipping. Andrea's never flipping. None of them are ever flipping, which is one of the frustrations of the mm -hmm. season. We're, we're never going to have that move at seven or, at, or like, it's just never going to happen. They're always they're They're like you guys said, they're drawing dead. Yeah. yeah, well, that's to to Rob's point. I think one of a the mistake is saying it's Philip, and b the mistake is losing one of those idols. And exactly, you protect yourself. You don't actually protect Eddie because it's not even like 
they have five and they just need one to flip. Like they need what three people to like. I'm I'm writing down who's here. Like if they kept it's Eddie, 10 say, at this vote, yeah. Okay, so let's say all of them, all three of them survive. It's still six to three. You still yeah. need more people to split. Like maybe you rely on them to split it. They're never going to split a three three vote. So like you, it, it's it's like keeping Eddie Eddie. Keeping Eddie isn't worth it because even when you keep Eddie, mm-hmm. you have so much more work to do next week. The idol, obviously, hindsight's twenty twenty. Malcolm ends up going out next, but at least having the idol in his pocket would have guaranteed him three more days. And Eddie's another guy that he has to compete with in the immunity challenges, also. And so, you know, potentially you're able to maybe maneuver a little bit more as like a duo as opposed to a trio, where people are going to have all eyes on you. So, look, it was great. We loved it. Uh, high point of the season, but uh, for all th- three of those guys to be immune at that one spot um, was great. But I think that Malcolm, with with two idols, uh, that was a lot of draft capital to give up that night, Akiva. Well, it was a very also um, not to not to you know cast aspersions, but the most fortuitous idol find in the history of the show. On my way to tribal. Oh, it's right here on the, basically on the in the middle of the road. Oh, are you calling what the to find it in the ro- in the rock face? Yeah, you don't but think Don pointed it out. They were all there. Don yeah, they were, was it like, was an open idol rock. hunt. Yes, but the fact that it gets found what it seems like 10 minutes before tribal, uh, you know, to to create this sort of not that it had to go to Malcolm, but I think mm-hmm. I think they were like, all right, we're we're gonna put another idol in, in that play one here. that didn't bother me. It's it's actually uh in a uh like later episode. I think that there's something that I feel like is a little is a little bit more of an mm-hmm. eyebrow raise from me yeah. on uh coming up, but uh, overall, um, you know, this was great. This was still, still exciting. Have yeah, you, it, it, the last time you've listened to hold up, bro. Cause I listened to hold Not up, recently. bro. Maybe once every 18 months. Every it yes, hold, it dude, holds up. Do, does it, a, is it a, rem, uh, a reminder that you have, or you just think of it? No, I just, I just think it gets stuck in my head. Like I would, I, I don't like to sing to an audience of this size because my mm. voice is terrible, but I would sing it. Google yeah. it. Google it. If you don't know, if you don't know, yeah. hold up, bro, Google it. Okay. Uh, made with Legos. Yeah. Um, Google it. <laughs> Google it. Shout out and to then, Lisa. Yes. And then I also feel like that there was something about this that was uh, just so special. And, and Akiva, I kind of feel like that Survivor for you know the years after this, like I feel like that they've tried to chase this to mm-hmm. like this was such a like this kind of stuff did not happen all the time and i feel that survivor has tried so hard to make this like a regular occurrence on the show that if you do get, did get something like this it would not feel as special as this felt right but what you're saying is true which as crazy as this was for anybody to rewatch it now and as awesome and it still holds up it was even cooler then because we've had iterations of of this in the last 14 seasons mm-hmm. it was just like so unprecedented and so awesome yeah two idols being played this is so great i mean i'm watching advantage get in last week uh Mm -hmm. where all these idols are being played and it's like this is terrible i hate too much it's too much uh but this was this was so great because it was uh, unprecedented well it it, it's sort of like uh it's it's like on par with like the poverty Mm -hmm. idol doling out right like it's 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 a historic like you as much as you might hate caramel and like you everybody remembers this this moment yeah. And Malcolm is great as Malcolm at the height of his powers, uh, where that they're talking at the tribal council and Malcolm is like uh, losing his train of thought. He's like, oh, wait, where was I? Oh, yeah, that's right. We're not going home. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> it's a great line there. Uh, and ultimately, yeah, Philip voted out with no shirt on Allie. I think it, I feel like this is unprecedented also. <laughs> OK, I thought that and then was like. <laughs> no, it had like it's Survivor. People are naked all the time. Like I, it, that, I'm not going to bring that up. But I'm so glad you did because it did, it did shock me as someone again who hasn't really rewatched seasons. It felt very out of place, very informal. I don't think there's another uh, topless contestant that ever gets voted out of the show. I think for one, for practical reasons of you know that where do they put the microphone? Bathing suits, though. P- women have been voting out, voted out in just their bathing suit. You can put, a, bath- you put a, a, a lav mic on somebody's bathing suit, but if mm-hmm. somebody's not wearing a shirt, like well, a- he's got a lot of neckwear. I feel like he's got like his buff on his neck. Like oh, okay. you think the mic's in the buff. Yeah, I, I yeah, think- I can't, I can't remember. He's wearing another- some sort of neck neck piece. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Um, Cochran, is Philip usually uh, shirtless at Tribal, or is it? Was just I think that that's a first. I don't know. It must have been yeah. a hot night. Is that wild. a sign that he was so confident he wasn't getting voted out? It's like maybe it, I, maybe it was like oh, I was getting hot in here. I yeah, I won't wear throw. pants. I don't have an idol. Like I'll, I'll wear <laughs> nothing. To prove in pre-merge, uh, when they go in the challenge to get rid of Brandon, a lot of the favorites show up not wearing shoes, and I thought that was very like oh, they're not running this challenge. They're not wearing their oh, maybe their shoes are wet mm -hmm. or drying. I was like, why? I've never seen people show up to a challenge totally barefoot when they walk in. Yeah, that um, also was strange. Cochran is also a good avatar for the audience at that tribal council. He's talking about like how this is the craziest tribal he's ever he's ever watched. Uh, that he uh, votes whatever happens is why I love Survivor. I uh, freaking love Survivor. Yeah, it's all <laughs> it's all great stuff. I think that Josh Wiggler and I spent about like uh, just under an hour breaking this all down in the evolution of strategy. Oh, I thought I was going to say the wiggle anything. room. I was like, are you going to convince me that the wiggle room was happening? In no. <laughs> no. Time is no. a flat circle. <laughs> Time is a flat circle. Okay. Um, all right. Then. Can you imagine the wand offs, though, for. Oh, it would have been great. For this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to get uh, the auction here in the next episode. Again, a lot of reaction to uh, the uh, big Three Amigos Tribal Council, but uh, we're going to get the auction, which sets up. Malcolm buying a clue to the idol. Although Malcolm, a uh, little undisciplined alley, uh, comes in, knows he needs something here. Jeff Probst opens the bidding. All right. Uh, beer and peanuts. Uh, Malcolm. All right. It's like Kramer out of the contest. Yeah. yeah I don't even think we hear how much he bids, right? No, it's first person with $20. 20, dollars. 20 okay. Like that's, yeah. I actually think that's a great tool for the auction is to force people so that like that's a way you're not going to have everyone with 500 bucks at the end is like first one with 20 bucks. I, I don't blame him. He really lucks out that nobody bids the 500 just to keep him from the idle clue. I think it's because, okay, well we'll get Eddie or we'll get Reynolds. Like who cares? Yeah. We're not again, not that desperate to get Malcolm out. Yeah. But, yeah, but it is, no, it is a good point because it's, first of all, we're, we're only two seasons away from like the snap into the call. Spencer, Tony, $500. It mm -hmm. is, it is really a blight on everybody's game that they let Malcolm get this. Like it is crazy. But, why, letting... but who cares, right? He's most likely to find the idol anyway. You operate like he has it. There are three of them. They can't pull this again. But you can get thing. the idol if you get the clue. Like Brenda's not willing to throw up the challenge. She can't, well, yeah, can't try and They're the so idol. confident in this like majority alliance. Yeah. It's definitely... I it's guess. also a season for whatever reason, again, that they seem very undernourished. Uh, yeah, they're hungry. That... It's a good point. Yeah, that it seems like that everybody's really uh, looking for food here. That uh, I'm not sure exactly the math. I know Cochran is going to buy an advantage in the challenge, but I'm not sure if that he spent any money on food uh, also here because I don't think he goes 500 for the advantage. He buys his letter, challenge. right? So uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, we get uh, the Monty Hall problem here. On uh, Reynolds buys a slice of pizza. Sherry ends up with the covered items. Uh, Cochran tells him to switch. Allie, this was like a winner edit right here for uh, you know if Cochran is telling you to switch and you don't switch. Yeah, you're supposed to switch, but he could have switched to the Zonk. Like it was sort of. Yeah. I also love Reynolds being like, "I don't trust you, nerd." I mean, that's not what he says, mm -hmm. but it, that's that's the tone. Um, Sherry snap bidding though five hundred dollars on a Pac Man shape, disgusting. Like once you could see that pizza, they you're right. Food must have been very scarce because yeah. that pizza looked terrible. Yeah, and then Don Meehan goes all in on a roast chicken. Also, Akiva, why were you, are you against roast chicken? You, I'm not against a roast like... chicken. I'm against going all in. Uh, well, sight on scene. Like my impression, I want and something so make... like a, a little bit, a little bit like a uh, more sweet than uh, savory. I, I hear you. You want I mean, the protein. Out there you got to get the protein. Yeah. The, everyone gets something here. It's one of the rare auctions where everyone everyone uh, gets something. You're counting and, Brenda's and, cow brain or the peanut butter that everybody Oh, hears? I guess. Uh, or, yeah, sorry, I guess pig she, brain. And, and and often, I think, in the auction, there's stuff we don't see because we're not. it's not like they're showing like how much money everybody has left and, and stuff. I do think there's maybe a piggish aspect where like you don't want to be that someone was who, Brenda's buys two thing. Or, who buy <laughs> Yes, who buys two or three... Um, who buys two or three things and then, you know, and, and you're being greedy, but, uh, are people, I, I, Rob, are people worried about seeming greedy, uh, at the auction? That's a hot no, take. I mean, I mean, that's have... a hot Kiwi take. No, I think, I think it's true. I think you, if you, well, I'm asking things, Rob, he was there, like you they're, said, they're, yeah, they're I don't think people out, are like, Rob. Oh, I got too many deals at the auction. I better let somebody <laughs> else have something like yeah. you have a limited amount of money. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you saved I mean, your money, sure, and then it I'm got sure burned it in the fire. Probably been a thing of like, money. "Hey, you already ate. Why are you bidding against me?" Uh -huh. Um, you know. 
I can see me getting home, my wife being like, you spent $240 on peanut butter? <laughs> it kind of yeah. stinks that that goes for the whole trip. Here's the twist. You blew your money, and now yeah. everybody gets to put their disgusting hands in your peanut but butter. But they do that at all these auctions in the 20s uh, that mm -hmm. I've watched uh, in. There's I, a big I, meat, yeah, right? There's One like World. Big yeah, uh, there's a cake. Uh, they do that with a cake in Redemption Island. Of they, they just love seeing the survivors like a like a piranha frenzy on one thing. Or what's the challenge? Isn't that a challenge where they have to rip off the most meat? Yes, that's a different. That's thing. Yeah, do it in that's a challenge. Much earlier. I don't want to see this like mm -hmm. bring that back. That's I want that to come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they have that in rip. South Pacific also. Um, so you'll talk Cochran about that soon. About I'm sure. Herpes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, the, you, Brenda gets screwed. Uh, she gets the pig brain and the covered item. She's saying she's so hungry. And then she tastes it. And then it keeps, she says, oh, I just remembered I don't eat pork. Yeah, that's, that is funny. Uh, yeah, a little callback to Sorry, Survivor Brenda. Africa, maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, I, listen, another thing. It would be hard for me to be out there. There's too much pig. I yeah. also don't eat pork. Don't gatekeep. Yeah. Not no, that's pork. true. I'm not. I'm not gatekeeping. <laughs> Allie and I mm -hmm. both don't eat don't eat the bacon yeah. or juice. Again, uh, that was very ballsy though to uh, bring the pig brain back out after Cochran and Malcolm got violently sick from it. Is it the same type of pig brain? It looked pretty. It looked the same. I mean, they probably bought one pig brain and then had the like. Well, what, what do we do with the rest of it? I'll stick it in the auction. How do you prepare it? How do you prepare that pig brain? I don't I, know. It looked unprepared. <laughs> it <Yeah>. looked <laughs> to go back to gross things that Brenda had to eat. I, I don't think I appreciated that when you boil seawater, it doesn't go clear. Like, am I an insane or the well? Like, she was drinking water before the challenge that looked like Jacob Jones had been in the pool. Oh, it was like dark. Yeah. Like, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what their situation. Oh, I was like, was. did I cross a line? He said no, I, that I don't on know the what podcast. The <laughs> it's like you. Oh, silence. No, well, uh, they do have the well. We see the well. Yeah, oh, the well. But I, I didn't realize well, the water was. We usually see them drinking from a canteen. In some seasons, the survivors have to boil their water, and other times you see them like go, like go to the well. Like I think it, when in modern seasons in Fiji, they're going from the well right into uh your your bottle. Um, in the Amazon, like we were like, like br bring the, the pitcher down to the Rio Negro and then get somebody's shirt and then pour the water through it. And I mean, you were drinking like a Snapple uh, in, you, and that was the water. It's not oh, great. So yeah. Brenda's water looked refreshing to you. They might have had comparison. to boil the water uh, in the season. Um, that I, I do want to circle back. We, we, I, we skipped over uh, Dawn uh, losing her teeth and Brenda having to go in the water. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll come back. <laughs> we'll come back we and talk that? about that. <laughs> yeah um but uh yeah we get the the no letters for uh dawn or sherry i thought that, that was a little harsh uh to not let the two moms uh get their letters but uh, a bad bidding strategy on going all in on the pizza and the roast chicken the uh, other thing really quickly sorry about the letting malcolm have the idol clue i do think it stinks a little bit to have like how frequently are there two advantage type things yeah in an auction i don't remember getting having a advantage and also a clue to the idol like i think uh malcolm sort of gets screwed because the besides the fact that he doesn't end up finding you the would idol, have been better off with the advantage the advantage is i think the thing you want because at it's least like, that's a guarantee yeah the, yeah the advantage is like win the challenge yeah also the fact that you don't get to take the clue back with you it's like 60 seconds to look mm -hmm. at this and not like look at yeah, it i wouldn't remember one word uh, yeah, why doesn't there. he get to have it that's interesting. So I kind of feel like that um, the fact that there are two things there and then in, in the next challenge uh, that or, or in the, uh, we're going to get the um, when when uh, it's Brenda and Andrea standing on the doghouse. And not only it was an immunity, but it was also a clue to the idol that you got to win. Like it does feel like that they are kind of like trying to maybe chasing the three amigos thing of okay how do we get like uh like stack the deck so multiple immunities could be given out here are we are you surprised at all that because well, i assume andrea got the clue that malcolm saw because malcolm had gotten voted out yes right? yes so so why didn't malcolm tell reynolds like i was kind of surprised that reynolds and eddie weren't aware at least somehow of the idol clue yeah why didn't he recruit the the guys to like help him on the idol find yeah like at that point it's like they'll probably yeah. give it to you reynold already played an idol on you yeah, you played point. it on eddie like at least or Bring at least grab eddie crew. right or i was surprised that they weren't looking for the idol that like after malcolm leaves that reynold and eddie didn't know where the clue was mm -hmm. or what yeah, the it's a very said. good point um 
Akiva, any thoughts on the vat of peanut butter? Uh, it's interesting that peanut butter is one of the most coveted foods for survivors who are very hungry. It doesn't do anything for me. Like, yes. I, I can't imagine having cravings for peanut butter. But it's uh, well, fat I, and it's protein. Like, Yeah, it's... I could tell you. It's it's very, like, uh, nutritionally, like, dense. You crave things that, like, uh, I have never wanted marshmallow fluff in my entire life. <laughs> and I would be like, oh, my God, uh, how great would that be? Just like, mm -hmm. uh, like mel melted marshmallow. Uh, you just, you know, you crave like whatever things have like the most like sugar and calories in it. I get, I mean, I fast all the time and I never think about peanut butter. Okay. Gatekeeping fasting. What if I do 39 I, days? Yeah, I mean, oh look, I, I, my dad used to always tell this story about this like hiker who like, pe like packed very efficiently, like everything nutritiously, like perfect and whatever. And that he said, he would say that he, this might be a famous story. And I just like, don't really remember the details. But the bottom line is, is the guy would have dreams that he was just drinking a bottle of salad oil, like salad dressing or canola oil oh, wow. because he craved like fat basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so don't judge the survivors. I mean, I love peanut butter. I feel like that would be a number one thing, but if I'm rubbing it on my face, like they said, you could put it all over your body. And the worst thing is that they're scraping it to repurpose it for later. So you're going to, Philip's going to be eating like, or he's gone. Sherry's mm -hmm. going to be eating peanut butter. That was just like coating Andrew's greasy face. I mean, I've never been starving like that. I don't fast often and I wasn't on a survivor, right. but that was disgusting. Yeah. I mean, uh, it created major problems in the real world San Francisco house uh, to have uh, mm. even Puck's fingers deep, in the peanut butter. Yeah, deep cut. Uh, but yeah, but uh, like, yeah, Sherry is like uh, feeding Cochran. Uh, Jeff was like, oh, hey, how how often does this happen? You'd be surprised. You yeah. You'd be surprised. yeah. <laughs> um, Akiva, can I ask you a personal question? Let's okay. go. Okay. This isn't like NGOG where you could be like, cut out that you asked me that was inappropriate. This mm -hmm. is now on Rob's time. Where's uh, Allie from the future? If you okay. were on it's Allie from the editing room, Rob, Sorry. Uh, maybe turn it down from 3X and you'll get the... <laughs> okay. Um, so if you were on Survivor, and I guess like you'd have to put yourself in a position of someone who like really wanted to be on Survivor and you're mm -hmm. on Survivor and it's once in a lifetime. And I feel like this yeah, happens right when bird. vegans or vegetarians go on and then they end up eating meat at a reward because like you have to eat it. Like if there's pork there, are you like I'm in 39 days, like survival mode, like I'll like, you know, I'll I'll do yeah. some well, yum. Just, 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 just to give the backstory in case anybody uh, who yeah. is a, a new listener that uh, uh, listen uh, to keep, NGOG and we'll explain yeah. how Jewish it is. <laughs> I, I keep, <laughs> kosher. Yeah. Uh, I, I will be, I just, uh, give are you mad idea. that I asked this? Is this too personal? No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. Um, I, I, I do get emails. I'd say every few months, especially when survivors on the air, uh, from Orthodox Jewish listeners who ask if they think, if I think they could go out there, I'd say I've gotten 10, 20 of those emails, which is like, do you think it's possible? Uh, and it's beyond maybe the scope of this conversation. It, it, it's <laughs> maybe it's more possible on big brother where it's actually happened. Captain kosher. No, it's not, it's not really possible at like the, like super orthodox level, but uh, I just wouldn't go out there is, is the answer to the question. There's no scenario where I would be able to go out there, uh, but to, e to each their own. Well, because like uh, some vegetarians maybe, do it, right? Because like, but that's obviously much easier. I wouldn't anyways. eat. I No, there's no scenario where I would ever eat pig, even for $50 million. Yeah. But well, they, what about but, any, any issue with the rice? No, I, you could probably make the rice. Okay. I will say I have a friend. I won't say, I won't say yeah. her name who went on a fan version of, this isn't me, to be clear. It's yeah. not, no. He no, has no, other no. friends. Yes. Um, went on a fan version of Survivor and ate, um, is a vegan and ate the like the gross food pig to win a challenge and then ended up winning the season. So okay. people will do it for $500, but no, I, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I think if you win, I think it's, uh, you know, maybe mm -hmm. more forgiveness. God forgives as as you. you. That's what I hear. I, I yeah. read that also. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, Malcolm is going to go off and uh, go and look for the idol. Meanwhile, I, I did not remember this at all. Allie, uh, Sherry has like a thawing where she's like, hey, the guys keep winning the challenges. Maybe I should work with them. Yeah. I mean, that to me strikes me as just like Philip's gone. producers like, being like, yeah. would you think of working with them? And she's like, yeah, I think I'd work with them. Like, I, yeah. I don't know that she's ever really going to move. Do you think she should have moved? No. Right. I mean, she gets to the final three. I mean, I don't know what. Uh... There's no scenario where Sherry wins. Even in a final two, I don't think there's anybody Sherry can beat. I think she, but does she perceive, right? But the question of should she move is like mm -hmm. her perception of her own right. game, which I still think she loses to any of those boys in the end, regardless, because they get credit for flipping her rather than her getting credit for flipping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
Malcolm is going to go on a hunt for the idol and the idol ends up, uh, the idol hunt was futile. Akiva Andrea mm-hmm. ends up, uh, blocking him, uh, from successfully finding the idol. I think Andrea got in his head. I think she did. It, it's, we, we only see him sort of giving up. We don't even see him looking hard. They're just, they're not even looking. They're just sort of sitting by the well the whole time. Yeah. I don't know if they're talking. I mean, there's a lot of references and we, we only see it talked about, but never in actuality where the majority alliance is not even allowed to talk to the amigos. So I don't know if maybe this is like the one place they're allowed to even have a like a social conversation. Forget about strategy. Well, once Which Philip is, leaves, the ban is lifted, that is right? That's sort yes. of the... But Although Shamar had a ban also about... Yeah, that is uh, true. That Ren- Reynolds was not allowed to talk to him and then Eddie was not allowed to talk to him, but yeah. only because he's friends with Reynolds. Only well, Reynolds would not be allowed to talk to me either. So I completely understand that. Well, uh, why? Because I don't like, like Reynolds. Uh, okay, I, I have thoughts about... I mean, we really haven't talked about Reynolds. But I, I didn't well, like his boots coming up. Uh, yeah, we could send them home yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, well, let's get through the Malcolm, the Malcolm boot, mm-hmm. uh, because uh, that and Malcolm says in the reunion show that Jeff asked him, like, why did you stop looking for the idol? Uh, Malcolm's like, no, my hands were bloody. I couldn't I couldn't end up uh, finding it. But uh, yeah, for, for Malk, um, <laughs> that he's he's never able to find this idol. He says he found three other idols in his survivor career. He had the map to this one and couldn't find it. And I just thought that this is interesting because Ali, I've also talked about Andrea's idol in uh, Survivor Ghost Island earlier this year. And that did not get mentioned in this being a cursed idol that went to Ghost Island that Malcolm bought this the clue to this idol at uh, an auction and could not find it and got voted out of the game because he could not find it. Andrea did find it. She got voted out of the game. I think it would have added to the legacy of this cursed idol. I agree, but I think to Akiva's point, it's like the story of this is that Andrea blocked him, not that he mm-hmm. couldn't find it, even though I think the real story is he couldn't find it. Because Eve has no problem looking in front of Don and Andrea for the other idol, so I don't mm-hmm. think she really blocks him. But I think that would be sort of inconsistent with the edit of the show. But yeah, yeah. no, it's a terrible idol. It's garbage, and I agree. And Andrea been, lost uh, it now, and so... Uh, well, that to was Island. so... His- to sad. know that through yeah. this whole thing, which is like, my mom mm-hmm. would kill me if I sold it. I'll have this for. Ever. I'm just yeah. like, you don't have it. <laughs> she lost it now. So that's. Do you think somebody has? Somebody has that, right? Like it's someone gone back that to Ghost up. Island. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you found it on the street, it's like, what is this garbage? So throw it out. Oh yeah, it's in the trash <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. All right. Um. But yeah, kind of like a, a quiet exit then for Malcolm uh, Akiva. He doesn't really, uh, you know, he, his big moment came in the last round. Uh, sort of like a, you know, uh, qu- uh you know, goes quietly into the night, Malcolm. I like Malcolm a lot. He did not have a good season here. Let's be honest. He had one great scene, basically, right? He, he there's he never even comes close to getting in with majority to flipping a single person when he usually needs to flip to like I like Malcolm. But you do see, I think, diminishing returns of Malcolm uh, every time he plays. Well, I don't want this to come across as sacrilege, Allie. But then then w- what did Malcolm do? Like where's the, like, like I'm agree. just I'm just saying like Malcolm is considered a, a, an all time great. Mm-hmm. Uh, if he's not great here, and then he's not great in Game Changers, is it mm-hmm. all is it all on Philippines? And what's the what's the big move in Philippines? Right, not not being you know Zane Vo- voting out uh, artists. Uh huh. Here's the thing. Malcolm is so likable. He's yeah. the Reynolds role, but he pulls it off and still mm-hmm. manages to be likable, which is not an easy feat to accomplish. Uh, I do think this is his weakest season, although I'd have to rewatch Game Changers probably. Um, I think he does have a lot of goodwill built from Philippines. I mean, who wasn't rooting for Malcolm? I've loved Denise, but you're rooting for Malcolm. He gets ripped away from you. You feel like he would have won the season. They even say that at the top of this, like, one he was one little pebble immunity challenge away from yeah. winning that whole season um and he's again the, he's the only resistance we have this entire season so while he doesn't get close to pulling it off and he doesn't get close enough in the end for it to make a difference and he doesn't win out or win anything he at least gives us those two good the two best episodes of the season and he's the only reason we have any hope so i understand why he wins no, fan favorite hope was favorite. gone long ago yeah right i understand why he wins fan favorite because he makes the yeah. three amigos sort of redeemable and he gives them a shot even though yeah. it was never really a shot okay and i love malcolm i don't want to come across well, I like him too but he's a little overrated <laughs> a little maybe maybe okay um all right so uh 
All right, Reynolds is he is still good. rated? Is he still like I don't think he'd be on anyone's top ten best survivor players, would he? I don't know if he'd be on the top ten best players, but I think he's still uh, very highly rated. Well, what, then what's the rating system? Best not to win. I think uh, he's very, yeah, yeah, very, very high on that list. Well, it's the hair. I love yeah. how Jeff says, "Is it the hair? Is that he's good at everything?" And she's like, "Both." Yeah, <laughs> Ali, did uh, did Malcolm get a blowout for the finale? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> someone did his hair. Yes. Yeah. It's wild. It was wild. Okay. Uh, we have not talked much about Reynolds. Reynolds is going to go in the first part of a double episode. They love to get Andrea on the double episode uh, here on Survivor. Uh, that Reynolds uh, is uh, not going to be able to win immunity. He goes out in the first half of the double. Allie, I feel like you've had a lot chambered uh, ready to go on Reynolds. Yeah, Reynolds sucks. Like, obviously, right? Like, that's his whole persona he's this like suck. <laughs> machismo like i'm the best at everything guy this is going to be so easy for me i've got my main bro and just the way he talks about Allie, she it's so unexpected because she's not the cutest girl on the beast that i would be into her and then of course like we're the cool kids blah blah, blah. he like antagonizes shamar and thinks he's right he's such a jerk we've already covered that uh, the way he talks about, oh, oh, now that hope's gone, no one's worth effing anyway. Like when they have that reward with Cochran and Michael and Eddie, he says something like that. Like he's so that was disgusting. A quote. That that <laughs> that oh my god! When they go out with Eddie, ro roll back the tape. Uh, I he, I missed that one. Yeah. And what's shocking? Unless in fairness, Eddie says I might it, be watching the rewards at a faster speed. Because yeah, hope is, hope isn't even his girl. So yeah, it's sort was. of very yeah. confusing. Like now, mm -hmm. maybe if I'm misattributing that to Eddie, I apologize. But if you're yeah. asking me who was more likely to say that, Eddie or Reynolds, I, <laughs> we all know the answer. I did transcribe a classic Eddie line uh, in the next episode. Eddie says uh, after Andrea goes home, "Yeah, what is it? All the chicks that I go after and try to hook up with get voted out." <laughs> How many people is that on his list? And Did then, he think like something I was doing with Corinne? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. And then and then even at the final immunity, uh, the final tribal, his yes. attack on Don to then be like, give it back to me, Don. Give it back to me. It's so pathetic because you know why? Because people like Reynolds can't imagine that there are people out there who are genuinely like Don. Because the idea of being so nice and not self-serving and caring about other people must be fake that anybody would be like that because they can't even <laughs> fathom that there are dons out there in the world. Now I, I come snapping with this. Well, wait, wait. I, say, I, 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 I did enjoy it when uh, he's like, "Don, yes, give it to me," and she's like, "Uh, you're 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 a chauvinist." He's like, "Yes, yes." <laughs> I believe that you think I have a good sense of humor, which I do, because you've also told me that I'm a vulgar piece of crap. So thank you, Don. It's like, oh, really? Not everybody in the world needs to be told they're garbage to believe that there's something good that's just how you treat people now i come this hard yes because i have sort of turned over a little bit of a new leaf because mm -hmm. reynolds also did a quarantine quizzy for ew yeah and i read some of it and here's what he said on whether or not he'd play again if i may he says, I wonder sometimes if people think I'm one of those one and done players that has aversion to ever playing again. Seven years have flown by growing my family business and business, and we have sincerely enjoyed watching every season since. I have a better understanding of the Survivor game and its evolution since my season. Um, I have very much evolved as a person since my season as well. If I were to get a call to go back, I'd be thrilled to see the person I am today that could win this game. And he also says, which I don't have the quote, I cringe sometimes when I look back at what mm -hmm. I've said, like I've changed a lot. Yeah. So I actually, after just absolutely annihilating Reynolds, <laughs> I do think it would be interesting to see Reynolds 2.0 come back because mm -hmm. he's the most athletic of the three amigos. Like I feel like the three amigos don't win shit besides Reynolds. Mm -hmm. um, and I think having a married father Reynolds would be more interesting. Yeah. And that and he's is been on the way. podcast, right? Like, it wasn't had that him on it was probably like maybe like 2017 or 2018 uh like i i caught up with him and he's also sucking kneecaps did you read his interview about you no i didn't oh well what did he say snub him. He, he they said is there any player that you'd want to play with and he said rob sesternino oh. like i actually got Bring to talk back. to him he's so great he's so smart he was well, I, I take, I back. take back what you yeah. said no. well no it's, i'm getting after that. reading the yeah. interview i'm now so, saying that yeah, maybe he, there's he growth 
to our live show in Austin uh, and he was like, it was, it was actually very funny, the dynamic, because he was like, uh, I guess he's in real life. He is real life. Three amigos are it's uh, Colby Burton and Reynolds. And he's sort of like, uh, like the, the friend that gets goofed on in that three. Uh, so uh, that was a fun dynamic to see. And, you know, I, I think that Reynolds is, is a, a fun guy that I, I didn't have an aversion to Reynolds. Like I thought he was uh, overboard with Shamar, but I feel like that, Overall, uh, I didn't think he's uh, too unpleasant. In the I'm cutting the, the clip about what he in said. In spite Hulk. of everything we've just said, what a yeah. guy! Yeah, well, no, I just wrong. I said in spite. Rob it, didn't say anything. I said yeah. it. He and had a I, for those carnival games too. That the guy could like uh, throw mm -hmm. a hit a beanbag target at uh, thirty yards. Oh, I had a tweet that was like, of course he's good at that. He's like definitely the guy trying to win everything at a fair to give to women to try to hit on them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, Akiva, what did you think of Reynolds? Am I like so sensitive to Reynolds? I just no, thought he I read as a jerk. Rooted for him then, and I, it didn't hold up as well. Um, the the, yeah. the Shamar line, which up, I obviously man. forgotten about, is brutal. He's uh, not perfect. His, his gameplay, uh, not ideal. But um, I agree. It sounds like he's grown as a person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is more than I could say for myself. So <laughs> kudos to him. Um, so... I couldn't believe that uh again one of the, I think the biggest vote of the season and if I feel like if you were going to list Cochran's moves in the game I feel like that this is the biggest one we yada yada the Andrea vote at the final 7 like uh, how was this not a full episode it, it's one of the more fun blind sides I can remember and it's and you get like one scene for it it's I, I understand like the structure but really we couldn't have double booted the the you know the the swap or something like we need to see you know a full episode Julia Gets a full episode. Andrea, yeah. I mean, with it's hard in the, the post-merge. I mean, we yada yada Eric going home and then the finale, mm -hmm. the finale is uh, rough here. I mean, the Reynold, the Reynold is the right boot to do the first half of the yada yada. But I mean, uh, you probably should have yada yada Malcolm and Reynolds. Yeah, I mean, I can't, to be completely honest, watching in a binge, I like didn't even notice that this was one episode. Like, I feel like mm -hmm. when you're watching it back, like seven episodes in a row, yeah, it's I like mean, there's hard no to prelude, Ali. It's just like, well, there's one yeah. scene that's well, like, well, the prelude is that Andrea has been trying to talk about who she's going to target the yeah. entire time without mm -hmm. thinking, hmm, if Brenda goes or if Malcolm goes, they're going to obviously look at me. Like, I actually don't understand her plan at all to start being the one flipping on her six when. For all of the reasons she's saying about Brenda, she should be the actual one to go, in including that she's the one thinking about this kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So Her point is so I good like that they, like, yeah, they, they take it. Her, right? Yeah, that's, they, like, she okay, steps in you it. First, that's the prelude. You first, and then Brenda next. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. And I think that it's really that uh, Brenda like does. I think if Brenda stepped down in this challenge versus Andrea or in the challenge against Dawn uh, earlier, and, and she even Brenda even implies that she threw the challenge to Dawn, uh, but didn't like uh, like a agree to it publicly or like make a a, a deal with uh, with Dawn, and maybe that might have changed her fate a little bit. Um, but the fact that she like takes Andrea to the brink here, I think, uh, hurts her standing in Andrea's eyes. I mean, I don't really understand wanting to win an immunity. Like, I understand why deals happen in Big Brother because, like, you'd be in power mm -hmm. then and you really get to call shots and that's, like, part of negotiation is part of it. But the people who are, like, I feel I'm more confident in our alliance. I just want to win one. But, like, if it's given to you, like, you didn't win one. I don't understand the logic yeah. there. And I don't know if you can take it at face value. Brenda says, like, yeah, it's great to just be able to see how far you can test yourself. Why? Yeah, who cares? Well, that's <laughs> but that's Brenda. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. I guess so. That, um, yeah. So Andrea gets kind of yada yada in uh, the double boot, but they don't do her nearly as dirty as they did in Game Changers, where she's voted out like 14 minutes into the episode in uh, Game Changers in a double episode. Uh, she at least gets the back half, which is ideally where you want to be in the double boot episode. Um, but I do feel like that this was uh, Cochran's, like I feel like of of. I think his two biggest moves of the season, I feel like it's this one and then ultimately getting out Brenda then at the final six, like uh, these two uh, moves back to back to get out uh, Andrea and then Brenda. And no question, right? Like, the, and, and paying the producers to medevac Eric, basically. <laughs> bang, what bang, was bang. Eric a threat? What, what was no, that? not at all. Not like at all. Eric was going to be. No, probably... but it helps him win the challenge. That's it. But no. Uh, um, well, we can talk about that in a minute. But the, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, Brenda. I, I think Andrea had a lot of good points about Brenda, but as Ali said, they applied to her. They both like they go back to back. Mm-hmm. I don't. What's Brenda's plan? Because we we never want. We hear Brenda yeah. talking about challenges and and about the Dawn situation. We know at, Reichenbach was part of her plan. Uh, was there a third part of it? I don't know. Dawn. I mean, I think Dawn. She Dawn. was never. Oh, yeah, I guess. Dawn. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Yeah, Dawn. So she felt. Which Brenda honestly, felt like, she's probably got a chance against Dawn and Reichenbach. That's like pretty good might, plan. She might win there. She yeah. there. They're all they're all live there. Yeah. So yeah, she's uh she's doing pretty good. Okay. You know what's, all right. What's weird to me about the season? I, I feel like there's and and Rob, obviously, you've watched the most recently and in general, although Akiva seems to be a wizard for memory here this this uh, uh this Especially week. Especially Survivor Samoa. Yeah. Um I feel like they're feeling to me as more honest in tribal this season, especially late. Like they get baited by Jeff's questions yeah. more than I remember, or maybe just more than recent times. Yeah. And that's really evident in the tw- in the Andrea vote where they're like, oh yeah, I've made f- so many finals, but like, I know people are lying because I lie. And like every final yes. three I've made is a lie. Like mm-hmm. you should never say right. that. Even if you're being honest by saying you're lying, that's an insane thing to say. No, I noticed that as well. I, I do think that I, I would attribute that to Cochran. I think that he talks about the game in that way and got the conversation like rolling in that direction. And I think that people probably followed suit. And the problem is that I think that there were probably other players that were not as good as being able to talk about the game in that way as he was. Like I'm I'm a tribal. I'm saying I've only told people what I I've only made promises that I intend to keep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I have one like, final three. <laughs> Well, not even saying that, but just like I like yeah. nobody, nobody needs to like. I, I just thought they were being too yeah. forthcoming so many times. If I and told that's what, you we're good, we're good. Exactly, and Believe that's it. what take that to the bank. And that's what Malcolm gets tipped off right that it's gonna be someone from the favorites tribe. He or I guess it's Snowy, but he gets tipped off from Philip's speech that it's at least not Reynolds. And I just think like a lot of loose lips sink ships at these tribals uh, this mm-hmm. season. Not Cochran. Uh, that he's able to avoid it. Uh, I have in my notes also that Reynolds uh, shows up on the jury with a Ted Lasso mustache. <laughs> and that's okay. my favorite, favorite part of, I don't know if I've ever said this, but like, I've never t- been able to talk about like all aspects of a season. My two or three favorite parts is one, when the jury walks in all of them together e- each week to week, but also just like the whole thing. I love when Jeff transitions from the votes to Studio City. That is like, as a kid, still to this day is my favorite. I look forward to that every time. They've totally botched it now. They don't really do it, but I love the... So they did on uh, Blood versus Water where they like transition to the three and Tyson's there in the tuxedo shirt. That's Mm -hmm. beautiful. I love that. And I forgot the third thing, so it doesn't matter. Okay. (laughs) What do you think, by the way, what do you think Ponderosa's like at this point where we got Snowy and (laughs) Philip? The bros start coming. It's a pretty wild Ponderosa. People were hooking up at this Ponderosa, no? Like, can we confirm Who? that? No, I'm well, sure. Like, I'm well, sure. Well, then you're throwing one person under the bus, I think, because they're... they're no, just... isn't this just like a super <laughs> Who hot... Who are the people that or, have been voted out or the, or, or, or the, the pre-jury pond- trip? The yeah, oh, yeah. Pre-jury, the pre-jury trip, trip was wild. Whole, I just mean, like, the whole cast. Like, they're very hot. I mean, someone hooked we'll up. We didn't even... Talk about Reynolds and Eddie night one in the shelter, which is like, uh-huh. ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, not Ponder- Ed- Reynolds and Ponder- Eddie. Ponder- I remember Ed- Eddie, Reynolds and Eddie hooking up, but it seems like Allie watched a different, uh, had yeah, a different edit. Yeah, like, uh, like uh, the We're Ponderosa three is hours Snowy, uh, yeah. Philip, Malcolm, and Reynolds at this we, point. We haven't even gotten to the best hookup of the season yet. It's it's going to be exciting. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try to raise you to talk about it, but I guess it's yours. Okay, all right. So does Rob know have... what we're talking about? Do you think he already think so. saw I your tweet? So. I, I know what he's talking okay. about. Okay. Yeah, he shouldn't have Rob has alerts that. on for my tweets. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> all right. We have the most, I believe, the most iconic family visit in the history of the show uh, mm-hmm. here at the final six of Survivor Caramoan. And so we get the uh, Sprint Evo LTE <laughs> phone. And they always tell these survivors, I guess I've watched a lot of survivor from this era, like uh, go into uh, messages and then you have to, it's like in instructions of how to get to the video. Uh, and so we get I Googled see, how much this phone costs now. Do you know how much a refurbished version of this phone costs? $10. It's like 30 bucks. Yeah. And there's a range of money. It's around 30 bucks. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So we're going to bring out everybody's loved ones. And so uh, you're going to compete with your loved ones. Uh, We get uh, like uh, Cochran's mom comes out. Uh, Her and Cochran are not really too into the challenge. Uh, Brenda's (laughs) Brenda's dad uh, brings Jeff to tears, Akiva. Mm hmm. 
Yeah, uh, Jeff says the first time he's ever broken. I believe he has broken one since, right? I don't remember which tribal, which uh, which family visit. I want to uh, say it was in Ghost Island when it was, and now I'm 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 Angela's daughter, maybe. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I don't really remember it. Um, I will. I, I, so yeah, and she also has the thing we referenced at the beginning, where she says, "I've been mm -hmm. humble. humble. I was humble. That's me." Um, humble, it's a little too humble, like so humble that nobody's humble. heard me speak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, all right. So everybody, everybody comes out. Brenda wins the reward. And so, uh, okay, Brenda, pick a loved one to go to the barge and have a barbecue with. She's Dawn. Gotta pick Dawn. Uh, hold up, bro. Hold up, man. Uh, hey, there's another Sprint Evo LTE phone. Watch this. Uh, what? More loved ones? Yes. All right. So we have second loved ones. All right, Bre Brenda. You can now have your loved ones visit with Dawn and her second loved one and your second loved one. Or you could give second loved ones to everybody else here. Four versus two. Kind well, of but it, wasn't it also you could pick another one. person? I thought you could also pick another person as part yes, of it. Yes, it was pick it was pick a third person or so it was literally three to three, three versus basically. Four. Yeah. Or three yeah. versus mm -hmm. four. Yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Who would Callie. have been Steven's second loved one? Do we know that? I know we had Ben as <laughs> he said the first. his friend. No, I thought oh, that was oh, his beyond first. his friend. Oh yeah, I don't think. Who, he well, who him. was his second? He just said no. I don't know if he had a for second, second chances. Do, do they take two loved ones? Well, I think wasn't this that you could list? Do you not have to list two options? I I, I don't know. I don't know if there's like a if, if it's a backup uh, like a Johnny Fairplay situation. Like, well, I don't yeah, because they real. said, oh, they have your second loved one here. Like, I thought. Generally, yeah. you have to give a couple options now. I don't know if I had a second loved one on ready to go. That might be a newer thing. Okay, mm -hmm. well, we gotta. Can we ask Steve? You remember in the fall? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To ask Stephen if he had a second loved one. I'll write yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we throw his brother? Here for me? Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Does Brenda pick wrong here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Like Malcolm with the twenty bucks for the beer. Yes. Instantly, no question. I, first of all, I hate this. I I hate. It was concept. Mean. I have to say, is that why you hate it? I, I hate it generally. I hate like, oh, pick someone and then you can choose or you forego your own letter. You forgo, forgo your love, something you earned for the betterment of the tribe when you know it doesn't matter at all. Nobody's going to kiss your butt for this. Brenda's possibly the only person who would think that this would matter because it would matter to her. And like, that's the difference. Like, I think Brenda would be loyal to someone who forwent their family visit for her mm -hmm. regardless. Mm -hmm. It's so, as Akiva was saying, there's no stakes. It's like, destroy Don. If I saw Cochran's dad work in that grill. Yeah, you're, ba so you're basically, you're basically, it's a lose-lose. It's you a punishment to someone. win. The, it's a punishment to win the challenge. In Robin, season six, if they had this, would you have earned some, some social credit for... I mean, for making this move. I mean, they literally did have this. Right. As I'm saying. Uh, so like, yeah. and Matthew, like, uh, like uh, they asked Matthew who won this mm -hmm. challenge, uh, Matthew, that you could give your loved. What is it better to give or to receive? And, and uh, he, Matthew gave up his loved ones visit with his mom so that we could all have a loved ones visit. But then psych, uh, he still got to have a loved ones visit with his mom, like right. a better and, one than we have. Also, again, he's him. someone who probably, he's probably the only person that season who would like who if you gave up your loved one with your mom he'd be like wow rob that was really great like I'm yeah, vote yeah. it was like oh what is he the patron saint of reward challenges yeah. let's vote him out yeah. for that yeah, yeah but season 26 what already is he so we're, great now we're, yeah. we're too savvy for this by season 26 to like it, it, it's almost a demerit like because it's like oh you did this nice but thing it, now but it plays to you know a uh, dynamic effect Oh, it, they hit the producers hit a home run here. Yeah, it's strange that there's two people watching. The um, and it's also strange they brought two people. Like they had, they sure weren't like eight different elements into this into this <laughs> challenge but, with family members but, participating. But they hit the jackpot on all of it. Yeah, the, the, it's but I don't, but I don't, I don't like this, right? Like I, you said it's like a sad for the moms to not get their letters, right? Like maybe it should have been okay. You decide to forgo it, whatever. Okay, well you get to stay with your just your one loved one on the beach, no barbecue, no second loved one. Like I, yeah. like you said with Matthew, like I wish they got something. But Dawn again, I mean Brenda in one move could get through this by saying. I just can't do it to Don. I would give it up, but like, look, Don mm -hmm. has a complete meltdown over it. And right. I don't think Don would be like, 
no, no, Brenda, it's okay. Like Dawn would have been like, great, thanks. And she could have gotten out of that immediately. Yeah, it's but true. the other people, look, I I've watched uh, so many of these now uh, this year. The point of the loved one's visit is for people to not get the loved one's visit. That right. is the point of the having loved ones on Survivor. Did Dawn and Brenda get to see their second loved one at all? Do we know? Um, no. no, I think they were on the barge and then they probably got uh, escorted away. I mean, that's brutal. I mean, you're flying to the Philippines. Like, that is... Well, they're just her best friend. I'm there. sort of a little like... Yeah, I know. Your best friend. And then, like, said her full name. Like, all right. Um, <laughs> I looked her up on Instagram. No, I didn't look her up. Um, <laughs> but yeah. wait, can I ask... A, sorry. Has anyone ever not... for what? Like, isn't it always the winner who loses? Yeah, the winner loses. If they give that option. Has anyone said, like, sorry, guys, I need to, I need to do my loved ones visit? Um, I don't know how many times they did the uh, like give it away. I mean, famously, uh, Cindy Hall with the car, the Cindy Hall problem, not the Monty Hall problem <laughs> uh, that she said, like, that they're like, Cindy, you could keep a car or you give everybody a car. She's like, I'm going to keep the car. Uh, so that's probably the only example uh, that there is of that. But that's really, almost like a huge monetary thing for yourself versus right. like a family visit. Okay, you can like forgo that without mm -hmm. changing your life. I would be fine. I'd be like, yeah, I'm. You know what? I, I know my mom came, but I'm I'm hungry. I'm gonna go. Have See, maybe because I'm DDS. Like, there's no way, especially the way that uh, that stands for Dead Dad Society. But there, there's no. like, <laughs> there's, we joke about it on the GOJ. Realize I shouldn't have just said that. I think he was gonna say you were a dentist. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, that just rolled off the tongue too easily, but. I just, especially the way that Jeff says it, it's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Like Rob, you still talk about how great it was to have your mom on the yeah. island. Like you can't get that time back. Like that's huge. Mm -hmm. And Brenda and her dad earned that goddamn reward and she should have had it. And I'm mad I mean, about she, it. She still got to see him. It's not like she didn't see him and they had a moment. They made Jeff cry, but I agree. Everything you're saying is right. I really like when Eric makes the <laughs> he heart. He's never said that to me in my life. Th that's a beautiful moment, right? Eric makes the heart like, and they played the nice music in the background to. I would be irate on the if they watching did. them. Watching. I, really I mean, what well, Eric didn't yeah. do anything wrong. Well, he, they're watching is such a Bre crazy Brenda twist. Was, uh, Brenda, You're miss, everybody not missing was missing anything. Yeah. It's not so great. I would hate God, that. The thing, the thing is, everybody was mistakes. happy except for Dawn because yeah. the Brenda felt like, okay, these four people are set. I I'm good with this. I'm getting all the clout from this. Dawn was the only person that was. So it's like five out of six people here are happy with this arrangement except for Dawn. I think the thing that. Like, look, it's the same thing that Reynolds struggles with when he looks at Don. It's something I would struggle with if I don't, like, take a step back and think about is it's like when people tell me they don't like being the mafia or they don't like being the imposter in these games. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what are you talking about? Like, I only tolerate being the good roles so that I could be the bad roles. Because <laughs> when in your life do you get to scheme and do this kind of stuff with people? I don't do that in my regular life, but it's fun in the game. And so if I were, I would never want to be in Survivor. I'd be terrible at Survivor. I don't mm -hmm. think that... But if I were ever on Survivor, it would be fun to be lying because you're people. within the exactly because you'd be in the bounds of the game. But I truly believe that for a person like Dawn, it's really hard for her to be playing yeah. this sort of cutthroat game and to be hurting her friends. And she takes it really personally. And I do think she probably more than anybody else on the tribe needed that reminder of this isn't who I am. This is my husband. This is what I'm doing this for. And he knows who I am and he can remind me I'm a good person and I should be doing this and coach him. So I do actually feel bad. Don probably overreacts, but she really did need this and didn't get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this is a great time to bring back into this story of that. There is a point uh, and it is, I think it's also in the, in the same episode where uh, Philip goes home, where everybody hears Dawn screaming from the jungle. Dawn has a partial on her bottom teeth and she was swimming in the water. That's she opened partial. her mouth and it fell out. Speaking uh, of DDS. Yes. She screams for Brenda. Brenda, can you, can you find it? It's over here. Brenda puts the goggles. I actually finds it pretty easily. I, I, I wonder, I, I was asking myself if I was there, would I have been able to find Dawn's teeth? I feel like can I would have down that far. I mean, Brenda how far is was like, it? I don't know. Brenda's like, an I don't... amazing swimmer. I mean, when she comes swimmer. up, she's not at waist deep. She's like oh, treading she water. Really far? So I, I, I couldn't dive that deep. I, don't, I wouldn't even know how to put that snorkely thing on. I'd be like, yeah. Mara. Yeah. But I feel like that, that would have been a fun game, like uh, to play mm -hmm. at, like a pool party of like throw the yeah. teeth in the pool and then put the yeah. goggles on and see you sounds, can find it. Sounds like you had a lot of fun in college. Yeah. Well, I don't know uh, if this is appropriate to say, but I had a friend in high school who also had a retainer, but it was top teeth. And um, 
some people when they were at parties, she'd take her teeth out and drop it in a glass, and you had to fit you had to finish the drink if she dropped her <laughs> oh. teeth in your glass. That's some New Jersey wow. stuff. It's yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so Don's um, not as fun yeah. as uh, a strong enough one, drink. One, I think that's a disinfectant. <laughs> yeah, boy. What, one yeah. one thing, by the way, at the end there that I remember reading in sort of the post pre COVID times uh, uh, exit interviews is Sherry comes back uh, and I forget who if Dawn or Brenda says this, but they're explaining why like there was so much hate and so much heat really on Sherry uh, in the next week in the finale. Sherry comes back from like the burgers and steaks and everything. And has like a huge share of rice, like immediately afterwards. That like that's like Dawn and Brenda's like big splurge. They're gonna split like a ton of rice since everyone else is eating that night. And Sherry eats like a lot of their rice. Yeah, and I think it's one of the reasons. You, if like, you went on the reward, you never eat yeah. on Survivor. So she gets that like obliterated uh, yeah. in in like the post game media. Somebody said that like it's I pretty mean, bad. Is there a world where you're still hungry? Like, isn't that the point of the reward? People come back like sick to their stomach, and you still want to compact with some rice. Eh, rice, you can always eat rice. I think. Yeah, uh, it's like on their schedule. They're eating rice over many times a day. <laughs> oh my God, the they put the rice on? Days. Okay, I can have some. Mm -hmm. um, rice is like coffee at this point to them. Yeah. Rice is like pizza crust for Akiva. It's a deep yeah, <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> um, all right, so now uh, uh, on top of all this, now with all this like earned backstory with Dawn and Brenda, the reward challenge is an endurance challenge that comes down to somehow Dawn versus brenda brenda just, why just it dawn you know what i gotta let you have this uh she said she tells us in confessional she's like oh i dropped uh i, I dropped out i want you wanted dawn to have it you, well, you gotta at least get the the recognition here yeah well, also, like we 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 make fun of Philip, but not we, but the pro right. producers make fun of Philip yeah. for making up the same lie. It's possible Brenda's telling the truth. I think at a certain point, once you win one of these, you have to be very wary to win another one. For some reason, nobody ever mentions other than Cochran himself. Like, hey, Cochran keeps winning these. But in general, like even people like Malcolm who don't win any are viewed as a threat. So once you're winning one and you're a beast, yeah. especially in but the in the like. Yeah, when it's the two of them up there, like yeah. she's got to say, Don, like you know what? I feel so bad. Yeah, I have to let you have this. All right, mm -hmm. take it away, Don. Make uh, a deal. Yeah, or, or it's not just even like, a deal. Not even a deal. Just give it to her. It's mm -hmm. a demonstration of trust, right? It's like yeah. I feel so good about you being safe. It's as good as me being safe. But I do think Brenda's an interesting cat. Like I do think she. Although she already knows that Andrea was coming for her, right? So maybe she, Brenda, is a little more shaken up by the fact that she was going to get, she got votes in the last tribal one, and maybe she's not letting mm -hmm. that on. But to your I, point, Akiva, about the Philip mm -hmm. thing, it's like Brenda doesn't tell anyone, I don't think, that she Anything. threw it. She tells us, and it's like, right. why lie to me? True, so I don't, true, true. It's, it's, it's all a strange, it's a very strange situation. I also think there might be a part of Brenda who, like, wants Don to have the self-confidence boost of like actually winning the challenge instead of just having Brenda jump off because that's sort of a point of pride for Brenda. So maybe she is like mm -hmm. giving her a bigger gift by pretending to lose. I wonder if Dawn thinks because Brenda really is locked in. Brenda's never voting out Dawn probably, right? I do yeah. wonder if if Dawn thinks that she has a better chance beating Cochran than Brenda because really she should be making a move and Cochran doesn't have immunity here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, like, shouldn't she be saying like Brenda and X, whoever it is, Sherry or or whomever? Like, why does I, I I would wonder why? And I don't remember if she was asked this. Like, why does she think she has a better chance against Cochran? Like, I think she's going to be. Go ahead, go ahead. Ron. Yeah, Brenda just gave the loved ones visit to everybody. I think she probably feels like, oh, well, that's uh, like uh, everybody's going to vote for her for that. She's won challenges, and I think that uh, she's not looking at. Co I remember, Cochran has only won. Uh, the he won the two, two challenges. But one was yeah. a, one was two challenges. I, Brenda yeah. has now won uh, a couple of challenges here, and uh, like I think they're probably looking at Brenda as like uh, she just gave everybody this loved ones visit too. Also, historically, like a woman versus a woman, you have a better chance than a woman versus a guy like Cochran. I think Don also great. thinks we've done everything in lockstep. So anything he could get credit for, I also get credit for. Anything people are mad at me about, he people are also mad at him about, and I think. Yeah. She might think I'm a more relatable story. I have a better story being yeah. this older woman and I had better relationships. So I don't think she's insane in a vacuum for thinking she could be Cochran. 
and I don't think you can underrate the like the relationship they've played now that they were both on the same tribe yeah. in South Pacific. They sort of have like a much uh, longer backstory. Uh, she may not be, she may be looking at Cochrane a little bit through the South Pacific uh, lens of like where everybody yells at this guy, where maybe uh, she has not necessarily seen the evolution of Cochrane in the same way that other people have. So uh, and she might just be really mad at Brenda still. Yeah, and she also loses to Brenda probably anyway. So it's not she's, like she it's not like that was the path to victory. I don't think. She's saying I did all the work too. Like I think what like her best moment in the final tribal is when she's like he wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me, and then she like backpedals on that because he gets mad about it. But I do think she part of her does think like I did all of the work here. Like Cochran and I were equals, and I was but I was even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, this is actually a uh, a wild vote against Brenda. Also, it's a three it's a three two one vote, uh, and I don't know necessarily like uh, like um, this does not get talked about like a super like strategic uh, play, but it's Dawn and Cochran and Sherry. They put three votes on Brenda. Uh, Eddie is voting for Eric, and then Eric yeah. and Brenda are uh, voting for Eddie. Eddie shamboing again, Rob. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shamboing again. Okay. Um, and that uh, that takes us to uh, the finale where things uh, things were very exciting for a long period of time, but now they're going to really slow down. Very boring uh, two hours leading up to the uh, final tribal council. Uh, Eric Reichenbach, we have not talked much about him at one point, and I, and I was really harping on this at the time that it seemed to me like Eric was trying to, you know, manifest his way out of the game, Allie. He talked about how he, uh, that if he got a medevac, there would be no humiliation in that. Wait, it wouldn't be me if I actually responded to the question you asked. One last thing on the Cochran thing with Brenda, or why did, why did, um, Don think she could be Cochran? Yeah. I also think part of Cochran's power, in addition to knowing when to push, knowing when to pull, is he makes everyone think. His idea is their idea. So in that Brenda vote, I think he approaches Dawn like, we could do Eddie, could do Brenda. And then she's like, yeah, maybe Brenda. Like, I think she he's good at making her feel like she's in the power position, even though he's projecting to everybody else that he's in the power position. Anyway, to Eric, did he manifest his exit from the game? I mean, I think the opposite of the Shamar thing, right? Like, he is so... Um, skin and bones like he's so so thin he didn't have weight to lose and i think mm -hmm. that also i mean i don't know science but i think that that i'm not liana but i think that that also takes a toll they also say like he ate at every single reward challenge yeah. which is crazy when you think about it that he still struggled so much he's got that reichen back no metabolism uh ideally you don't climb a tree like 400 feet in into the air also uh when you're that low on calories i feel like that can only hurt things but, that was very strange. I yeah. he needed Tony's ladder. Like I was thinking mm -hmm. about that. But like yeah. he, he was close, but not Do, it, does pr production let someone do something like that? Because he was saying if that's I fell, crazy. I'd that's, break that's a leg. Crazy. Yeah. He'd break yeah. your neck. You would die. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, Akiva, we open up the finale with uh an Eric Reichenbach Medivac. Uh, yeah, I, I just remember in real time thinking because they don't, as we said, like really promote an alternative winner to Cochran. This is the biggest coronation. I, I can't. I mean, maybe Boston Rob. Like there are no, very. Few, but there was the Redemption Island aspect to right, Boston Rob, and, and there that's was also true. that Ashley was like they were building her up that if she won the challenge, uh, she could have been like there was no other prospect here. I I the one thing I forgot to say is this was my first season watching in a while. And I Googled just for like a cast list or something. And some spoilerish thing came up where I spent a lot of the season thinking Reynolds won. Just based oh, on like looking away very quickly. That's ideal when you get a fake spoiler. A fake spoiler is great. And then and then it's like, oh, Reynolds. But, you know, it, which in hindsight would make the Three Amigos Tribal Council just the greatest in, in the history Epic. of the show. But uh, there's there's the the only resistance we could ever get. And I don't think there's any scenario where it happens anyway. It's It's fun to think about. I don't think it ever happens based on who it is. Is is you know Eric basically starting to win challenges and forcing the hand, but I, I think Eric ultimately just goes to the end with Dawn and and Cochran. So I don't I like. Th there's nothing that like it sucks that it happened. We have this brutal reward challenge, which is which is so boring and meaningless, mm -hmm. and there's no stakes. But I, I, it, and it sucks that Eric. Your stack of a morning. Well, yeah. what, about, what about probes? Like er Eric is done is like there. He's so sick, quote unquote, that he can't participate in the game. And probes is just doing like a. Uh, 
Well, you're out. Let's talk about what's going on now. We got four, you know, like over his <laughs> dead body. It's crazy. They're just standing over. Wait, when him. you say he's supposedly so sick, did you not think it was a just medevac? I think it is, but like he if, looks if pretty it's, bad. <laughs> if it's a serious medical situation, how about this? <laughs> Jeff Probst is not standing over his body with the other four contestants. I don't know. He was standing over the body next. with with cow. I must said space yeah. cowboy, but beast mode cowboy. Yeah. Well, also Eric is also going to the jury, and he had like Cochran saying like, "Look, I'm not even thinking about the game right now. I'm only mm-hmm. thinking about Eric. That's my yeah. only concern in the sure. game right now." You yeah. remember his last name? <laughs> I love Eddie though, doing like the explaining yeah. to him what's uh, going right? on. EMT Eddie <laughs> came great. out. That was great. Eddie has a good episode here. Yeah, this is Eddie's best episode of the season here uh, in the finale. Yeah, you know, Eric, at a couple points, Ali, does seem like he knows what's going on. Do you feel like that, uh, like, hypothetically, if Eddie goes on a run here, could Eddie be a contender? Well, what I was wondering with the Eddie, uh, sorry, last thing about the Eric thing. It makes me think of you say a lot of times, like, if someone's dehydrated, give them fluids and send them back to the game. Like, it shouldn't. Am I putting words in your mouth? I feel like no, I I, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Yeah, like I almost think like Eric would have been fine in another 12 hours and they should have just let him return. 20 minutes. He was fine, I think. Well, whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah, I mean, I was Eddie. I thought Eddie was making a good pitch to Cochran, which to me shows that he understands like Mm -hmm. what he's supposed to be doing during the game. Do I, my question would be, I think maybe Reynolds would vote for Eddie. I don't know if Malcolm would, like, would he even really have the three amigos votes against Cochran? I think the two so. Two amigos well, votes? Okay. Two amigos. Is the, is the scenario where does Eddie win a, win a challenge or two here to get to the end? Where does he, like, win, does he win the final immunity challenge? Can he stand there? Um, and maybe, like, uh, I feel like that he could get a, a vote or two. I think yeah, he, he gets, goes he gets to the second. amigos votes. I think well, I don't. I really don't know that he gets the amigos votes because I think he gets Reynolds. I think that's what I said. I I don't. I don't yeah. think he gets Malcolm because I You're think right. Cochran has honestly one of the best final tribal performances yeah. of all time. I say honestly. I'm sure you've said that a thousand times. Um, and I, and I, I think, think gets, Malcolm respects that. Yeah, a lot of credit for very good. I think Todd always gets best of all time, but uh, Cochran has a very strong uh, final tribal council. Um, and uh, that you know the Malcolm uh, question is often compared to Todd and uh, Jean Robert. Um, but just on the lead up to Cochran getting there at this, uh, f- so basically like this uh, final five becomes a final four finale, and things s- really slow down to the point where we have uh, a challenge for an advantage in the final four immunity. We do fallen comrades, Akiva. I mean, they're just like I, I, I could imagine like six meetings of the producers that, <laughs> at this point. Like, all right, what can we do for time? Anything. Was that the first in a while? Is that because I was like or when I think that they had been doing them at this period in time. I think that the next season is the last one. I think that okay, uh, so then it's not, but then it's not so crazy. That's us. Like, so then, you know, but it feels like ve- everything. Yeah. I, love and everyone, yeah. everyone I love it though. Like, I'm, I'm old school. I love yeah. Fallen Comrades. It's like these people, especially when you're binging a season, it's like these people I saw 10 hours ago. <laughs> and yet they still yeah. just say, Matt, 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 and yeah. Julia. <laughs> Matt. Like they have unlimited time to talk about people and they're still like, Ah, oh, right. Matt. <laughs> Some of the people get like five minutes. Um, I I do think this could have been the first finale where we get to the winner read before ten, Rob. <laughs> like, there's just nothing going on in this episode. It is. Is there? Is can you think of a finale that's worse than this? Um, I think. Well, in the early seasons, like I know the Survivor Australia finale is worse than this. I I think it's three hours. And I think there's one challenge. Right, but there's but it has like one of the most iconic decisions in the history of the show. At least, like something happens. Sure. I, this has Dawn taking her teeth out. Okay, fine. I didn't enough. even think this was bad. Like, yeah, it, it. Well, maybe because I've been watching it on a binge, but I remember I finished it last night, and I intended to stop and finish it today, and I just kept watching it. Like, I is it the most mm-hmm. enthralling television? No. Is it one of the better yeah. Survivor endings? No. But was I entertained? Yeah, it's a bit I of a enjoyed slog. it. I, I don't think it's. Yeah. I don't think it's the worst. A, 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 part of the show, yeah. a big part of the show is like trying to figure out who won. And when you're rewatching it, there, that's not an aspect. Yeah. Uh, and there was no drama. Um. Eddie, one of his last confessionals, tells us that uh, if he won, he would open up a dog shelter slash uh, bar where you could like uh, adopt a dog. And then also he loves dogs and he loves bars. And we're like, oh, where was this guy all season? Got such a big laugh out of my daughter today. Like it, it is really it holds up. It's so funny. The dog I mean, how could it not hold funny. up except that for the fact that he says like, oh, it would just be so great if I could bring my dog to the bar. Um, You can bring your dog to especially the outdoor dining to a lot of bars. It's yeah. like not a new mm-hmm. 
And yeah. he's from New Jersey, right? So mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do that. Tell me, is this crazy? I was thinking this, um, that Sherry tells us she was rather go to the final three with Cochran and Eddie. Uh, she didn't want to go to the final, uh, the final three with Dawn. Why don't Sherry and Eddie put their votes on Dawn and send Eddie and Dawn into fire making? Again, I don't know if the idea that Sherry wants to like, it's the same thing where she's like, oh, if you can't beat him, join him. Maybe I should go with the three amigos. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know if that's just lip service to an idea. Like, yeah, I'd rather go with Dawn, but that's not the way the Well, she said. Like she uh, like, I don't want to go up against Dawn and she has like uh, six kids and she felt like that Dawn had like a much better story. But mm -hmm. I think Dawn, but I think, but that's what she's telling Eddie before he's lost. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, I do think there is something to the fact that Cochran said, like, you want to sweet talk Eddie in case he does win that he'll vote with you. If then mm -hmm. Dawn and Cochran turn to vote out Sherry, she's campaigning to get Eddie's vote. If he's got the necklace to go two to two. Mm -hmm. um, I also think she says like, my strategy was to be the only fan left and then to say like, what a great story. I'm the only fan. Yeah. Left. Okay. Uh, just something I was thinking on, on the uh, way to the final travel council. All right. Final travel council. All right. We got uh, some juice here at the final travel council and uh, Cochran is going to talk a lot about his timing. That's what he credits uh, a lot of what he was doing that they were going to get him. He moved first his timing. He's, he was a therapist. Uh, he's making a lot of stuff, but uh, Dawn, Malcolm tries to give her a little advice. Uh, Malcolm tells her that basically uh, own your moves tonight, Dawn. Rooting for you. I don't know if they were rooting for her. Not yeah, I, <laughs> rooting for her to come in second. Maybe they meant. <laughs> I mean, this is something that's been talked about a lot, and yes. people don't need necessarily me to add or repeat. But it's like when Malcolm, it, it hit me just so hard when Malcolm says, "You can't be a warm mother of six and stab people in the back." And to that, I say. Why on earth not? Like that is the whole point of this game is that Suri can get off the couch and Cochran can close his books and they can show up and stab people in the back with the best of them. It's just people don't want to be beat by a warm mother of six and people feel good. And maybe they, they feel they under Malcolm and Corinne underestimated Dawn at every turn. They think that she doesn't have the strategic chops because she also at home is this warm, nurturing mother of six. And it's a shame, but I think Snowy hits it on the head at the time and says like, this is what's happening. Cochran's not getting shit. And he did all the same stuff. Um, so it's, it's frustrating. Like, yeah, Malcolm throws her a bone, but I actually don't think, I think the problem also for Donna, she ends up parroting back a lot of what's told to her. Like he says, own it. So then the next thing she's like, I'm owning it. And then like Jeff mm -hmm. later says something at tribal and she repeats a couple times what people tell her to say. And I think that ends up coming off not genuine. Like Dawn announcing I'm owning my game is actually not what they're looking for. And I think it's a disservice to her that like right away she gets hit with, you're going to have to have a different strategy coming into this than you probably stayed up the last three nights thinking about mm. good luck. And Cochran just gets to lay out his game like he was planning to. I do think Cochran, you go to the bar with us. Yeah. <laughs> I do think that Dawn and Sherry within 10 minutes probably realize and if they may not even have shown us, like if somebody said outright, like, all right, Cochran's winning, which is very possible. Somebody said it and they don't show it. I think they realize very early on they're drawing dead. Basically. It's also interesting. I don't see, see this with a lot of juries, but there, it seems to be a little bit of group think here where it's like everyone knew coming in Cochran was going to win. Like, I'm sure they were openly discussing it upon the Rosa. Mm -hmm. it, it just like, it's just such a fit, such a fate accompli. And it's it sucks because like Dawn is getting it hard and then Sherry's getting just absolutely obliterated. And what do you want to do? Just vote for Cochran. Like, why do you have to beat yeah. these people up? It's over. Yeah. Uh, both Sherry and Dawn are going to get dragged. Uh, Sherry gets dragged very hard by Eric Reichenbach. Uh, where mm. was this coming from, Allie? <laughs> what I love the real story of this is just. How he, you, you, I think what Akiva's saying is right is that there was a lot of like gassing each other up. He's like, oh yeah, well, I'll take down Sherry. You take down, Tom, I'll take down Sherry. And then Sherry's like, if you don't want to vote for me, don't vote for me. Now you can sit down. And Eric doesn't have the strength to back it up. So he's just like, I'm just trying to help you. I'm just trying to help. <laughs> And then yeah, he's like, it's like mm -hmm. he looks like such I, a I can't doofus. believe they didn't I, and this was discussed after I can't believe not one person took one for the team and gave gave Dawn the second place vote considering how much they dislike Sherry. One thing I remember saying at the time, Rob, is 
Sherry's such a big fan that she has a kid at, at the very end yes. of, of season two, names the kid Colby. She gets yes. on the fan tribe. It does not come up during a season where she makes the final three. Like she I mean, she might get, have like, told people every five minutes. It just wasn't in the show. It's exactly what I'm saying, Rob. I'm sure it came up a thousand times <laughs> in confessionals. And like she can't even get I, she, I, I, if I had to guess. And again, I'm just speculating. What do I know? I haven't been on the show. There is a possibility that production hated Sherry more than almost anybody else in the history. Of the show. <laughs> Why? Because she didn't get confessionals. <laughs> she doesn't. Well, she just. I mean, Brenda gets less confessionals. There's Eric no way they hated her more than anyone they, else. I don't even think they yeah. hated her more than anyone on the season. Much they, less. Anyone I mean, on the she show just history. gets bare, like she, there's just nothing. No, and like even when she's like <laughs> does good things with Shamar in the beginning yeah. and works yeah. her way in, we're just not seeing her story at all. Again, she makes final tribal. The fact that they can't show in that one that that one fact, which is interesting and extremely relevant, that she cares enough about the show that she named her 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 kid Colby, is hilarious. I think she played too much of the I'm secretly a businesswoman. I'm secretly a huge fan. Like my guess would be that was more of Sherry's strike. And again, I don't know. I've never been there. I'm speculating, blah, blah, blah. That it would be more, and it doesn't explain why we didn't get confessionals of her saying it and saying, this is my strategy, right? But she comes out at tribal with this big dud of a reveal of like, I'm actually a very important international <laughs> businesswoman. Like, and it's hmm. like, whoop the effing do. Okay, so everything you said was a lie. I think, or I think she owns mom? like, like Wendy's. I don't think she's like, you know, owns a fortune. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fine. Or... That like, yeah. that's yeah. fine. But like, again, like, that's like when people are like, I can't say that I'm a lawyer and I'm going to pretend or I can't say I'm a cop or whatever. And it's like, just be honest about who you are, like whatever. And so maybe she had the same mentality where I'm going to pretend I'm not this big super fan, but really. And then later her husband's like, oh, Cochran, let's take a picture. This is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Sherry, and maybe this was edited out, but when she gets confronted with these people being jerks to her, I guess it's to her credit that she just says, screw you, sit down. I wanted her to do a little more use her use her time a little bit more like she doesn't actually fight she just kind of rolls over and gives up which i thought was kind of disappointing but at least she leaves with her dignity because she mm -hmm. didn't grovel at these people who were never going to vote for her mm -hmm. i really want to get into dawn and brenda here because uh like I'd, li I'd like to uh talk about what happens here and then also then let's uh, like skip ahead like to uh how it's talked about at the reunion show which i think is really wild um so we have Brenda come up and Brenda says, talks about how Dawn, do you remember that day that you lost your teeth and I had to go and you said you were going to quit the game. And Ty, I want you to tell me right now, were you really going to quit the game? I was like, no, no, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. I just said that. I just, uh, you know, I, I wasn't really going to do it. She said, okay, we'll prove it. I need you to take your teeth out. I want everybody to see you the way I saw you that day. Take your teeth out right now, which is, I think the wildest thing we've ever seen in the mm -hmm. like nobody has ever before or after told somebody in the final tribal council perform this stunt for me. Mm -hmm. I have a request. <laughs> Yeah. Nobody's ever said, you know what? Yeah. Put your whole fist in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. I want to uh, see that. Get, if you get that naked right now, if you if you're willing to get naked and jump in the fire, I will vote for you. Like it's <laughs> it, it is it is crazy. Uh, do you think like because you 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 discuss you're willing the to die? Question. Yes, you discuss like what you're going to ask with the producer. They right? They want to make sure not. Oh, they're salivating question. for but this. I mean, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that somebody said, "Hey, remember that day that uh, yeah. you saw Dawn with her teeth out?" Yeah, <laughs> like producer uh, Rob. My, yeah. my my question, Rob, to producer Rob is, did did Brenda say that um, to a producer who immediately had cartoon money balls jump out of yes. their eyes and be yes. like, or did the producer say it to Brenda and she's like, because Brenda is a come with person. Brenda, like, I feel like is the type of person who is very good to production. Like, you know, OK, yeah, I'll do that. She's she's humble. She's easygoing. Uh, I, I do, so... Where did it come from? Like, it's so crazy. Oh, she went out hot. I mean, her 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 exit was um you know she said uh, i was honest with you guys i was genuine with you guys yeah. this hurts yeah Most regardless though of where it came from she went with it right like even if it wasn't her idea dawn's saying no and she's not like okay see like whatever she's like do it do it now do it dawn mm -hmm. <laughs> prove it let me explain so even if it was like well why don't you tell her to prove it like she goes so hard with it that she gets credit for owning owning it that's yeah. owning your game. She this was that question. Survivor Nicaragua, Brenda. This was the not humble Brenda that we mm -hmm. got to see here. Can I go out uh, on the limb? Of the game. She doesn't yeah. need to be queen humble. humble. Yeah. People say this is terrible. 
I see the point. I fully <laughs> understood the point. <laughs> I, fully, I fully, I'm so like, would I do this to someone on on television? No. I do someone pre- yeah. maybe, but like, no, yeah. but I, I think the Brenda and Don story oftentimes is understandably too focused on the teeth. Brenda found the teeth. So Don owes her. And that, that, that story doesn't hold water, right? That story, Brenda's far too mean. She's overreacting. She's taking it out yeah. of the game. She's humiliating her. The story really on the second watch for me, and even Brenda says this, I'm picking Don for the family visit for so many reasons. Yeah. Don and her have a closeness. That, and then Brenda said it at the reunion, and I was like, oh, good, confirmed. Like, it's so much more than the teeth. They had what they felt like was a real friendship. And Brenda, I believe this, would never have betrayed Dawn. Sure. And Dawn made her feel the same. And I think that Brenda felt that Dawn used like personal, like I heard about your kids. I heard about your family. And that was like whatever. So I think they had a real true friendship. And Dawn claimed I would have quit the game if not for you. And I think Dawn's mistake was not saying I don't know, but at the time I felt like I would have, and you saved my game by giving me those teeth. Mm-hmm. That's what she should have said. Don should not have maintained, oh, I never was going to quit. By that, by the way Don responds to it, she's like erasing Brenda's importance to her whole game. She already did mm-hmm. that by voting her out, and now she's not owning the fact that she herself said, I'm going to have to evacuate from the game. I'm so humiliated by this. So she's saying, prove it, not necessarily to get her to take her teeth out, but to respect Brenda's game in the way that Cochran did to Malcolm, right? I'm so insecure and you're so amazing. Why on earth is Don not saying, Brenda, I owed you my life in the game for so many reasons. You were so good to me and I had to get you out because you would have won. And yes, I, I, I can't say I wasn't calling for Jeff right there, but I'm so glad it didn't come to that because you saved my teeth. Thank you. Why doesn't yeah, why she, she say that? Also, why, why, do, why doesn't she say, no, I would have quit. You did it for me. That's what I just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it is. It is <laughs> That's insane. what I'm saying. Like, because or, or, no. like, I think people would say, like, you're going to quit over your teeth. You don't really care about it. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's the risk. True. But I don't think she should have said, no, Brenda, that was such an overreaction. I would have played without my teeth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I see the point. I'm not saying I would have yeah. done it, but I, her point was not Very to humiliate points. her. Yeah. That's- no, it is, it is a great take. And also, uh, like, I don't know how much teeth cost, but. Probably saved her a lot of money too. Like there is a, like a. <laughs> an out- I'm still being serious. There's an. It's a lot of time and money. I'm sure to get new teeth. Sure. There is an out of the game element of like I saved you five thousand dollars and you know a week of your life. You're a mother of six. Like I, yeah. you know this. This was because that Jeff is where Kiwi mentioned- would go. That is what Jeff, would be most important. Jeff <laughs> mentions like this was was this out of the game? Like you did something for someone yeah. that went beyond the game. Like would you? To win the game, would you, you know, ignore, like, let someone's teeth yeah. sink to the bottom of the ocean? Like, it's a good question. All right. So a couple of things that I want to add to this. One, Brenda, Dawn took her teeth out. Give her the vote. Come on. Yeah, Come on. I- don't make her take the teeth out and then don't vote for her. She did what you wanted. You asked. But it wasn't about request. that. It was, she's still under, she's still, I think she's actually mad she took the teeth out, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, you're proving that I wasn't important to you by taking the teeth out. I never wanted you to take the teeth out. Dawn should have made her promise first. Like, I'll do it if, because Dawn really didn't want to do it. Who knows how long they're standing there, but she changed her mind there. Like, Dawn should, like, I'll do it, but you have to vote for me. Mm -hmm. It just, she just, I think Dawn blew it there. Now, do I think Dawn has to apologize to Brenda? Absolutely not. All right, well, let's go to the reunion (laughs) show, because then we have the big reveal of that, uh, like, uh, by the way, okay, here is, um, um, uh, Brenda, who's via satellite, we're going to get the reveal that she is pregnant at the Very end of all this. Appropriate. Yeah. So the Brenda's on Zoom, and so uh, we got cut to her via satellite, and I feel like that Jeff is really pushing for Dawn to apologize to Brenda, which to me feels very outside of the spirit of survivor where it's like, Hey, big moves. Uh, you can't trust anybody out here. You got to play hard. It doesn't cut your friends. And, and I feel like that Jeff is really looking for like, but Dawn, how could you have voted out Brenda? Do you want to say anything to her? Cause she's here now. And Dawn's like, I already have. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Well, where's the apology? What's the apology look like? And then he even grills Brenda. Well, do you accept the apology? Like, he's not letting these women talk about it the way they want to talk about it. And I think that harkens back to it's the probe show. It's like the Mm -hmm. get the apology, accept the apology, look at the resolution. And this did not need to be resolved. I think I'm the therapist here. Yeah. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And, and also, obviously, they're just so strapped for time in this, you know, a 30 minute thing. It's not like they can have a real conversation. But yeah, no, you're right. Like it's Jeff is Jeff is manu the whole the, uh, this reunion in particular, but a lot of reunions. Jeff is just manufacturing conversation. He's trying to get answers out of people. Sometimes he's not, whether it's Rudy saying uh, homophobic things or the girl not giving him anything in that interview. Mm-hmm. But like the whole thing is Jeff trying to squeeze out answers like that's why that's why he loves Philip, because Philip has like a nickname ready to go. You mm-hmm. know, like uh, Philip is, is like. Yeah, he's got he's got a soundbite for you, whereas everybody else is not. There's nothing's working for Jeff that. Night. Yeah. Also, I would have believed Brenda that she was pregnant. Uh, that uh, we didn't need to like uh, like yeah. have her like a uh, com- like full uh, belly she- reveal. Yeah. Like, did they ask for that, or that was that uh, her call? But you know what's wild about that is like it was shocking to me when she lifted up the dress. But like we've literally watched her be naked on the island. Like something about when you come back and then you mm-hmm. see someone in their underwear, you're like, wait a minute, I shouldn't be mm-hmm. seeing this, even though literally they've all been naked the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, she was very pregnant. I think I saw the baby kick uh, during that segment <laughs> where uh, <laughs> we cut to her. Okay. Apologize uh, to the baby. Does the baby accept the, the apology? baby's now like seven? <laughs> yeah, that's. What it's- I almost made a tweet today of like having like uh like a like a thirty year old kid like this is Brenda's baby now, uh, thirty year old <laughs> man I guess uh, I, I don't even know I think it's I think she has a boy um, I think it's her only kid I was on her Instagram today I don't know I don't oh. even remember any other news no that she was for personal a lot of, reasons like, not for the podcast yeah. <laughs> no she sells a lot of like green clothing she's always pitching. She's never not trying to sell you something in every Instagram. Oh, I thought she was pitching. I was like, no pitching in the jungle. I don't say that. Yeah. She's always pitching. He's the Bushman. That's the Bushman. There goes the Bushman. <laughs> yeah. Talking about pitching. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, would the dentist work for your Stealth or Us name? Oh, I like it. For mine? Yeah. yeah you're the dentist. Is that, are you, are you making fun back. of my DDS yeah. thing? Oh. Yeah. That's right. That was <laughs> thought back to that. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, also no, because gonna... I have terrible teeth. Okay. Um, let's go back to. <laughs> you think all well, dentists uh... have good teeth? Like yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, objectively. Oh, I would I never know. date a dentist. No one cares. We could talk about that on NGOG. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> what about what Watley? Teeth? Well, he would um, never date you. I'm, a, and I'm famously an anti-dentite. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we spent a lot of time with Cochran at the at the finale. Uh, Cochran famously uh, plugs his uh, Twitter. He doesn't Still say John strong. M. Cochran. I, did you notice that? He just says John Cochran, which is not his Twitter I thought handle. he says John M. Cochran. I thought he I says think he John just M. Cochran. Says, oh, I thought I, yeah. I maybe I misheard. It <laughs> yeah. was a scandal that night. People were going wild on, on social media. You weren't media. allowed to plug stuff. Yeah, yeah it was it was nuts. People were like, well, why couldn't I plug it? Malcolm was mad. It was Twitter was a buzz that night. Well, what's mm-hmm. fun about Cochran is, and, and I think people take Cochran for granted now, and they look back and they're like, oh, but whatever. The, I don't get the hero worship. Jeff loves him so much. Like Cochran did a lot of things for the first time. Like that now if somebody plugs something, it's like ugh, eye roll. But it was like novel and fun when Cochran mm-hmm. did it. Yeah. Aris is going to try to plug his Twitter the next season. It does not go well. Um, but uh, basically, yeah, uh, Jeff is uh, can't get enough Cochran. I famously asked him uh, from four gray Z uh, Cochran. How does it feel to be considered a sex symbol? The survivor font really fails Jeff at that one, right? Because he messes <laughs> up the Z. It, it is could be the Z. He doesn't see the Z a lot in the survivor font. It's not uh, very user friendly. Yeah, but it is. Co- and Cochran answers it. I guess what's the way to answer this? But Cochran answers it sort of like, "Oh, tweet me and we'll find out." Mm-hmm. Whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. Is he a sex symbol? I mean, let's see. What do you guys think? Is he a sex symbol? <laughs> yeah, know. I think so. Sure. I don't know Why what not? a sex symbol. What is a sex symbol? I'm not sure. I'll let <laughs> yeah. you know if I find out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we talked about Dawn. Uh, what are other highlights from the reunion? We don't have to go through it blow by blow. Uh, there's a lot of low lights, Rob. <laughs> low lights from the reunion. There's no this a wild reunion. Again, this was like the th- like. I don't know if this is uh, was treated as. I guess it wasn't the finale of Survivor because uh, that when they filmed it, Jeff was going to go off and do the Jeff Probst talk show. But now they're going to go film Survivor 27 the next day. I don't know why they treated this finale uh, like they pulled out all the stops. It seemed like. I know. I was thinking to myself, like, is this the ten year reunion? It's the thirteenth like, year anniversary year. It's a bar of Survivor. Mitzvah. It's a bar yeah. mitzvah. Do you think Rob and Survivor Allie, has to stop sinning by the <laughs> All right, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> do we do we think that um, by the end of the season, Jeff realized that it was not a good season because he comes? No, out, they thought it was a great season. 
Even you think even at the finale, he does yes. not yet realize interesting because they maybe thought... that's why he's pulling at the stops. Like, hey, this was a bad season. No, I, they I, love I, this. This was uh, that that I mean, Jeff uh, is I, I think that everybody is uh, super psyched about this season. He was uh, psyched after it filmed. But I wonder if after it aired, he's still as psyched. What no. stops are we pulling out, though? Like they have Cochran. They go to survivors in the audience like in now. Like, I don't Rob, they see they have shows Rob, up. Rich, Rudy. They brought Boston Rob. Like, well, they uh, don't have Rich. They have Rich. He's not even Skyping in. He <laughs> makes a two second naked clip. Like, that's yeah. not so crazy. I, I didn't think this Did was not hold up. I don't think it's so, so crazy. The thing about the kid was very bizarre when he tries to transition from the poor kid to Andrea. And she's like, yeah. that's you. What were you like? 21 when you played this? He think that braces worn child is 21 yeah. years old. Yeah. That's yeah. you. What does that mean? You have, yeah, please. <laughs> she's blonde. You're answer. blonde. She doesn't want to be on survivor. You probably don't want to be here. Like, I don't understand what he that, was getting. At. It reminds me of uh, Billy Eichner's name a woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Name a woman. Um, yeah, that was Jules. <laughs> Jules was the young woman who was a big Malcolm fan that Jeff found. Uh, what is it about Malcolm? Is it uh uh is it that he's just he's just so competitive? Uh or uh is it the hair or he's so good at everything? Uh Jeff wanted to know. Do you want to know another both? bit that didn't pay off? What? <laughs> so when when Philip this actually maybe did pay off. I don't know. You guys will tell me. When Philip first said the BR rules like three episodes into the season. I thought I didn't know the exact timeline of the publication of the BR rules. And so yeah. I was like, is Philip citing rules or did Philip come up with the BR rules? Did Rob rip him off? Is he credited? So I ordered, you don't have to pull it out. I ordered a copy of the BR rules. Where's yours, Akiva? Pull it off the bookshelf. <laughs> behind I, got av- I got an avocado. I've been oh, an avocado. Thanks. You know that you do. Anyway. Not a single thing about her. I was like, I'll no. fact check Philip. Not a dedication to Philip. No credit. And then they laugh in my face and Philip's because he, I could have just waited till the reunion and had my answer about this. That he says, Philip, you gave me an idea. You're not going to see a dime from. And here's a copy for your troubles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You think it's signed uh, even? Yeah. That I, I uh, talked to Rob about this. Like at the at the time, like uh, he wanted to write about like Survivor stuff, and they wouldn't let him like uh, write anything about Survivor, or use any Survivor picture. So he had to like it's all about like his uh, rules for uh, for life. You know the lawyers are strict when they won't even let Boston Rob break the rules. <laughs> yeah. You know what so. my favorite like rule Cochran is. Break the rule. Yeah. You think my favorite rule is clean it up. Because it just says, this is sort of an all-encompassing rule that is more of a philosophy and way of life that applies to many situations. Below is a small sample. If you've had one too many cocktails, clean it up. If your pants are hanging too low off your ass, clean it up. If you've got some sauce in your shirt, clean it up. (laughs) Like, what what is... I don't even understand what this means. And that's it. And it's just examples. And it says, you get the picture. Just get your act together. Rob's notes, clean it up. Clean it up. Uh, yeah, Akiva, there's a whole section about uh, the 2004 Red Sox also, <laughs> if you want to follow that up. Okay. Uh, so uh, and it's under the chapter, never, ever, ever give up. Okay. Uh, there you go. Check out the Boston Rob rule book, still available on uh, Amazon. Um, it, it delivered very fast. I mean, honestly, <laughs> like I, I thought, I, I don't know what I thought I would do with this on this podcast, but now I just have this, so that's fine. I so do like prop. you got to love Allie's commitment to, yeah. to bits, right? I have nobody, props nobody that you will not even see. That, that, yeah, show that us, show us. Co- Bust them out. Bust no, them no, out. no. Yeah, what's the aco- avocado for, Akiva? <laughs> oh, I, you know what? It's a time check, 5.57 a.m. where I am. Yeah, I'm staying awake breakfast. by playing with an avocado. Oh, I thought it was breakfast. a coconut. Yeah. No, it is an avocado. I'm okay, just throwing around like it's a ball. I, I, mm. I, by the way, I super appreciate uh, both of your dedication to uh, the for, to the cause here. No, this is fine. We're halfway done. I'm excited. <laughs> Keep this is my man. I'm like I might crack in my neck two hours ago. I don't know how you do this, Rob. This is like a, a telethon. Well, I, I'm What's so fired job? up. I mean, you here. sit at your you sit at your desk. No, you do all this all the before. time. Yeah, but it's these are off hours. I mean, let me know mm-hmm. if you if either of you need a bathroom break or anything or, or anything. I mean, I like just that. pulled out the BR rules. You think I'm yeah. slowing no, down? Okay, good, this? good. Well, uh, that okay. Uh, you know what I thought was wild. Uh, Akiva, F- Philip would just go around and and talk to people and then and then go home with them and watch Survivor episodes. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I've heard stories. Philip's just on the street in L.A. You know, waiting to get recognized basically mm-hmm. by people by Survivor fans. I do wild. like that. I, I like the idea of. Uh, 
Hey, yeah, I'm going to go to your house and watch a show with you. That's, That's what funny. I do with my RHAP headphones. I'm waiting, <laughs> just waiting for the day that someone so says, Are you Allie Lasher? Will you come listen to a well, podcast at you, our house? Yeah. Can you, can you say Allie, something? If I had those, yes, I would Allie. do the same thing. What'd you mm-hmm. say? Nothing. No, 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 tell me, tell me. Akiva uh, and I have watched Survivor together. He came to a stranger's house to watch it's Survivor. It's true. It's true. We've mm-hmm. watched Survivor together. Um, so, uh, all right, let's talk about Rudy. Uh, they, they hype up that they have Rudy, Rudy here. I feel like that this is, uh, look, Rudy is 85 years old. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. That Rudy is who he is, okay? Uh, I think this is more like uh, I think a producer has to like step in here of like, hey, like, you know, maybe let's not go to Rudy for the live reaction. Yeah. Can't have him live, Rob. R- Can't the have same him with Rich. Ha- yeah. they have a pre-tape skit. Send somebody to his house and do that. Yeah, and <sighs> then I feel like that they uh, and it's like it's like a like, you got to think that there's a meeting at some point. Like uh, like uh, is he gonna say? Is he gonna like say say something uh inappropriate? Uh, potentially. Uh, like well, the, probably the last thing we should do is show him naked Richard Hatch. <laughs> That's probably the last thing. Yeah. Not that that mattered. Try. He was already here's. The- Thing about Rudy and like look Rudy's a hero Rudy is a survivor hero but a real life hero mm-hmm. and Rudy had one of the greatest you know like uh Rudy and Rich walked so JT and Fishback could run like that it was the first like <laughs> odd couple pairing yeah, on survivor who? yeah like this this older man and this this older veteran and this sure. gay guy like bonding and so yeah Rudy is imperfect and Rudy is offensive. And I obviously can't be the one to say, oh, it's fine for Rudy to have said that. I'm not saying that in any way. I'm sure it's not fun to watch that and have him say that and have everyone laugh. I'm like, oh, only Rudy could say that. Ha ha ha. Yuck, yuck, yuck. But I think Rudy is like that guy who's like, I know it gets a laugh when I say this. Like he almost was doing a little shtick. Like I think Mm -hmm. we saw a little Rudy shtick. Like people love when I call Richard this. Like I didn't even get to call him this. Listen. I spent uh, four <laughs> weeks of my life with Rudy. Like he Crazy. has like five things that he says. Like yeah, it's just shit. one it's of Rudy them. Shit. Ask him about the Marines. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and he doesn't uh, want to go into it. He's like, this is my pin. That speaks yeah. for itself. About, <laughs> just a uh, fact check. This episode did not win a GLAAD award. I mean, this is no. like another thing that, that people were mad about then. Now they'd have to issue an apology. I do think it would be a little different. You just don't go live to no eighty-five year old men should be should be going. <laughs> yeah, just uh, be going hey, live. everybody, Rudy's here. Hey, yeah, yeah. after the second time he said queer, maybe yeah. cut the segment and go to commercial. Right, or something. right, ridiculous. Um, but yeah, uh, but this is it. Uh, this is the last time you're gonna see Rudy on a uh, anything mm. uh, Survivor uh, before his passing. So, um, you know, I mean, and as Jeff said, he looked great. Like, uh, you know, he, he did look uh, good, yeah. you know, uh, like, uh, I should look, hope to look, uh, I mean, did he fly out at, at, at 45? Rob, did he fly out for that ridiculous segment? Like, he doesn't live I'm not in LA, sure. does he? I'm not, I know he, no, certainly not. Um, <laughs> he's lived in Virginia for, <laughs> right. uh, so like around fl- West Hollywood. They just, like, flew him out just names. for that. Well, I don't know. I don't Again, know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't know what the, uh, what, what the, uh, appeal was of like, why, why do we need Rudy? Why are we going to go film a segment with Hatch? Can I ask another strange choice that Jeff made live is when he goes to announce the fan favorite and he puts his arm on Eddie's brother's shoulder without even knowing who he was. I mean, I know he's in the family section (laughs) and then Eddie's brother starts saying something and he just puts the mic on him. Like, why does he just like go to someone randomly (laughs) unplanned? He could have said anything there and he's like, Eddie's going to win. So it ends up being cute. But like, I don't understand what possesses Jeff to just like put the mic on whoever has something to say. He talks audience. to the crowd. He talks to yeah. the crowd. And, Jeff's and, very and, frisky in this. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, do you have a good line? Like, oh, you look like an Eddie. Yeah. You must be in the family. <laughs> I, I do want to say for, and I don't think I've ever gotten to say this about Jeff and this is not a new take, but like Jeff obviously gets a lot of flack and not by you, Rob, but like just generally like in the yeah. world, like obviously what I love about Survivor and what I love about Jeff is he never seems to take the audience for granted. Even if he is taking it for granted, like, I don't know how he feels. Maybe he, like, rips the mic off and is like, screw these losers, like, whatever. But, like, I feel like at the end of this, he, like, very earnestly thanks everyone for getting them to 13 years. And I mm-hmm. think he, I feel like he's been doing that for 40 seasons. And I feel like other major franchises like take advantage of their audience. They know you're going to come back regardless. They make editing choices. You could choices. say The Bachelor. You yeah. The bachelor they, they take they take I feel like they take the audience for granted that a millions of people are always going to tune in regardless yeah. of what they do. They could put on two 4-hour episodes in a week where nothing happens. And Jeff to me in Survivor 
Not every season's a, a dinger, whatever Akiva would say, and not every episode's a dinger. But Jeff seems to respect the audience, I point. think. And I like, like he mm-hmm. listens to EOE or he listens to like talk, like talking about it, or at least he says he does. Like as much as yeah, he's not really who's they say like oh he's who's he on the who are these people on the street talking to Jeff? But I like being treated with respect by a show, and I think Survivor does that well. It's a, it's mm-hmm. a good point. Also, I think like. He he lives this his whole life, and then the two live reunions a year, he gets to actually like meet the loonies who love the show <laughs> and like be in that environment. And I think it gets him excited. Also, like he has general generational wealth from this show. Like it, it's nice to have like a little bit of uh, karate tobe, as my people would say. Like you know, some appreciation for like, all right, this is uh, this job has given me you know probably a very large house in Los yeah, Angeles. Yeah, but so many so. people don't have. No, I agree. No, it is I, like it we're is. expecting very little of him, but it is a good point. Like he does, I don't. He doesn't like I, listen. You know he he's not he's not perfect, but yeah, he does appreciate that people like the show. I guess if you want to say that, that's true for sure. We got a couple of teases also for what Survivor is going to do next. Uh, Ali, this was still so bizarre. Of like, all right, we're going to show you a little something. We're going to show you a tease of what we're doing next season, and it's like some lava lamp. Like, what what am I supposed to get from this? Also, didn't people at the time get it from just the picture? Like, I feel like he went to the tweets that were like, is it about piranhas? That's a Survivor thing, but not the theme. Like, I feel like when they first showed it, some people guessed blood and water. Well, I think that people had been spoiled on the idea. Oh. Uh, like, I think that like the This is before circles. I was in that world. Yeah. So like, I feel like I, cast? Remember- I don't remember that night if we knew the cast. Um, I think that people knew a lot of the people. Uh, and there was even some speculation that uh, the first lady of podcasting and myself uh, we're uh, leaving. Uh, you very fueled shortly. that speculation for the well the that we did story <laughs> that uh, we we ran with it. We didn't start it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were we were moving, and people thought like, oh, they're moving. Oh, that's it. That means they're on the season. I I was enough of a normie then to believe it. I was like, I think they're I think they're going to be. You know, I was a new listener. I think they're going to be on the show. Yeah, they were. You know. Um, to the point I got like very sort of like aggressive, like uh, direct messages from Aris one day. I was like, uh, hey, just so you know, if you really are going to be on the season and you're lying, you're going to like, I- I'm not, dude, I'm not on the season. <laughs> Take it easy. All right, vote me out, Aris. I won't be there, but you could vote. Yeah. Me Wait, was that the time you were maybe going to be on the season, though? No, I mean, Nicole was pregnant and that was. Right, uh, we but did it wasn't re- that. I- yeah, it wasn't we were, like mm-hmm. crazy. Pe- people thought we were going to be uh, yeah. on, on the season because we were we were moving, and and then they're like, oh, they said they're going to that uh, the, that he's going there's going to be an interruption in podcasting. That's that means they're on the season. So um, we did announce that Nicole was pregnant with Dominic at the uh, Survivor Know It Alls uh, on this night, also. So this also has a special place in my heart. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, that uh, he, he, uh, Ali's asking me in the in the private chat where we asked. So they, I got a phone call. Right, that's what I'm saying. I like when you I, like I, yada yada my question. I was I like, wait, am I not get a, phone, get a phone call? And uh, that I said, I and I told them like, well, this wouldn't be a good time for me because my wife is pregnant right now. Not even knowing that it was going to be, they were going to ask about my pregnant uh, wife mm-hmm. to potentially play. They're like, do you have any friends? Maybe you could come on. <laughs> no, like, not yet. <laughs> Maybe Famously, ask me in a couple not. years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Let's take a couple questions. Uh, we'll get to uh, so many of your questions over the weekend on our patron feedback show. Avsinensky is going to join us. Uh, you Cochran's can, uh, number one fan. Yes. No, number one <laughs> Cochran fan. <Avsinensky. laughs> wait, wait, wait. Uh, Say that into the mic. Akiva. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, Rob is website.com slash patron. If you want to hear the uh, patron feedback show, I feel like we have not talked a lot about Cochran in a four hour podcast about uh, Survivor Car- Caramoan. Well, imagine so if you're Cochran listening to this and you've been waiting the whole time. I have the, his whole face. I mean, do you know how scary it is to turn around? Yeah. I hung this up like at 5 p.m. Well, it's been horrifying me all day. No, but not I feel Cochran, like for, just like this thing. for a season that is disproportionately featuring Cochran. I feel like that we have not spent a lot of the time really uh, d- breaking down Cochran. Does it disproportionately much- feature Cochran? Like, yes, it's a coronation towards the end, but I actually don't think it's clear that Cochran's, besides the fact that they give him thrones to sit on mm-hmm. in the confessionals. I don't think he's like the obvious star or the clear winner until the Andrea boot mm-hmm. when there's just like mm-hmm. nobody else with the story. But I, yeah. I mean, am I crazy? Like I'm, I'm, I mean, don't answer that, but am I wrong here? <laughs> there's not a lot of exciting Cochran takes. I think is part of it. Uh, I, I forgot how often he mentions he went to Harvard. You know, mm-hmm. like I know, you know, it, he wrote I think a it's paper. a lot. 
Yeah, he wrote a paper about Survivor. Oh my God, that paper like, thing is so overblown overrated. And ridiculous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he even says it. Like, I looked yes. into this. Was like, let me yeah. see this paper. And I guess he said like it wouldn't be interesting to Survivor fans because it's just like so how basic. the jury can apply. But Jeff keeps growing, and he's like, he wrote a paper. He wrote a thesis. You don't write a thesis. <laughs> he has like, a doctorate. There's no, there's the no Survivor. thesis <laughs> in law school. Yeah. He wrote like a paper, probably for like a gut throwaway class that did win an award. It was probably interesting. There's not a lot of interesting topics yeah. to write about in law school. I feel like he said it's not that great. Um, okay. Uh, Cassie Randolph says, uh, how would Cochran have done on Winners at War? Good Probably question. not well. I, I think he That's, gets targeted. Like, I, 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 There's yeah. definitely, like, who were his people out there, I guess, is the way to look at it. Sophie? Boston Rob is going to play with Cochran? I don't know. I don't think so. Like, I just think he comes, he's in such a great spot coming off of South Pacific where everybody's underestimating him. And I think after a dominant Caramo in performance, I mean, dominant, Mm -hmm. whatever, but yeah, I don't, I don't think he's getting by the merge in, in uh, this season. They definitely asked him. I think he probably made the right call to stay home. His life is fine. He's the epitome of my life is fine. Why Mm -hmm. would he? Yeah. It's like you. I mean, I think you should play again, whatever, but like, why would he leave a writing job when those things mm-hmm. are like always temporary anyway to like go lose on Survivor? Yeah, it's yeah. not fun if you lose. Also, probably, <laughs> probably. I like eating uh, every day. Yeah, I, I bet uh, Cochran and Tony, if they uh, ended up on the same beach, would be fun though. We'd get some. Oh, good... it would have been good TV. Like yeah. Cochran is an underdog again because he would not have been like in a way he he would would have entered as maybe like the biggest star in the orbit. Like he is sort of yeah. their golden boy still. And other survivors don't like that. Right. So he he sort of starts as the underdog, which is fascinating. He does have Sophie, who's his friend. I'm sure he's got relationships with other people there, but man. Mm-hmm. Uh, who I does he I, push out? Nick Wilson? Like who who's... Adam? Adam, oh. yeah. He's the Adam line. Yeah. Adam Klein. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh. All right. Uh Zach Nelson says, Are the fans the least entertaining starting tribe of all time? Who no. asked that? Zach Nelson. Okay, but Zach Nelson, how many of them do you remember? Like, that's what's blowing my mind. Like, yes, they're not entertaining, but like, I haven't watched Caramoan since it aired in 2013, and okay. I remembered all but Laura. How about this? Uh, the original fans. Yeah, tried. the original. Are, are yeah, they skating name by? Them. Yeah, Eric and and Eric's the only one to return. First of all, like, th- both tribes in Thailand are less <laughs> interesting. Start with that. Um, I mean, there's. I was going to ask: Is there another fan that would have been? I mean, obviously, Eric's the most memorable from fans versus favorite. But would there have been another fan from that season? Natalie Bolton, because name got thrown around. Yeah, Natalie Bolton, I think, is the only other person that sort of, uh, you know, gets uh, gets remembered. Okay. I think Jason I, Siska. Yeah. Yeah. You, they had thrown Sierra. I mean, it would have been the same sort of negative energy, but thrown Sierra from Token Chains in there, that would have been interesting. She lives in there. negative energy, though. In, into what? The favorites tribe? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like casting. I'm oh, casting. Okay. The, He's the going favorite. back to the first question, I think. The we first asked, question from was, four and a half who hours. Who did we ago. miss? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really, anybody from Token Chains would have been better. Okay. Um, let's let's see. Um, uh, Kurt wants to know uh, where would this season rank if they accidentally lost the tapes to the pre merge and just aired the post merge? Uh, what if they said, like, uh, all right, this season we're starting at the merge? That's this Spencer is the game. Tokens. Let's just it's keep talking about season, token then. Who's doing token change? Should we do token change? Okay. Um, no, I think, that, I think it's a top 10 season. If, they, uh, if they're like, season. we lost the footage. It's yeah. not a top 10 season. Akiva, you just talked about what a horrible slog. The finale was the worst thing of television of all time. Like, it, it's a coronation. There's no alternative winner possible. You're not rooting for anyone against Cochran. Well, in this, How are in you this saying it's a top 10 season? Alley, in this hypothetical, Eric does not have that. Does not have the. No, that's like, not the hypothetical. The hypothetical yeah. is they well, lost I'm, the like, footage. Yeah. Uh, I. I, I I think maybe it's top 20. It's probably between 10 and 20. Like what if somebody what if somebody in there is like Julia Landauer is so canceled that they can't even air the episode yeah. she's in. And they're like we're just starting at the we're starting at the merge. Yeah, that's well, what I, that's what well, yeah. I understand the 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 theory no, I'm but just, I'm saying I'm like changing the hypothetical to like How about a, this? What like if they said like hey look, we're so we 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 got a wild idea. We're going to run the whole pre-merge in two hours in one night. And then <laughs> this season is such a, like turn the Reynolds and Andrea votes into their own episodes. Mm-hmm. Could you, could you build out the season that way? No, 
<laughs> of course you don't not. think Survivor fans would have been? Uh, you said geek? the two best. There were two good votes of this season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Said you through this three hour retros four hour mm-hmm. retrospective. Like, I, look, I think it's a I think it's a good winner, and I think it's a good post merge. I don't think it's top ten, and I think Akiva, nothing you've said tonight has made it th- <laughs> made me think that you would think it's top ten. No, it's not. No, I. It's it just the the idea is funny because you're taking out some of the worst stuff in the history of yeah. the show. Series, right, but right. I don't, but I, but I don't, I, right. I think okay, that that so would like be better. Then. It's like 18th overall. I mean, an interesting no. question would be if Brandon Hans isn't cast, right? And you have yes. Spencer from Token Chains or whatever. Yes, you have Spencer someone did. else yes. in the spot. Does that make such a big improvement? Or for, you know, what's interesting to me when Brandon says, Brandon says to Dawn in the first, second episode, voting out Franny is you just lost the game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A is that true, and B, if that doesn't happen and they take out Philip instead of Franny, is this a top? Is this a top twenty? Very possibly. <laughs> Honestly, it's possible. Imagine if like Franny wins or something. Because then wow. maybe like, Brandon doesn't have a meltdown. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe that's they go that after Cochran. Maybe I mean, instead of Philip, they go after Cochran and the hold up bro vote. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I don't the, think uh, Philip is holding the season back uh, that do. much. Like, I think some of the Stealth or Us stuff is like gets a little tired, but I don't think it's uh, necessarily like I, I can see where you're saying that he agitates Brandon, but I think that Brandon's going to go off uh, like sooner or later. The reason then you have I Corinne and Franny and yeah. Ma- in that, which I think maybe maybe Franny is the person instead of the Dawn flip, and there's actually like a rival alliance. I think that I think the secret to making this like all in a top half season is Franny not losing in the first episode. Yeah. Rob, the reason I think that Philip ruins the season is because a person like Philip on the show, and I, I like, I don't have, I, I have, we have been bashing Philip. He will never flip. His, his, his style of survivor is very boring. It's like an NBA game that's going to be 42 to 40. Like, he, <laughs> he will never flip, and therefore nothing interesting can ever happen unless it's happening yeah. because of him. He will okay. never do anything interesting gameplay wise. All right, let me do one more one more question. I'll get to the rest of these uh, on uh, Saturday with Av. Uh, the great Alex Forstenhausler uh, wants to know: Is this Andrea's best game? Definitely, I think. I mean, she could have won. Like Andrea, ha- Andrea made the final seven and easily could have won had she yeah. not made. You know, had she won immunity there. Like, there's a lot of scenarios where she probably needs to cut Co- Cochran, and it's not clear she yes. was willing to. She has but. an idol at the final seven here mm-hmm. in this game. Uh, she does not uh, get back. Like she gets the six in uh, Redemption Island. She goes out at eight here in uh, Game Changers uh, from last week. But I feel like she never had the inside track in Game Changers. But that's if she only had two more, I- two more nights. The one she left out in the next one that she could have used the idol was it three, Se- seven, six, five. She could. You can used. use it at five. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. it was no, no. I was just misremembering I, when she I went s- out. Don't you think at seven, we didn't really talk about that. At seven, she really has to say I'm playing it. She doesn't play it. She has to say I'm playing it to buy herself another. I know I know she clearly wasn't threatened at all, so there was no reason. I, I think she has to play it. I don't you, think I, well, there's no reason. think she's being voted play. out, but I do think you have to be like, do you know what? I don't like having an idol. Too much pressure. Maybe you could win it. I know, I, like, let's just vote out Eddie. And I'm and yeah. I'm gonna you know and I'm gonna play the I idol think she and then you don't have to worry about Eddie fighting. Gonna play it. It. Yeah, uh, I don't think she to. needs to play you it. You have to. You know, you don't. I don't think you play it, but you have to say. Everybody knew it. she had it. I think she yeah. w- wears it to tribal council. So well, I might as well play it tonight. Mm-hmm. You might even say you have two. Say I have another one of these. Of course, I'm gonna play it tonight. I mean, does does Andrea go because she's the one scheming, or would they have come to that conclusion anyway? Like, do you think if Andrea just stays the course, which is hard to do, right? Because you want to timings everything, and they're gonna get me before if I don't get them. But if she stays the course, do they actually go to the four? I don't think so. I think she's such a threat. Yeah. There's okay. no reason to take her. And like the, she's the only person of the of So the, then yes, then this is her best game because then she didn't she yeah. didn't sink her own ship by going for Brenda, right? She's that the only person in the core alliance who has any relationship with the minority alliance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think her games go um Cara Moen, Game Changers, Redemption Island. Uh, and that is going to be a wrap on Andrea here in the top 40 season mm-hmm. countdown. Wrap on Philip as well. Uh so uh two players, two more players that we say and goodbye Julia to. Land- no more. Yeah, yes, and yeah. all of the favorites. All so the returnees. Like, all the returnees. Okay. All the fans. All right. Uh, real quick, let me get to our weekly poll. Uh, so, uh, who's the MVP of the season? Keeve loves a Twitter poll, so he should nail all of yes. these. Yes, Keeve. Uh, who's the who's the who's the MVP of the season? This is a hard question. I, is it? You, who do you think? I mean, is it Cochran? Like, you just give it to the Cochran. winner? 
Yeah. See, okay. see, I I voted for Malcolm. I took this poll because I wanted to be able to influence the results. But mm -hmm. I voted for Malcolm because, again, I think before I came in here, I was very high on at least he mounted some sort of resistance. He gave us the only interesting storylines, but fair enough that it's Cochran. That's yeah. probably the right answer. 56% for Cochran, 19% uh, for Malcolm. Andrea uh, sneaking in with uh, uh, 9.4%. Thirty-seven no, percent. No for I, I only get the top three. I only get the top. Three. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, what Save one-time player packet. would you most like to see come back in a future season? I came and I voted for Snowy. I stand by Snowy, but I think I'm switching to Reynolds. I think my my reading that EW thing. Mm -hmm. I'm switching to Reynolds. I'm going to say none of them. I don't think anybody <laughs> come back. No, <laughs> that's Reynolds, not the question. Reynolds. Reynolds, Reynolds, Reynolds I go with Reynolds. Fifty-five percent. I go with Reynolds. Yeah, but I think uh, the real answer is none of them. Are 14 percent for back. Eddie and uh, 12 percent for Michael Snow. All right, okay. my favorite question: What name in this cast list made you stop and say to yourself, "Wait, who's that?" Laura, and it's not close. She was yeah, the only Laura. person I didn't. Well, I remember in like the RGP world, people sort of like, "Yes, Queen Laura," but she had way less to do on screen than like maybe it was like more. Monday morning quarterbacking because she. Wait, am I like, saying who I want, who I pick, or what I think the audience? What do you picked? think the audience said? Because I still oh. think Julia Landauer, the race car driver, is referenced all the time. Like, yes, race as being Julia. like the most boring contestant in the right. show. Right, yeah, and I, Matt I, obviously. I, I'm, with, I'm with Laura. Matt at least has like an interesting. Matt like, survives. Snowy, you know, like it's yeah. got to be mm -hmm. Laura. But Hope and Allie are in her. In I mean, I'm face blind. I don't know the difference between between. Rob <laughs> looks like it's Hope. It, it's Allie. Forty-one percent. Do well, people not yes. know that? First of all, you have to remember the four, the like little force in between them. I guess you don't have to. Yeah, but you don't know their name. But also, I feel like I'm very aware that Allie's in casting. I thought people would know her. You're because tapped she's in. You're like, too tapped in. I'm tapped one out. Has, <laughs> four one of hours kids. in. Who, who has kids? Allie or Hope? One Allie just said like a kid. Okay. Yeah. Mazel tov. Uh, Laura Alexander uh, with 22.22%. Uh, uh, interesting mm -hmm. uh, anomaly. And then Hope was 21.39. Uh, or twenty one per uh point th uh, three nine percent. Um, uh, Julia not in the top three. You because she it's like she's triple so Kelly. memorable. For it's being like bad. she's so yeah she's memorable for being so bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, most underrated player of the season. I think Dawn. I think Dawn like d did a lot of things that would be a winning game in another season. I think I picked Cochran here because I think people don't like, well, like what's the vibe? Like you, Akiva, you famously have your finger on the pulse of this audience. Yeah. What, <laughs> what's the vibe around Cochran as a winner? People think the season is boring, but he's a good winner or yeah. people over it because Jeff's so high on him. I think it's a little bit of his a dominant, it's a dominant winter season. You could say like, what's his competition? There's 10, 10 jokers. And then not some of the strongest returning players. Like his competition is less strong than, let's say, you know, Tyson's the next season, which is, I think, a far stronger, certainly on the newbies. Well, Rob, what do you think? Cochran uh, think is considered that, an ex, like 10th best winner, yeah. 15th best winner. Um, well, where do people have that, that, that? Let's get to that in our next question. But I kind of feel like if, uh, like if he came out and disavowed Jeff or vice versa, I think it would only help his, uh, yeah, his yeah, he needs a bad boy image. He should be like, he should re retweet the well, that's podcast, he won the like, gross food so that he could jokers. have a bad boy image that mm -hmm. helped his image. Yeah, it, uh, it was gonna hurt Eddie's dating prospects, mm -hmm. but okay, Cochran so who's underrated? I'm looking at the photo. I'm Fran, maybe yeah. I voted for Franny, but I, who do I think the audience picked as underrated? Yeah. I'll stay with Franny. I think they said Reynolds, but they're dumb. Uh, they they said Dawn, 21% of oh, the vote. Oh, they're, they're so dumb. I take, I take back everything I've ever said about you guys. Eric Reichenbach had 16%. Sherry no. had 12%. Okay. What? Kelly what? Eric Reichenbach? I mean, Eric is good in the sense that like, he'll always make the final five or six. Like, he, Sherry, he has, like, that a, was... By Sorry, accident, he's a good survivor player, but okay. like you just can't win. Kelly Wentworth Award for best pre-merge boot. Who you got? Nobody. There is no, there's no, I'm not like doing a bit. There's no good premier. You could say Franny. That's fine. Franny. There's I don't not think one the person audience like, would have said Shamar. Yeah. So I think it has to be Franny. It was. Runaway. Yeah. A year later, we're going to lose like, you know, Bryce and, and David Sand, like, like, and Garrett, like, or just from one tribe. Like all those people would dunk on all of the, you know, in terms I of. I don't know uh, that I'm clamoring for like a Garrett, David Sampson. I would be <laughs> Franny over the two of them. Yeah, people, people clamor for the taste of uh, David <laughs> Sampson compared to some Flavored of these pre-rush books. Um, <laughs> Matt Bischoff at a 26%. Laura Alexander. People still, uh, Laura Alexander riding high with the 
the podcast audience. 50%. We didn't talk about Laura. I mean, she did have good strategic instincts. She called out Reynolds. There are a couple Reynolds, things she pocket did. Bulge. Yep. That we didn't talk about with her. Um, that I remember thinking, like, oh, actually, you know, of the three of them, of Hope and Allie and Laura, Laura definitely had the best game sense, but you know, mm-hmm. never loved yep. you. Yeah. She spotted the bulge. Uh, people have remembered that. Okay. <laughs> Of 40 seasons, where would you rank this winner? We asked people to give us a number from 1 to 40, Akiva. What was the say, average number? Uh, Ali, what do you think? I'm going to say 15. So I actually didn't participate in the rankings of the season generally. And winners, they, like, I like... This is the I know, winner ranking. I know, I know. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just confessing that. I'm like, no, I have to... I'm like, Corinne, I've got the plan a question early and I have to just confess it. Um... <sighs> So I don't know. I I like I just really watch each season. I've enjoyed rewatching this. Like I was telling Sam, like, oh, it's like fun to rewatch Survivor. Um, but I don't do it unless I'm showing up somewhere. So uh no one cared. That's not what you asked. I think he's a really good winner, maybe eleven. Um the audience said Look, he didn't over answer. under. Yeah. Uh I, well, I said well, I'm 15. setting the over under at 15. 15. Okay. 15. Yeah, no, I was gonna set the over under at 15. All right. All right, you want the over or the under at 15? Now I'm going to say, because people don't like the season, I'm going to say it's worse than 15. Okay. Like 16 or higher. Close. 17.4. Yeah. I mean, Cochran doesn't make any mistakes here, uh, but he's never even brought up that like nobody even brings up the idea of voting him out. Rob, it comes up one time. I think after uh, Philip goes home, I think that the guys are saying that they want to win immunity and vote and vote Cochran uh, out. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, like, he doesn't make it one mistake the whole season, um, but there's not a ton of like uh, things that you could say like on like uh, a resume where like I uh, made all of these moves. But I mean, there's not a lot to pick apart. I mean, he plays like sort of like a Michelle Fitzgerald or like he plays like not not really, but he pl- uh, not Tommy. But I feel like he plays like an underrated game. Everyone likes him. Everyone goes to him with information like he's got mm-hmm. a good social game. But he's so good at explaining his game. Like again, I think Don yeah. actually probably did more strategically, but he's really great yeah. at explaining it. And yeah. I think it works for him that he's this nerd. Like they're not threatened by him; they underestimate him, and I think they like that. And it works for him. He's also I, always in the majority alliance. He's in the majority on day one. Yeah. Fine, that's good. And then after that, it's like impossible People for him to fall out. Yeah. yeah, but I'm just saying, like him and Dawn, there's no way for them to lose at that point. Basically, like they're in the majority against the favorites. Then they're in the majority against like the rest of the, you know, like they're you have a locked in one too. Like you could run the game with two people, and that's what okay. they did. Uh, is this season too high, too low, or just right? The audience said uh, just right, thirty eight percent. Too low, thirty five percent. Too high, twenty six percent. Okay, we added a new. Basically, question. it was a split. <laughs> Split vote. All right, we nothing. added a new question this week. What yes. season do you think is next? Okay, can can Ali and I? Uh, can we do a draft? Can we draft what the next season is? I like, feel so strongly, Akiva, about what so the you next want, season is. How about this? Do you think it's South Pacific? I. Why are you asking me? Are we doing a draft well, or do yeah, I? Yeah, let's do a draft. One, 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 one. Quick two, two, two season each snake draft. You go first. Okay, I'm picking South Pacific. Yeah, all right. Oh, see, I would see. I don't know how you knew that. How did you know that I thought that? Because everybody's been clamoring all week. They think it's South Pacific. Because I'm for the taste of South. Whoever Pacific. wants South Pacific, the other person gets all three picks. All right, I'm going to pick Fiji. Okay, Ali, what do you got? Oh, like Rob? Does Rob know yet? Yeah, Rob knows. I, do Rob know. knows. I know. Oh, okay. How he knows. I'm going to pick. Draft. What a man of uh, integrity that he didn't draft. And see, I, I don't even know what you've already done, like off the top oh, of my head. Oh, okay. Listen. Have you done Redemption Island yet? Yeah, you did. Yes. That was the um, 39th best season. <sighs> Not the second worst, the 39th right. best. I, I, I forgo all of their choices. I think it's all maybe, right. I'll, uh, I'll, is, I'll, it, is it Gabon? Yeah, Gabon is probably the next. And I'll go with All Stars, but I don't think it's All Stars. Can, can I make a comment on the rankings, actually, Rob? Are you going to yes. announce the rankings right sure. now? Sure. You can make a comment. I, I don't even think this is like an opinion. I think I mean, this we're is four what hours in. You could basically Listen, do whatever you want. I really so like cannot when, believe we're doing when this. you I mean, when you, you could start a uh, new girl old guy right Let's now. Do it. I haven't watched the episode. Me neither. Of course, two and a half minutes. Listen, I like to watch it fresh. That's uh, we're that's why. a week behind, and we still not, neither of us watched it. For By the way, we did show what what terrible branding. We didn't drop a new episode this week. Very stupid marketing. That's don't yeah. even start. It's my fault. It's my fault. Listen, MJC is on last week's episode. Okay, Rob. It was a bad when you filled yeah. out the, the the best season, yeah, the, the the form gave you the seasons in order. So in order to to take 
let's say, you know, Survivor Fiji, you would have to drag it down. I think that ended up influencing the actual order of the seasons more than it should have. Where in the future, it probably has to be on the... You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, I'm so so you think there's a reason why that the most recent I'm, seasons are... are I'm are telling you, yes. That bottom. hunt, yeah. because I saw, I thought it that minute... Should it, that, should that, it have that, been that, randomized? Akiva, you're the only person that would do yeah. it like that, as you famously... But it's right. I'm right. That's pictures. why... That's why I think most people like, probably wrote it out. Do you feel like that Borneo time? has a good shot to be number one? I don't think it has a good shot to be number one. And Thailand did do very poorly. But I think it gives the, those seasons an advantage. And that's why can Fiji I, was like last the last time you did this. And it hasn't come up yet. And I don't even think it's coming up right now. Can so I, I tell you why I think up. I snowed you in the draft? Why? Because I happen to know there was no talking with T-Bird this week, right? Mm -hmm. Are you hitting someone double next week on from South Pacific? Oh, well. <laughs> I don't even no, know what you're uh, talking about. Yeah. Brandon are you, Hans are you, is coming are you on. My, are you in my Uber? Google Calendar, Ali Lasher? I, I'm not, but. All right. So uh, next week will be Survivor South Pacific. I was Sorry, almost going to open uh, the show with this tonight. I was like, this is the Cochran deep dive, but this mm -hmm. is like the. Uh, the Snyder cut of the <laughs> Caramoan Car first, then South Pacific. So. Mm -hmm. Flashback to Dawn and Cochran's first season next week. Will Sophie's tweet get uh, complaining about this being 29 get more likes than Cochran's tweet complaining mm. about this being 30? Uh, yeah. Will Cochran tweet again? Yeah. Will Cochran tweet about that? I hope so. Well, it's, it was so funny that uh, he talked about, like, uh, he's like, I don't leave my house. I don't leave Twitter. And then, uh, yeah, he's still there. Yeah. Although he does leave, like, he's lurking. I don't think he tweets often at all. No. He's just no. reading tweets. Yes. Uh, and then I can tell you that I've uh, confirmed behind the scenes. So next week, we will have a talking with T Bird with uh, Dawn Meehan uh, coming up That's next so weekend. That's so exciting. Next weekend. So we can do the deep dive. And I, I went back and I looked. I haven't talked, I haven't spoken to Dawn Meehan on a, on a podcast since Kara Moen. So it's been mm -hmm. eight years. Good thing we, we were nice today. Her. We we only said well, nice things. Ask her what she thinks about the teeth. If it was really deeper than the, if she, well, well, yeah, I'm sure we'll, I'm sure it'll come up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we will uh, get into all of that uh, next time out. Uh, so next, so one week from tonight, we mm -hmm. will watch survive rewatch Survivor South Pacific, the 29th best season. So who's guess? Who's guess? No, yeah, I will. I'm not I will. Nothing. I will. I will. Basically, this was oh, like, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, we got the, like, this was like the Benjamin Button Cochran order of Game Changers, Caramo, and mm -hmm. South Pacific. You know boom, boom, fixed, boom. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like you would have made it different in the order if you were just setting the order yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah uh, Br Brian Scally and Beth Dixon uh, will join the me. The B&B, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other. Uh, so look for that next week. Uh, we will get into that on. Wednesday of next week, and how then, did Allie, how did Ali know that that Dawn was going to be on talking? With yeah, how did you know that? You get, you guess no that talking with T Bird this week. Yeah, uh, th it's not on every week, is it? Not on every week. Um, what are you talking about, Ali? Yeah, Ali had some info inside. No, I just know that there was no talking with T Bird, and then I thought to myself, no it's probably because they're going to double. She was up. originally going to be scheduled this weekend. I said, well, why would uh, like uh, let's mo mo you know move it back? Come on. Okay. All right. I've got so, Cochrane level thinking. Yes. Okay. All right. So what else? What else? What else do we need to know? Even I are physically miserable. I'm so, I, I, look, this was the <laughs> longest one and it was and, and by far. And I far. kept it tight. We weren't even off the Kiva warned yeah. me. No no oh, tangents. Don't throw me under the bus four hours mad. and sixteen minutes mm -hmm. in. Don't yeah. throw me under the bus. No now. tangents. I didn't even do I didn't even show all my props. You, you want to show any I, more props? I said no. I, when I said no tangents, Rob. I said don't bring up my son's childhood imagination. No, no, you, you, I don't, or... don't threaten me. Yeah. Well, can I say <laughs> well, you, well, I talk, you want to talk about banana? We can talk about banana. No, I don't um, have the energy. Yeah, or the I do have one, one quick uh, child story. If that's mm -hmm. uh, what, uh, sure. what you like. Um, that I watched <laughs> the gross food like. challenge with with my kids, mm -hmm. uh, and we got to the balut, and I tried <laughs> to explain what the balut is, and I was like, oh, it's like a it's like a duck egg that's kind of like a like it's like the duck was gonna be born but it was and they're like oh. dad what happened to the duck <laughs> i was like um yeah it didn't make it like what do you mean it didn't make it 
And then you get Eddie being like, I crunched on the beak, or who said that? Like, the first thing I did was I bit down on the beak. Well, yeah, Balut was a sadder story than I just did. They were like, yeah, worms, oh, bugs. Okay, what do you mean the duck didn't make it, Dad? Okay. Well, that's how you know you're raising nice kids, is that they're yeah. not, like, laughing at half born eggs <laughs> right right um just to give update my personal rankings of uh rob's rewatchability rankings uh that i had caramoan i'm gonna say it was eighth overall of the 11 seasons uh that i watched uh this season i'm gonna slot it right under one world and i guess better than island of the idols because uh while this season has uh low lows uh island of the idols has lower lows uh this, and we're talking about bottom five then rob rewatchability rewatchability at this yeah. point i'm saying if it's like it's not going to be topped by three more probably Look, uh the first half is 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 really hard to get through uh mm -hmm. that I, I had it ahead of i i it, it hits higher highs than island of the idols ever hits uh also island of the idols has a, a lower low um but i feel like that you know one world was probably more of a steady ride throughout You'll find okay. That. So I have it eighth uh, in my rewatchability rankings of the season. All right. Uh, of course, that the people who have listened to this podcast are clamoring for mm -hmm. more Ali and Akiva. No doubt. And of course, they could get that every <laughs> single week on the new girl except for Old this Guy week. Podcast. Except for yes. this week. <laughs> but if they're new listeners, every episode is new to them. You think there's someone who made it four, four hours and 20 minutes into this who hasn't at least this been aware of us? This is the first RHJP podcast. <laughs> on video. Yeah. This is amazing. But yes, no, check it out. Anchor.fm slash new girl old guy. Mm -hmm. uh, when Keeve decides to show up. No, I'm just kidding. I've had him miss a week too. Keeve's working hard. It's his busy season. Busy season. March Madness. And then mm -hmm. also, if you're not tired of me and Akiva, we're crushing mm -hmm. it at 32 fans talking about the, a logo bracket. Very fun oh, yeah. logo bracket. Part it's two bracket to come season. at some point. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, there's a new patron level for 32 fans. I had to write eight letters to people who aren't giving me a dime uh, yeah. to thank them for becoming What are you writing a letter to people? <laughs> so uh, based on a joke, we've introduced, you know, the patron tiers for 32 seen, fans. Yes. Are, okay, you like I, Akiva. I was against this. You were against it. And so Akiva said, someone was like, why isn't there? And I prefer Allie to both of them. And Akiva was like, well, it has to be $7. So Chester made a, le made a level where all the perks are the same. $2 of your seven will go to charity. And uh, I was like, well, if Akiva, if it, deter it, it makes you so upset that it's the same perks, I'll like write a letter one time to these people to like roast them and tell them how stupid it is that they joined at this level. And two new patrons joined it for a total of eight people I'm writing letters to. So mm -hmm. really raking it in. Hand yeah, over that's a little bit of the Reynold, the, the final travel council. Of like, Dawn, roast me. Come on. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I'm not asking to be roasted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she yes. called them all chauvinists. Yes. I write yes. things like, maybe I'll get ideas from this final tribal. I'll be like, do you know why you're sitting here as a patron of 32 fans? <laughs> Text mm -hmm. me a picture of you with your teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and then Akiva, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, uh, of course, you hear Ali also uh, that I, I will not stand for this Brian Cohen erasure. Mm -hmm. You're you're committing the erasure, it's Sam, and you billing me as NGOG person. That's my mistress pod, mm -hmm. my main my main squeeze, the challenge podcast. Mm -hmm. Rob has a website dot com slash challenge iTunes. Okay, all right. Feels like um, an old website, but it'll take you where you need to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. iTunes no longer exists, but. <laughs> podcast. Uh, Should I change that to uh, robhiswebsite.com slash uh, challenge, challenge Apple podcast? Apple podcast? If you think there's one chance, if there's any chance that Brian or I will remember that, and will week to week, we'll just be giving out the wrong website. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. And then Akiva, do you have any other podcasts? Yeah. Akiva, this weekend, uh, mm -hmm. the TV song bracket. What's, what's okay? Get the over under. What's going to be the longer podcast? This Ooh. or the TV theme song? Uh, I just two. Think I think bracket. based on the time we're starting it at night, I don't think it's physically possible for it to be longer than this. Like my children will probably start waking up. What time mm -hmm. are you starting it? 8.30 at night. On Sunday? Um, on Sunday. And you can't squeeze an NGOG before that? I'll, I'll do NGOG before that. I'll do NGOG <laughs> before that. Um, we just booked it now in the chat here, I see. Um, or 8 o'clock on Saturday. No, oh, I'm looking at something else. I'm you're looking, looking at yeah, the wrong you're thing. Looking, yeah. That was yeah. Uh, Sam, you're, mix, you're mixing me up. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're involved in that we, got, we have Alexander Chester and Chappelle on on mm -hmm. uh, on the podcast this week. Uh, yeah, bracket season continuing on 32 fans. 
NGOG. Uh, Drive to Survive on Netflix. I have nothing to do with that show, but I like it. People should watch it. That's about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk about what's what's coming up. Uh, Scott St. Pierre has been standing by for hours uh, to show you uh, what's, what's coming up here. Uh, earlier tonight, uh, we had our Wednesday night Big Brother Canada. Boy, are, are you two checking out any of this Big Brother Canada? Absolutely not. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Neither of us are watching. Alec, could I you want name? to watch, but I don't oh. have access. I'm in oh, yeah. Big Brother oh, Canada is. Wednesday night uh, recap. I believe it was uh, Taryn, Melissa, and Geneva. Uh, check out our Wednesday night recap of Big Brother Canada. Then uh, Taryn is going to be live tomorrow morning. It's going to be a solo Taryn on Thursday, mm. ready for uh, the latest uh, Big Brother Canada eviction. Thursday. Yeah, it's been a wild season of Big Brother Canada 9 uh, so far. Uh, over on our 90 day fiance. What's about time I watched 90 day fiance, uh, with Akiva fell in mm -hmm. love. Now uh, here I am. And uh, yeah. And now, uh, here I am, uh, watching a whole season and, uh, went through the latest episode with Puya Zambakili and Sasha Joseph, as we're closing in on the end of a 90 day fiance season. Now, can I ask you a question? Sure. Anything. I used to think, okay, you don't like the challenge because it's like Survivor, but a lot more of the Reynolds and Alley like hooking up kind of drama stuff. Yeah, that's not for you. No, I like that. Now I like that you're watching 90 Day Fiance, which is all trash drama. It's like, yes. why not meet me in the middle? Not so, in Omaha, but it, at the challenge. I I don't like challenges. Uh, mm. That's uh, that, I that, I I like you I like hook up it. drama. Uh, <laughs> that's what Ninety Day Fiance. But, the, all, but you could you could watch the challenge and fast forward the challenges just like Survivor. Yeah. No, and that's what and and that's what I do uh, most mostly. But uh, that uh, as far as like me podcasting a show, if no, the no, no, half I'm not inviting you. We to should steal have our podcast. Rob this week. I'm just surprised you don't like it as a television show. Mm. Yeah. Steven likes it. Is that why you don't like it? Steven loves the challenge. And it's not that I dislike uh, the show. It's nothing that, uh, that it, I watch almost nothing. If I'm not podcasting, it. it's really mm -hmm. that uh, I watch oh, almost nothing. To pleasure. Question. Yeah. Oh my God. Beauty and the geek. Yes. What okay. a show. Chappelle, uh, I will just special yeah. in my heart. Great job. Yes. listeners. Uh, Chappelle and myself are uh, watching uh, one show a week uh, this month to uh, find a new show to watch. And so Jenny Autumn is going to stop by the RHAP Rewind to show us an episode of Beauty and the Geek, which I never watched before. Do you know what's notable about Beauty and the Geek? Actually, it might only be season two of Beauty and the Geek. Yes. But... I'm trying to remember. I want to, Akiva, can you fact check me while I say this? That you know, the producer of Jeopardy who stepped in to host, he's the host of Beauty and the Geek. What's his name? Alex Collins or something? I mean, I couldn't mm -hmm. tell you his name, but I was watching Jeopardy because I'm highbrow like that. And I was like, mm -hmm. I know that guy. And it's a Beauty and the Geek. So I'm also lowbrow. Mm -hmm. Mike Richards, thank you so much. Is that Mike a highbrow Richards. show, Jeopardy? The highest of brows. Have you heard then, about well, Jeopardy? Well, what about Wheel of Fortune? Is Wheel of Fortune the lowest of brows? Low brow. Here's it's not the lowest. No, no. But Beauty and the Geek Jerry is the lowest Springer. of brows. Jerry Springer. Like actually, Genuine yeah. Ken is the lowest. Of they have goons. Minutes. We don't even know what Genuine Ken is. Sixty minutes. Can we stop talking about Jeopardy? Mm -hmm. And then um, but I feel like most people watch both. Nineteen ninety Sports is Center. Not I'm You're trying too to think low on Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune is like it's just medium brow. It's like a normal brow. Yeah, it's a br it's just a unibrow. It's just one brow. brow. Yeah. Did you have 90 Sports Center in those rankings? 1990 Sports Center. That was very high class. Why do you okay. have to call that out, Rob? We gotta let okay. him go. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, myself, Mike Bloom, and uh, Lindsay Wilson, mm. uh, of course, uh, the per the woman who put together the oral history of the sleepover. Another night that uh, will live in infamy for all of us. Uh, that we not got as long a night as this, though. <laughs> yeah, to talk about Survivor's funniest. Family I was just visit. as miserable though. <laughs> yeah, Survivor's Funniest Family Visits on Out Without Playout List. Uh, go ahead and check that out. Nothing from uh, the Survivor Caramel and Family Visit. Oh, do you uh, know what I we didn't talk about, though? <laughs> Sorry to what? bring this back. Well, let's get back you know, what? I'm sure you'll talk about Third Lisa vote. Welchel's brother, brother, brother. We get a, a, yes, an homage sister, sister, to that sister, with yeah. Eric yeah. and his brother. No, it's not a home, uh, an homage because Eric <laughs> didn't, didn't see it. it. He didn't see it. He didn't see it. He didn't see Maybe it. Maybe Malcolm weird, told him about it, but yeah, it is bizarre that Eric Reichenbach's brother could have brother. <laughs> Maybe it was Malcolm brother. Stick the whole season. He was just talking about the like uh, he couldn't stop. But how did Eric's brother, brother know about ready it? Ready for it? Yeah, I guess how would the brother know about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. That's like well, he small saw small. the season. Now that would be very interesting. If it was a coincidence that the brother saw the season, and Eric mm -hmm. just thinks to make the reference. Maybe yeah. this should be on that without playout list. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The squeak. Uh, 
Tough as Nails is back on Thursday. Uh, myself That's and Mike Bloom and uh, Jessica Lee. Uh, we'll talk about Tough as Nails mm. uh, once again. Got to uh, watch that tomorrow morning of the latest mm -hmm. Tough as Nails. Of course, that if you want to hear our patron feedback show with Ofsnensky, everything else we have going on, uh, Patron Mafia this uh, weekend with Christian Hubicki co-hosting with Puya Zambakili, another round of Patron Mafia put together by Jordan Kalish. Head on over to robinswebsite.com slash patron to get a uh, load of everything else that we have uh, going on. Of course, if you're watching the YouTube video, go ahead and uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel or the podcast uh, for more content like this. All right? There you go. And of course, follow us on social media, robswebsite.com. Uh, of course, uh, Rob has a podcast on Twitter. That's where you could uh, find us. I'm like Cochran, uh, plugging my Twitter. And then at RHAP Grams. Uh, oh, yeah, we didn't Instagram. plug our Twitters. That, that was the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, that's why yeah. that's here. fine. If you're four and a half hours in, you know where to find us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Anything else before we wrap this up? I'm in physical pain. I'm so in like Avi Rob. Is this the longest the... podcast episode in the history of Rob's podcast also? No. Tyson. What about Tyson? Yeah, I think we passed it. <laughs> Are you oh my God. Wait, wait, wait. Cut out half of it. This can't be your longest episode. This is it. All right, let's make I'm it good then. Hold on. Let's keep going for an hour. <laughs> no, make it really no, good. No, get me out Kiva, of you always want to break the record. It is true. I do want to break the record. Wait, is this, uh, can I'm you confirm? Is that true or no? I think this is. I, I can do, we get a I, fact check in the chat? Sam Moore. He's poor, looking, Sam, on. poor Sam. Poor Sam. To be. I mean, but also, I, I don't feel like we had fill it. Like, I feel like we just talked about it and four hours went by. Yeah. We, we really, we're you know, we were just very thorough. I feel like some of the recaps, Rob, is, you know, yada well, yada's over some votes. Yeah, sometimes and stuff. there's a lot of stuff you want to yada yada over. Uh, sure. Well, this but, had more than most that we wanted to yada yada. yada, yada. So yeah. bad, it was good. I mean, you want to you want to uh, pipe in Clubhouse here for a little bit and uh, <laughs> take some take know. some feedback from Clubhouse. I, I've I've been hearing a month. Um, you want to do a live feedback show for a podcast people haven't heard? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, within the month, Android people are going to be uh, on Clubhouse. What do you You're think? You're talking about, that? about it like it's the vaccine. Like within a month, Android people. <laughs> no, Rob is much more excited. Rob is much more excited about Clubhouse. Yeah, four the, hours yeah. and eleven minutes. So we have. Oh, we smashed, smashed that. This is not up on me. I didn't even. I didn't even see that coming. <laughs> well, congratulations well, I mean, on ruining congratulations it. to you two. <laughs> Yeah, the, I always want to. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I, it is uh, cool. I just feel bad. So hopefully, like a one with Chappelle or something will go long. Time here, right? I had a great time. This flew right. by. podcast. Rob and I like to do. We like to talk about how good the podcast was. Akiva, <laughs> you shouldn't be joking. I already told Akiva I'm not podcasting with him anymore. If I get texts after saying, no, I Rob think Rob was time. annoyed. I'm worried about Rob. The text like, I you're can't... getting afterwards was that was fun, right? And then we'll both be asleep within like 30 I seconds. I can't get that feedback. Well, this was, I had a great time, uh, Rob. Mm -hmm. Thank you for letting me. Should we give a hashtag for people who made it this far? Mm -hmm. We did this on a. Uh... And the challenge I mean, this, this is the week. record setting uh podcast. Yeah. This is the new high watermark. So, what so should it be about Watch the record? Yeah, yeah, should, yeah. No, should it be? Um, mm, no. three amigos set the record because we're the three amigos, famously. I don't know if Ali ever opted into being one of the three amigos. <laughs> Come on, Ali. Uh, uh, Chester, amigo? Chester called me the other, which I think is good, like this, that, and I'm the other. Like, I'm just, I don't belong. I don't know what's going well, that on. That sounds like that's you, you and Chester and Akiva's <laughs> thing. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Do you think Chester feels left? So for people who don't know, we fake invited him tonight, and he considered coming, but podcasts. he was not actually invited. One with the guy over there. Well, I can't. Where's my finger on the screen? And what then one doing? with that lady. And then Alex isn't here. It was it rude to not invite Alex to the show? Do you think? No, um, this isn't his thing. Yeah, well, it's I not mean, really I his know. thing. Should the hashtag yeah. be "Where's Alex"? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't know. Um, Let's see. I'm miserable, Rob. I'm sorry. I'm doing being well, terrible. So I'm miserable? falling apart. We've real. No, yeah. no, no. I've had a great time, but mm -hmm. I'm just like I'm at my max for me. And we'll say so it's like been at least four hours thirty one minutes. That means I have not peed in four hours and thirty. I know. Minutes. We all did. That's, we all. Is that did. not normal? I, That's I don't not normal. I don't know how did Tyson during the four hours eleven minutes San Juan del Sur podcast had to have peed at least once. <laughs> had <laughs> to. Sure. I mean, I guess it wasn't live, but. If you remember from the old uh, Spice and Hour days, those guys. I go always make minutes. Matt Lagory sing the pee break song during Among Us. Mm -hmm. goes to the bathroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I think that this, that's the cue. I think to, uh, <laughs> to to wrap it up. Okay. Um, so no hashtag. Uh, you got you got anything, Uncle Kiwi? Uh, you don't like the three amigos? Well, Allie doesn't want to do amigo because it means friend. I think, and she doesn't want <laughs> people to think they were friends. <laughs> um. 
And Neil Adam. We didn't even talk about how terrible. Oh, yeah, Neil Adam. Yeah. I was trying to like explain to my kids like what the name is. They're like, oh yeah, that's not funny. Um and we didn't talk about how Don and Cochran kissed on the mouth, Akiva. You didn't oh, yeah. that well, all right. I I know, think we got to that. Okay. All Go right. back to the beginning. All right. All so right. I'm watching the finale. <laughs> Do you have the kid? Do you have the video queued, Rob? Let me. I don't have the video queued, but I'll Wait, bring up no, your you Twitter. You had one job, Akiva. You, I have all the props. I'll you had one it. job. I'll bring up I your Twitter. Rob would have it. Yeah. Because, um, oh I'm watching the finale. Wait, and all when of have sudden... I ever rolled in a clip? What? What? what which? Which <laughs> is a podcast? I, I don't know the tech stuff. That's that's what you know. That's why I have you and Ali and Chester. Hashtag roll the clip. <laughs> so, Rob. Uh, so I, I, my my 12 year old daughter's watching. She's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Rewind right now. So she goes. She goes back to right after Cochran has de- been declared the winner. Cochran goes to uh, get congratulated by Dawn Meehan, tied for second yeah. place, yeah. co runner up. And then what happens, Rob? <laughs> All right. Can you? <laughs> this is uh, Akiva coming in. Uh, I guess that uh, that it, it, what it appears to have been like a uh, this is like a Stephen Fishback hit the wrong target. Uh, I, yes. I think that was uh, that. I think Dawn went left, but then Cochran went left. And then, no, it uh, looks like Dawn went in. Am I still here? I feel like I froze. No, you're here. You're okay. Here. I will I, say. Dawn went in. There's no yeah. missing target. Cochran's trying to dodge. And it's like, well, you know, I'll take it. Yeah, mm-hmm. Cochran, can we get your take on this? Because it uh, it's funny because Rob does <laughs> 100 hours a week about this one hour or two hours of television show. And I was listening to every single second of any Survivor content back then. I do not remember one mention of this. I even asked nobody Mike Bloom. was doing the freeze frame here. Yeah, I even asked Mike Bloom. He's like, I, I don't remember it. Um, okay, and in case shocking. there was any doubt that Akiva's raising a young legend, he sent me this, and I said, Akiva, I have this huge in my notes. I too rewound. I'm frozen on my end, but as long as you yeah, can see, we okay. hear the video is yeah. frozen. But we okay, I too rewound like three times and it. then tried to clip it, and then was like, eh, it's too much. Okay. Uh, just a shocking moment. Honestly, you would get two <laughs> hours of content out of that easily. In <laughs> well, I thought we were going to talk about how you feel about kissing your parents on the mouth, but we'll have okay, to that is that good. What, we could, no, you'll yeah. have to ask Av that. Ask that patron. in the mailbag. <laughs> do people kiss their parents on the mouth? Ma- I don't know. I don't know what people do. But he, he shows it. Yeah. My daughter, my daughter points out that Cochran, after kissing Dawn on the mouth, goes to his grandma and kisses her on the mouth, and then his mom. It's three mouth kisses. In, in within the span of 20 seconds okay especially a kid who has only known corona for you know who, who knows how long pretty crazy you feel like that's cochran's move he's a mouth kisser he might be a mouth kisser i'm so yeah. upset honestly because i just turned to low def so i'll stay in low def okay. for the next whatever minutes yeah i akiva explains everything like a rabbi at the high holidays you know <laughs> that the, i mean i don't know if that's a reference that lands with you rob but like the finger in the air is yeah. like a rabbinical person like explaining and i'll tell I, you I, my daughter rabbi's said, house mm-hmm. <laughs> when, when he's fired up I, he's in a roll i was okay. a, a i was a teacher i'm doing it mm-hmm. <laughs> i was a teacher and b i come from the my father's rabbi okay good night thank you rob this all right is wait, so is hashtag mouth kisses Oh yeah. no! Well, all no. kisses are mouth kisses. It's like yes. it's true. Well, you're the the yeah. I don't know. The kisser is always kissing with the mouth. I guess it's just whether the kissy is getting the mouth or the cheek or or whatever. In COVID, I feel like mouth kissers in a COVID time is not what yeah. we need. Uh, Sam hmm. Moore says hashtag amigos no more. Let's just do three amigos and call it a day. It's fine. Okay, I'll be your friend if we can get me off the podcast. No, is that a number three yeah. or uh, the well, word three? The, uh, no, three amigos break the record, I think, should be the hashtag. I but feel like, Eric, three. I'm about to climb a coconut tree. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Thank you so much for no, watching and listening, everybody. Uh, we had so much fun. Uh, we'll be back next week uh, to talk about more Cochrane. And we'll find out. And, and, and now people will be really going through that finale like the Zabruder film to see if they find any more uh, kissing going on. And And then uh, we'll be back with Ozensky on the Patriot Feedback Show over the weekend. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.